imagine to other people that might say that. From here, I get everything. So we probably need to just put some food on like, you know, like, yeah. let's, let's, uh, If I come here... Oh yeah, pop up, pop up you. Not that one though, no. It's a rugby one. <laughs>
morning, everyone. The warmest of welcomes to day five of the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. A little social media start here as we are in the limitless tent alongside Chris, alongside Angus. Two oracles for many, many different reasons. No, 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 you don't know. I was going to say stick with it. But uh, how about we pop this to one side, um, take a seat and decompress before we highly compress because we have got an unbelievable day of rugby coming up today. Uh, you've got some of the under 18s groups written down there because it is so important that we get those right. But before that, let's talk about the youngsters, the 11s, the 13s and the first taste for some of these young players of this great tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's we spoke to Burnsy about the prep schools tournament. Now we get the juniors and the under 11s and it's just so much fun. Um, they get to experience sharing a field. You know, we're going to I think we opened the day today actually with some of the under 13s. They get to share the same field as these under 18s who in what? three, four months time are going to be on professional contracts. How cool is that? They know the names of these guys. They've played, they sort of watched them on screen all year. Now they get to share a field with them. It's just fantastic. And I'll tell you what, don't don't pass up on the quality of that under 13s tournament as well. I, I saw the prep schools. There's some pretty good stuff being played out there. The juniors will be the same. Certainly will. And uh, we kick things off on pitch re one with the under 13s as well. Uh, I'm going to reach over and, and bring you in here because you've had the opportunity to, to build relationships with some of these schools, some of these teams. It all comes to fruition here and I see people coming in and out of this tent with huge smiles on their faces. What's the week been like for you? Uh, fantastic. You know, this is year two of a, you know, a three-year partnership that, that we've established with, uh, with, with the Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Uh, you know, year, year one was a, a big deal for us because although we, you know, we're in over you know, 220 schools, you know, there, there's an element of you know, competing with, with people who are, are sponsoring teams on a Saturday in the, you know, the, the Guinness Premiership or, or elsewhere. And, and for us, it's, it's our market is very much schools. You know, it, it, it's our expertise and kind of staying in lane with schools. And, and to kind of see the, the difference in 12 months, you know what it's made we've done a substantial amount of work particularly on our, on our playing kit and our staff kits you know our, our curriculum kit as we call it has, has always been absolutely fantastic so the work that we've done but it but you know it, it's great to be able to, to to see a lot of sides wearing our kit uh, and you know vastly increased over those 12 months but but also it's the you know it's the relationship with the tournament but but it's an amazing opportunity for us to to see existing schools heads of rugby heads of sport uh, and, and pupils who are coming into the the, the to, to have a chat to see see what's new um, but also at times it, it, it's great for, for some of these players to, to see they're, they're a part of the club and that's really really special for us in terms of seeing existing schools but but also that ability to, to, to grow that stable as well and uh, among your many commitments for this great tournament one of them has been sponsoring the player of the tournament for each of the age groups across the boys and the girls how impressed have you been not just with those players of the tournament but with the, the standard and the tournament in general I think you know if you look at sevens over the years the standard has got better and better every single year and I think it's um it's a combination of the you know the athleticism in both the boys and girls as far as players but also the the depth of coaching and the quality of coaching that that, that occurs within these schools that you know once upon a time you know sevens was this this bolt on that happened you know it was it was robbing time off hockey or, or, or netball or lacrosse for a for a session at five o'clock under lights on and now there's been some specific time and a lot of these schools put aside four sevens and you can kind of see you know the, the, the game understanding is is vast particularly at the top team this might be the first taste of action that they're getting as well so I think that's really You know, I know we're going to talk about the uh, the mouth-watering boys' cup competition in a sec, but also, you know, you've touched upon the under 11s, the under 30. But you know, we're, we're seeing you know, a, you know, a, something like a 30 percent increase in the girls' sides. And actually, I think, if I'm honest, for the last two years, my, my favourite game has actually been the under 14 girls' final. Yeah. Absolutely magnificent. You can just see it's the quality of rugby, but it's also the commitment that they're showing. You know, the the improvement that we're seeing. Um, and so, actually, you know, the parity between the boys and girls. You know, it's got a way to go. Of course, it does. But but it's certainly getting getting closer. Now we're about to go for a wander, but before we do, am I right in thinking you've got some special guests coming to the Limitless Tent today? We do indeed. So um, Alex Dombrand, you know, fresh off uh, England's campaign in the last couple of weeks, will be will be joining us later on today. So uh, please do stop by, say hello, and get a photo with Alex. Alex Dombrand of Harlequins in England, but of course most famous for playing sevens here for John Fisher School a few years ago. Uh, walk with me, Angus. Thank you very much. Come down to the Limitless Tent. It is at the end of 
RE1 next to the Edwin Doran 10. I'm just going to grab this because uh, I'm not going to have the chance and we need to fuel today. Where's Angus gone? There he is. And Wilf is it, mate? You cannot come dressed like that and not get on camera for the preview show. Uh, you look absolutely superb. Your sartorial choices for Friday uh, pretty much sum up the week. You've saved the best till last. Uh, how are you, mate? And how much are you looking forward to today? Yeah, it's going to be a great day. I mean, just like earlier in the week, we uh, saw it with the emergence of the teams in the VARs. When you cut down on the amount of people allowed to participate the quality does shoot up and some of the pools I'm sure you've mentioned already are absolutely mental some of these cup groups the plate looks amazing really excited to get stuck into the under 18 girls competition as well after the showing we had from the ace competition yesterday so yeah it's gonna be a big day it's gonna be a really big day it certainly is right walk with me because we have got some obstacles as we've just found out uh, we're going to make our way past the Edwin Doran tent through the food court we better not be peckish because there is plenty uh, on offer we've already talked about some of the things here just over my shoulder we've got the Welsh Exiles program we've got the Irish qualified guys here as well if you are IQ you've got to let them know they do their best like basset hounds to sniff you out however if you've got any Irish heritage they'd love you to be a part of their program moving forward uh, and the reason we're walking this way is because we've got to get into position for commentary for the under 13s that kicks off at 10 o'clock on RE1 and RE2. Um, but Angus, get that piece of paper out of your pocket now and talk us through some of the groups in the under 18s, the mouth-watering groups that we're looking forward to today. Well, we just walked past James Melville, the Harrow coach, and I think he is going to be delighted that what everyone's going to be talking about today, rather than a Harrow going to go back to back, which has been the talk of the town all week, there's a group, Kirkham Grammar School, Wellington College, Millfield, Sedbert. That is on the lips of everyone. Our cameraman here has been telling me he can't wait to see that group. Everyone can't wait to see that group. So for those not in that group, I mean, the other ones are brutal. I mean, Harrow have got Cranley, they've got Dulwich, they've got Ipswich, that's incredible as well. But because of how mouth-watering that group is it is pulling the focus which is maybe allowing a couple of others to just sleep under the radar a little bit so we have got such a good day ahead of us and just to give you that other group as well Radley College Bromsgrove Whitgift some fantastic teams there but look out for Gordons could they be the first ace college to win this tournament since Filton College in 2011 we have got so much ready to happen. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. Well, Jack Zorob, who's our other uh, uh, colleague on commentary, he put a big ring around Gordon's, and he thinks they might be the dark horses. Look, Angus is always willing to put his head on the chopping block, and I'm not going to ask you to do the same, but some mouth-watering classes, and these are just the group phases on day two. Yeah, it's unbelievable, really. I think some of those teams will feel pretty fortunate given the draw, but, uh, yeah, I, I still, that group of death, which is a term that is rarely given to a Roslyn Park group because they're always stacked regardless. But this, the Kirkham, who had an unbelievable day, they knocked off Brighton College and Hartbury College just to get into a group that includes Sedbra and Millfield. They <laughs> must feel pretty hard done by, but if anyone can overturn those sort of unbelievable sides, it's going to be this Kirkham team. And, oh, I'd love a repeat of the national team final at 15's level here at Roslyn Park to see Harrow and Kirkham at it once again. That would be unbelievable, but but uh, we'll have to wait and see. And also, the best second place team, I believe, is also going to be going through to those semi final phases. And, uh, well, who could that be? That could be anyone out of those three pools. And, uh, yes, yeah, just how Millfield got through the other day in the under 16s competition. So uh, we know that's a pathway to success, but I can't wait to see how it unfolds. Well, what it does mean is we're going to have uh, some really close games, and teams are going to be playing right till the final whistle because those extra tries that you can get, the points difference could be key. If you take a look over here now, these are Trinity under the 13s who are going to be kicking us off we've got stash the director of rugby there she has given me a very very detailed team sheet can you hold my oat latte for a second so i can show everybody just how detailed it is um, if you are a coach or a player or a fan or a supporter and you're in contact with a team please get them to write us out one of these just so look at all the detail of that there unbelievable isn't it um, just so we can give all of these young players these future superstars the boys and girls across all the age group uh, 
all of the shout outs that they, they well and truly deserve because uh, we really like to do them justice. I mean, the rugby in and of itself uh, does them justice. Well, we've got the 13s behind us. So let's have a, a quick chat about that because they've effectively chosen their level, haven't they? Like going on a computer game and choosing easy, medium or hard. I'm not sure there are any easy games, um, but this is going to be in Pool A where they believe they're the best of the best. And even though it's not the, the same contest going through two days and a final, it's a real chance for these youngsters to, to put their best foot forward and get a taste for, for great rugby, rugby that they're hopefully going to be playing for the next three, four, five years. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's about competition. It's about finding your level and getting meaningful games against other sides. And that's exactly what they've done by, as you say, picking their video game level. They, they've found their, they've hopefully found their level and they're going to get five fantastic games of rugby. And that'll be the same in the under 11s as well. But it's more than anything, it's experience. I mean, my goodness, they're going to be on the live stream first thing up on day five of the biggest tournament in the world. How cool is that as a 12 year old, as a 10 year old in those under 11s? It's unbelievable. I'd love to do that. Let's do a swap. I'm, you're you're going to give me that. I'm going to give you that. Dave's going up to commentary. Now, Wilf, you've spoken about this already. We're going to go back to the under 18 boys for a minute. We are going to cover the girls in a second as well. I'm going to put my neck on the chopping block. I actually agree with you. I think the under 18 uh, schools cup final a week ago, Harrow versus Kirkham Grammar School. Harrow won it with a try in the last minute. Do we see a repeat of that in the boys' cup final? I think there is a strong chance of it, and I wonder if that means when they go head-to-head, -head, Kirkham have that little edge that says they might do it. That, that's, my, that's where I'm leaning for now. Until If you ask me again in 20 minutes, I'll change my mind. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll see. Now, listen, I want to chat about the girls' competition. Um, two, three groups, Aundel Newman College, Collega Kimwed for the love of the game in Group A, Millfield, Hartbury College, Kingsbridge, Epsom College in Group B, Van Dovery, Hereford Sixth Form College, Peter Simmons College and Brooksby Melton College in Group C. Basically mirroring that boys tournament. We didn't get to see that much of the girls yesterday, but really looking forward to seeing that today. Yeah, I remember last year, some of the uh, Welsh sides at the under-18 level were full of the most passion and full of the most adrenaline. We had a lot of them on COCOM, especially Llandovery College last year. So I'm looking at the likes of Colleg Cigar and a few of those other Welsh teams to really bring some energy. And uh, Epsom and Colleg Cigar were joint top on 10 points of their group. So it's good to see that they're both through to this next part of the competition. So there's uh, some serious pedigree on show. But yeah, after the ace competition, you saw Worthing College were looking fantastic. And for Hartbury to have another team in that competition as well is great and for them to make it to the second day I mean it's a testament really to the depth that they have in their program but yeah I think every year the women's competition has improved massively in terms of quality and engagement and those two things come hand in hand so to have those big groups on the second day it's going to be some great quality rugby on show and I can't wait to see it. It certainly is. And one team I really want to uh, just reflect on a little bit. We spoke about them at the end of yesterday's play was for the love of the game from Canada. Joe Burns got the chance to speak to them uh, between a couple of games yesterday. The most enthusiastic bunch, but forget enthusiasm, the most high quality bunch. They absolutely stormed through the pool stages. And we've already seen Jess uh, win in the, was it the under 14 girls they won? We've had an international winner there. Could we get a second international winner? It's looking like it's on the car. How good would that be for the tournament? Yeah, I mean, Canadian rugby is on the rise as well. Uh, uh, down at Bristol the other week, we had a Canadian university come over and take us on in an exhibition match. They also played Cambridge on that run. So they're getting more and more involved in the British game, and it's great to see. I mean, Canadian rugby in the men's game has grown massively, even as their national team's fallen off a bit. But in the, in the women's game, Canada is still a force, especially on the seven circuit. Canada have always been present. So it's good to see some Canadian represent representation properly involved in the tournament and some really taking themselves all the way and it would be great to see them in the final as well. Also a great name to attach to a rugby programme as well. So what more can you really ask for? Absolutely. What more could you ask for? And you're right, it is an absolutely spectacular game. Name. Uh, right, listen, we're about to get started. So, neck on the line. Boys, under 18 cup. It all comes down to it. Five o'clock this evening. Who's winning? Kirkham Grammar School. Let's see what they can do. Oh, I think I was going to go there. Does that mean I go Harrow back to back? Oh, that's going to be ball. It's going to be brave. Oh. Harrow, back to back. We're going with it. That sounds like a Harrow versus Kirkham Grammar School final. But there's a long way to go before then because we are handing over to Dave Rogers, who is going to take us through this first game of the day. Angus, Wilf, you are okay, top okay. boys. Great job. Welcome, everybody.
Great to have you here on the final day of the Howden, Roslyn Park National Schools Sevens. Trinity versus Finborough to get us underway. Trinity in the blue, Finborough in the hoops. It's the under 13s. And this is what they're calling the group of death. The crazy thing is, it's a group that they've all chosen to be in. They want to pit their skills against the best in this competition. Rules are still the same. Oh, here we go. Charge down, pick up, knock on. First scrum down of the day, which gives us the opportunity to say hello to Carter. Carter's joining us from Finborough School, plays for the 18s, coaches the 13s, exchange from New Zealand. That's a heck of a CV, mate. How are you? Yeah, you're really, really good, mate. Thank you, and great to have your company. Tell us a little bit about your adventure then, because it sounds like you, you've been on a heck of a journey to get here. How's your uh, first Roslyn Park Sevens experience been? The team's um, on show and showing what they can do. So how have you found yourself in England then? Because you're a long way from home. Well, my mum's English, and uh, um, <coughs> she actually went to a school in Suffolk where Finborough is. Not and um, I was done with my Come season down. back home, and I was Red kind of ball. keen for a new experience. Mark and um, James Sinclair, the owner of Finborough School, said, well, why don't you come over here? And I was like, that sounds great. And has it been great? Oh, it's been unreal. I wouldn't change it for the world. I met so many cool people. Good. Everyone's been so welcoming. Bye. And I've learned a lot along the way. Such a different yes. style of rugby over here as well. Okay, and, and what about the, the seven side of things then? So uh, you were in the under 18s earlier. How was the experience? Did we have you here on, on RE1, this pitch? Uh, yes, we did. We played our last game. We played the last game of the day here, so we went really well. We won quite comfortably in the end. Yeah, we got a really strong team, I think, this year, and we're in the plate today. So we'll hopefully do really well today as well. Oh, so not only are you joining me on CoComs, you've got games later on today. Our oh, good man, we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, so you're coaching this under-13s team here. Uh, tell us a little, about, a little bit about these young guys. How they got on? Oh, they've had some really good tournaments leading up to this. They've had a great 15 season. Like the boy with the ball, Ollie Skinner, he's really, really quick. This is Murphy here, big, strong lad. John Green. Oh, the boys playing Joe, some rugby here, looking to go down the middle. Now there could be some space on and the right the edge for Finbra. Yeah, this is much better. Patient phase play. Obviously well coached by Carter next to me. And now looking to go around the outside, but it's resolute defence from Trinity. God, look at this offloading from the Finbra boys. Kicking behind, looking for space. The bounce to the ball, gathered by Trinity. Still nil-nil. Oh, goose step and good feet. Police. That's by Ben Police. Harriman there, wearing 19 for advantage Trinity. Red off feet. Playing with a penalty advantage. These under 13s. Advantage still! Well, still advantage. advantage. Now advantage over, some resolute defence. And a great leg drive strength from Huey Ward for Trinity School. Still going, Huey Ward. He's down. Talking about how he's down. So I've got some information on these Trinity boys. How many chicken wings do you think you can eat in one sitting, Carter? Seriously. Uh, probably not many. I reckon maybe four or five. Huey Ward reckons he can eat 31. I'm not sure about that, but I am sure that Trinity are going to be in for the first try of the game. Shayton Ogunyemi. Length of the field. First score, four minutes gone. It's been resolute defence from both teams, but it's Trinity who strike first, and they lead Fimbra by five points to nil. Oh, tough start. A lot of ball in play time for these youngsters early on. Yeah, some really uh, a long phase play there, and um, one of the Trinity boys just showing his pace at the end there. So Fimbra will be quite tired after that. A few subs might need to be made. So talk us through the day of a National School 7s player in the under 18s then, because you've got well, multiple you games, you've got to conserve your energy, but there's, there's so much going on around the place. How do you recover in between games? Uh, we've got a really good physio on site with us and um, the boys make pretty good use of him with massages yeah. and stuff, so 
Please. We honestly, you're never going to be 100, percent but we do. They do as well as we can to. Trinity in again. Austin Warrell throws the dummy, goes in under the poles, and this is excellent stuff from Trinity Croydon. Got to the under 16s final yesterday, where they came undone against a, a sensational Sedba team. Of course, the under 18s as well in recent years. They've got to twicken them in the 15s twice. Take another look at this try. Once you're in your own 22, That's so easy. difficult That's to defend. Particularly That's when there's quick easy. ball, and Austin Worrell saw the gap, went for the gap, scored the try. So how's the body today then, Carter? Come back, play um, my hamstring's really tight, but apart from that, I think I'm all right. I've had a good sleep. Here's Ollie Sinclair. He's a really quick boy, this guy. Here is Ollie Sinclair. Checking inside. There's a two on one. Doesn't need the two on one because he's got past the final defender, but then Trinity come back. Chance now for Fimbra School. Play on, play on, play on. Referee says play on. Brilliant strike run by Ollie Sinclair to put them in this position. Oh, and the broken tackle, the acceleration away, and Finbra are in. Jaron scores. And before half time, Finbra back in the mix. Yeah, Jaron, he's a really quick, athletic lad. He's been training with us, been playing really well throughout the 15 season. So it's good to see him show what he's got on live stream here. Certainly is. Look at this finish. So much work to do explodes into the first contact, gets rid of the defender, and that is a quick boy and a good finish. So remind me, how long have you been in the UK? So my season back home finished about October, and I oh, came okay. over in November, so... So pretty much the whole academic year then, really? Yeah, Give but... Or take. Yeah, not a, I've been doing a lot more of my academics back home than over here, so it's okay. a bit, It's quite hard to manage the... Oh, it's not hard, you just have to be quite self-conscious and when you're managing your schoolwork back home because there's not really anyone pushing you, but I'm managing to do it all right so far. Well, Trinity, unselfishly, Austin Worrell putting in Ben Harriman. <laughs> Fluid try, takes us through to half-time. 15 points no. to five. So you've come over to play and, and to coach and... How have you found this This as a tournament then? Because as you said, that the rugby is very different, that the conditions are, are very, very different. And of course, the 15s and the 7s are very, very different. Um, what's this experience, this tournament been like for you, the Howden Ross in Park National School 7s? Uh, I've enjoyed not playing in 30 degree heat for my 7s, for yes. sure. Yeah, but I watched a bit of the clips of last year's sevens, and I'm so so glad it's not like that this year. Oh, man. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit cloudier today, but we've had four great days, which means pretty much no matter what happens, the, the pitch is going to hold up, and we have to compliment the ground staff here on the, on the fantastic job they've done. But, yeah, it's uh, relatively firm tracks, the opportunity to chuck it around and make a good impression. Yeah, yeah it really suits how... Um, a lot of schools play, I think, for sevens. You can chuck the ball around, show your speed, instead of just straight muscle up front like you might get in the 15 season. Have you had a look uh, at who you've got in your pool today? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, Warwick. For I know Warwick for T sure. Tasty. Yeah. And uh, we lost to them in the semi-final at Northampton Saints seven, so it'll be a really good rematch for us I think the boys are really going to try to get up for that and chance I'm, to get one over on the boys I like it and I'm not I can't quite remember oh Bedford as well okay yeah so that'll be another good match and I'm not quite sure who else we oh, have good schools all around and other than yourself then who uh, who should we look out for in your team oh I think all the boys oh here yeah. he is here he is yeah anyone that we bring on is a pretty talented player and um they can all do a job for us all the boys splinters in his backside for sitting on the fence good man Carter right then the team's coming back out for the second half Trinity three tries to one against Finbrook no conversions in the under 13s just lads out there looking to get the meat pies we love to see it and Harry Haler Gets us underway for the second half four. That is unlucky. Ben Harriman got himself in the right position, but just knocked it on. And then Jared just knocks it on himself. Hacked forward and we'll come back for the scrum.
run down. So what's the plan then? Are you going to see out the rest of the school year or are you going to head back as soon as the rugby season's done? Uh, I've got a couple months off now where I'd like to travel around Europe, hopefully, with a few mates. Oh, nice. Where are you going to go? Uh, we're starting in um, Spain and just kind of going from there. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds awful. Sounds terrible. Oh, good man. I'm glad you taking advantage of your time over here and if anybody's listening who lives in the uk and and hasn't been to your homeland where should we visit oh definitely Marlborough, uh top of the south island um, okay great wine if you're a wine drinker and um <laughs> and great weather as well good to get out on the boat i'll take you fishing just um you know who to call if you need it <laughs> Oh, you Bye. are a good man. I'm glad you've come to Let's join us this morning. Right, before that starts, you have to... Can you guys remember? I'll come this side. Right, set back up. Mark is here. Our referee okay, here. laying down the law when it comes to yeah, well, the set scrum. Out, Meanwhile, the backs are thinking, right. come on. Out. Come on, big lads. Out. Get on with it. We're trying to play some code. Let's head under, head under. That's better. Yeah, as a back, um, much I actually don't mind that break. You get a bit more of a rest out there yeah. while the forwards put in the hard work. Yeah, you've got to take advantage of those breathers when you can get them because they are few and far between in this sport. So Jack Burke now in the headgear. Trying to create, oh, lovely dummy by Burke and the step as well and the fend. And Jaron makes a great tackle to stop a fabulous attacking nice run. Pick, nice pick. Release. In at the side, advantage blue, red in at the side. A little bit of indiscipline at the breakdown for Fimbra means that Trinity can take advantage once more. And Michael Nilwasso played up a year for the under 14s this year, showing that he's got some quality. Well and Trinity in again. Well, there are the subs. There's the director of rugby, Sass. So you're what now? 17, 18, 18? Yeah, just turned 18. So what happens What happens when you go back? So I'm going to go back and then, because um, our school years are slightly different, I'm okay. going to play under 19s for my county, hopefully, and play a bit of club rugby. Well, equivalent of our county, it's called our province. Oh, cool. And then um, hopefully start university there in January the next year. Ah, oh, good man. And playing rugby there, I assume? Yeah, wow. uh, probably in at Canterbury University. Red. In at the side blue. That sounds like a plan to me. Here come Finbra. Oh, here we go. Advantage over. We've got a foot race on our hands, but Trinity back in numbers. Jez gets stopped on the halfway line. and Nice chance for Finbra to get some territory, get some possession. And hopefully from their perspective to get some tries. Oh, that's been lost forward and Nwoso can turn it over and Trinity searching for more scores. There's a big chase, a big tackle, a brave tackle, but a good offload for Ben Harriman. Harriman's in. It was a good defensive effort, but Trinity exploiting the space on this massive pitch. And it is a big pitch for these under 13s as well. Yeah, these um, a lot of our boys aren't quite used to probably playing on a pitch this big, but it's a really good experience for them either way. I'm sure they're loving it. Oh, of course. And they're putting on a good show as well, both teams. Full blooded stuff. Trinity. Scoring some lovely tries out here on the live stream. Yeah, they look like a really good side to watch out for in the next couple of games as well. Well, they've travelled a lot less distance to be here than you have. Oh, is that a spiral restart? Clip that one out, but it's intercepted too. Now, Fimbra, can they take advantage of this? Joe Cook, strong boy. Yeah, yeah, he's a really strong boy. He plays hooker in 15 season for us. He's a really big boy, and you can see his work rate trying to get back there. Lucas chasing him. It's a good offload. Jack Burke beautifully locked it over the top. Just feels like every time they get in behind Trinity, they're able to finish. They are clinical. Still plenty of time to go. It's worth saying as well that both of these teams, Trinity, Finbra, and the other teams in the group, they have chosen to be in this group. This is the toughest group, the best teams. And I think that says a lot about the players and the coaches and the faith that they have 
in one another and they want to play the best. Yeah, it's a pretty cool mindset to have. Like, I know these boys are always up for a challenge, and you can see here these two really good teams going at it. Now, Finbra. Oh, Not just bad. losing the ball forward again. It is tough out there, especially when you're tired, especially when you're behind. Oh, how about this for a little nudge? Oh, that is class. And Huey Ward is going to go in under 13s. What? Little cross field dink. And the change is coming in, so everybody getting a run out today. That is so good. That is so good. Five seconds left. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it would be in your coaching manual, Carter, but let the boys play. Yeah, sometimes there's natural skills and talents you can't teach, and it's really impressive to see, from, especially from Not a bunch of 13-year-old lads. Not by red here, well, yeah. it's nice to see him playing, it's nice time. to see him jo enjoying, yeah. and it's nice to see them here, please, lads. putting on a show. So the next game for this Fimbra school will be against Emirates that, Falcon lads, International. Come on, come on. What a Mark name for a school. Then they play Dunatar, yeah. and then they play Campion School Essex and Kings Macclesfield, that's for Trinity. They've got the same teams Bye. in a different order, but it's been great to have them here Set. on RE1. As Trinity go up the blind side, looking for another score to cap the game off. And that is dotted down by Leo Carr. And that takes us through to full time. Finborough five, well done. Trinity 40. And Carter, really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, it's been great. Bedford Modern versus Emmanuel School. It is game number two on day number five of the Howden Roslyn Park National Schools Sevens. Bedford Modern, red and black, catching the ball from kickoff. 
and getting us underway. These are the 13s playing on the full size pitch. No conversions, but plenty of tries. And we're going to see a great try to start with. Oh, Bedford Modern. No need to check over the shoulder, Sunshine. You are in. What a score. Tearing up the turf on the right hand side. And jogging back into position because he wants to go again. Bedford Modern, five points to nil up. Emmanuel's school, first chance to attack. That's a really good dummy. A couple of passes could do it here. Some cover defending required, but instead, check back in field. Lovely work, moving it from the left to the right to feed the speed, and that speed arrives. Wow, 90 seconds in, two tries, two excellent tries as well. And it is 5 all. And what with no conversions? This is going to be a tough slog for the referees. They're going to be non-stop. Let's take another look at this then. Bed for Modern, a little bit narrow. There were plenty of narrow bodies for Emmanuel because they knew they had that gas. Two minutes gone, two tries. Good take. Bedford Modern again. Oh, what a turnover. That is unfortunate because he made a brilliant jackal but then held on. And Emmanuel School. Not 10. The back to back penalties. Leave it yellow. Back here. Stay there, that's fine. And Bedford Modern come again. Second try then for Bedford Modern. It's going to be the same man in the same spot again. Lethal finisher. 10 5. <laughs> Oh my goodness me, this is some talented young man. Unfortunately, I've not been given a team sheet for either team, so I can't tell you who he is. Fine. But I'll tell you what he is, and that is an excellent young rugby player. Bedford Modern 10, Emmanuel School 5. He didn't. Good tackle. And a good turnover. They're working so well over the ball, this Emmanuel school team. And now they're going. This is crazy. Oh, the chase back. The tackle missed. The offload required. Brilliant cover defence by Bedford Modern. But not strong enough to stop the leg drive. And this game of you go, I go continues. Four minutes gone. Four tries. 10-10. What a fabulous game of rugby. Certainly from an attacking perspective. I like to think that there are a few of you watching who have been with us the entire time. But if not, welcome. Great to have you. This is pitch RE1, the showpiece pitch. RE1 and RE2 in perpetual motion. All the games live streamed. Group of very hard-working people 
on cameras and on directing, making sure that we do not miss a second of the action. And we're going to be taking you all the way through to the final game, the Under-18 Boys' Cup final today, as we have from the very first game on Monday. This Lord, is game rest. number two of the day. It is Bedford Modern versus Emmanuel School. Emmanuel School into the corner for their third try. The first time they've led in the game. They've been 5-0 down, 10-5 down. Now, 15-10 ahead. Go on, Team Kit, guys. Keep it with you. Yeah, you call for a sub. You've done your hard work, haven't you, young man? <laughs> Another excellent finish. Kickoff dropped. And this could well be the last play before the half time whistle. Clock ticks towards seven Five. minutes then. Emmanuel School looking for a fourth try. <laughs> Give themselves a little bit of breathing space. Referee not happy with how the scrum's packing down though. Okay. Yep. Approach. Bind. Bind on. on. Bring it up, guys. To bind on to him. Okay. Yep. Crouch. In fact, the referee not happy bind. at all with how the scrum is packing down. Set. Ball's out, that's fine. And Emmanuel School, last attack of the half. Looking for a two-try lead. Excellent cover tackle. Ball into touch. Oh, there is time to play on. And Bedford Modern on the move. Well, it's not just the one speed, so they've got on the right-hand side. That's lovely balance. Presenting that ball, but again, Emmanuel turn it over on the floor. So, so impressive by this young team. And now Bedford Modern showing strength to drive them off the ball. Oh, here we go. Spin pass. Out wide. An acceleration away. Brilliant acceleration too. We will go to half-time. We will be level. And it is a Bedford Modern 15, Emmanuel 15.
second half then of this brilliant game between Emmanuel School and Bedford Modern. Three tries each in the first half and Emmanuel on the march again, up the wing they go. And there's something magical about that right hand touchline because it keeps producing wonder tries. How about that for a start to the half? We've actually got the first rain of the week as well. We've been so lucky with the conditions. The pitch ideal, but it's about to become a whole lot greasier. It's that fine rain, soaks you right through. Guys, time's off, just a little bit. Guys, time's off, just that injury, just hold on. Well, it's going to be a small injury delay, so those young players out there getting a little wetter, a little colder. We move into the under 18s next. Plandovery College against Bishop Wand School. Okay. Time's on. And Emmanuel extending their lead. Oh, Bedford Modern away again. It's going to be a hat trick for this lightning speedster. Oh, my goodness. End to end. Eight tries. 20 points to 20. One try each after a minute of the second half. And take a look at this. I mean, we could put together a, a day long highlights reel just on, come off the pitch, please? Come from off the, the tries pitch. in this game alone. Off. Eight tries in eight minutes. A big pitch that these talented young speedsters are taking full advantage of. Oh, big handoff. And the pass is good too. And Emmanuel School threatening to be away again. The rain not stopping the fun. Although if it gets any heavier, I might get grumpy and try and send someone to get me a coffee. Here's Emmanuel School actually going through some phases now. Oh, but then coughed up. That's the first time we've seen the slippery ball. Calm down, boy. And that might become a factor today. But as we move into the boys under 18s, might mean that they play a little bit more of an attritional game. They cut loose yesterday. Oh, we saw some good rugby. And that competition recommences next up from every college versus Bishop right. Wand. If you're watching at home and you've got some friends who you think might enjoy it, send them a text, get them involved. It'd be great to have you on board. We've got a worldwide audience on this live stream. Coach. In fact, I need to find out exactly what countries are watching because I've got to welcome all the VIPs to lunch at quarter past one and I'll drop that in to make it sound impressive. Coach. What has been impressive? Perfect. is this Set. contest Bedford Modern versus Emmanuel School and Emmanuel with the chance to take the lead again take over the shoulder with good strength in the tackle really good strength in the tackle and Bedford Modern trying to bring down a runaway train I've already called it over here guys come down well, this year, the good folks, tournament director Andy Higgins and co, have made a few improvements. And one of the improvements has been put a track down to cover the ground between pitch RE1 and the tents. And that is just as well, because if it continues to rain, then that is going to become fairly sloshy and sploshy today. Early push. Early push. Free kick at scrum time. Early push. Is there a winning try? Are there a couple of tries still in this? Forward. Forward pass, scrum down, guys. Forward pass and scrum. Set. Hold for
Right, Emmanuel, what an attacking position now. In the rain on RE1. Is the wraparound move coming? There'll be no need because there is a piston like fend and a dive for the corner. And what the rain means is we're going to see some tries slid in. You love to see it. Celebrating style on the showpiece pitch. Emmanuel 25, Bedford 20. Not quite going at a try a minute now, but not far off. Really good finish. Technically good as well. Ball in the correct hand on the outside, freeing that right arm for the fen. Maybe he needs to work on his dive though. Can't have the knee going down before the ball. But he'll learn. It's only under 13s. Fingers crossed. Decades left in this game. Oh, here we go. Again. Away. See ya. This boy can play. That is his fourth try of the game. Each one more impressive than the last. 50 points shared evenly between these two teams. Bedford Modern 25, Emmanuel School 25. So much work to do. That stop and go fixes two defenders. And as soon as the edge defender turns his back, good night. A few umbrellas Ready? popping up. Stay behind. The beanie hats have replaced the baseball caps. The way to our right, Llandovery College in the white and red are completing their warm up before their first game of the day. And Emmanuel School are looking for a try that might just pinch the win late on. We're into the last 30 seconds. We're around the last defender. And Emmanuel School, knowing they don't have to compete with the conversion can finish that out wide. Oh my goodness, we have seen some tries today. 11, 11 tries in this game. Referees just said last play too, so there is a chance for Bedford. Can they get a draw? Can they bring some drama? This is last play, Jets. Are you ready? Well, they haven't got their gun edge player. Oh, they're all offside at the kickoff. Offside at the kick. It was a really intelligent kickoff. They were kicking it deep, making them play. But then they're all offside. And Bedford Modern. Oh, wow. Oh, knocked off. That'll be it. That'll be it. He was looking to try and feed the speed on the edge. That one is drilled in between my two favourite places, the pick and mix and the ice cream van, and it draws the curtain down on a highly entertaining game. 11 tries in the under-13s, and Emmanuel School come from behind to win it First game in the under-18s today, it is Flandovery College 
versus Bishop One Church of England School. The rain continuing. I'm not going to say to pour, but certainly to fall from the sky, frustratingly, as we're looking forward to a, a great day of summer rugby. Fingers crossed it doesn't last all day, but fingers crossed the good company does last all day, because Gareth's with us, Director of Community Rugby at London Welsh. He's been refereeing uh, this week too, and although he's not on the field, his son is at Fansbury College. Two great rugby schools here who've earned their right to play on the second day. Oh, great take from a very competitive kickoff. Fansbury in the white and red. Bishop Wand in the blue with red shoulders. And the first attack of the day goes to the men in white. And now the rain's starting to come down. I very much feel sorry for whoever's got to wash the kit at the end of today, Gareth. Yeah, well, that won't be me, but uh, <laughs> great to join you. Um, looking forward to this match because today is a tough day for everyone because it's, it's all the top two teams playing, isn't it, in the groups from yesterday? certainly is, and these conditions aren't going to help either. It's going to be a real challenge, not just for the skill, but the attrition. We like to think the Welsh team should be used to a bit of rain, shouldn't well, they? if anybody who's ever been to Flansbury knows that it looks a lot like this a lot of the time, but that is an excellent step to try and create some space. The cover tackle comes across, and it's a good one from Albert Mildenhall. And now Thomas Williams gets the offload away for Flansbury. And that is just a little glimpse of the physicality that we are going to get today. That's intelligent play there by Owen Griffiths. Uh, um, of actually, it's Griff Watkins, uh, who both wearing red scum caps today, but um, buying the penalty, shall we say, do you know what I mean? which, is, which is great. No sweeper at home, nudge in behind. Yori Badham chases, but Oli Agar is back there. We have just been handed two umbrellas, uh, thanks to the sponsors, Howden. I knew it was going to be a good shout to get them involved in the tournament. Here we go then. Foot race is on. Flansbury back in the form of Owen Rickard, but it's a good chase to put him under pressure. Oh, and that is the crazy thing about this game is you've got no opportunity, uh, sorry, no option other than to offload in your own 22. And it could work out here for Flansbury College. He's, he's going to get caught. He needs support here. This is Dylan Rowe, number six, on the break. Oh, the clear out is massive, but how about that? From Albert Mildenhall, it's a knock on in the end, but that, for him to manage to hold his shape on that turnover, that clear out was brutal. Just a, just a great picture for, for the referee, the, great, the clear out and also the steal, the jackal, spot on. Well, funny, uh, funny you should mention that. Great to have your company. Let's talk about pictures then, because everyone talks about painting the right picture, painting the picture at the breakdown, painting the picture at the scrum yes. and the line-out, etc. What are the kind of things you're looking for as a referee in that instance? I suppose it, it, it's um, they're just doing what they should be doing for the you know, in the sake of the laws of the game. I think because you know, there's um, when 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 they're you know, at the breakdown, there's so much you're, you're looking out for, but. It, You've got to be consistent and manage the consistency of the game. Um, and so, you know, the, the clear release is what you want to see. Yeah. You know, and that's the, that's the key thing there. So when you see the players almost exaggerated, putting yeah. out the wingspan, just so there's no doubt in the referee's mind that the exactly. clear release is there. Especially in sevens, where you, you basically, you, you can't really think. You see, you act, you blow. Well, that one going out into touch on the far side. Three minutes gone. No real try scoring opportunities yet. It's a nervy first day, first game oh, of the day, isn't it? Certainly is. Conditions not perfect, and this is going to be a real challenge today to the the line out. Three in the line out, so obviously the options are limited, but that's nice clean ball off the top now for St. Devery College to work with. And Rickard in midfield manages to find Griff Watkins. He checks back, he's light on his feet, and that's a good offload, a good line. Is there another ball? Yes, there is. Landevry into the 22. Dallin Rowe, number six. And Bishop Wand having to defend here. They've got numbers, but you're only one missed tackle away from trouble, especially in this part of the pitch. That's a great ball. Thomas Williams, Thomas Williams will score. He'll go under the posts too. He was the finish, but it was all about the assist. And great sporting pedigree in his family because his brother plays football for Wales under 21s. Is he? Oh, yeah. is, is he the one who plays um, his club football at AFC Wimbledon? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, um, not, yeah. Too, not too far from here. A long track to land every mind. Oh, I should say. 
I grew up in Brecon, and it's a long trek from there to Llandovery, and it's only about <laughs> 20 miles. So we're coming close to five minutes in, and the finish was good, but the assist, absolutely superb. It was Owen Rickard, wasn't it, who brought in the last couple of the defenders. Lofts went over the top. And in a game where opportunities have been limited, you feel that it's going to be important to take them. And every college have done exactly that. But, you know, restarts are very, very important there, not 10, you see. Oh, so it's close. It was, but it definitely wasn't 10. Referee spot on there. Players not very happy, but the referee's right. You would say that. Here's <laughs> Bishop <laughs> Wand. Chance for them to build something. Chasing the game now. Not fatal to lose your first game, but you certainly want to have a good positive start to day two, particularly coming off the back of all the good feeling of day one. Just to get to day two, a remarkable achievement for any team. Yeah, Llandovery went, well, went well yesterday. They lost the first half of the, um, their first game against Dulwich, and after that, they've won every half, really. So they've, um, I think they're a bit asleep at 10.20 yesterday morning, you see. So yeah. and they've started better today, which is, which is good to see. Certainly is. I'll tell you what hasn't started better are these conditions. If anything, they've deteriorated over the last 15 minutes. Well, the forecast was 11 till 1 rain, so hopefully it's come early and yeah. it'll go early. Fingers crossed. Yeah, because the forecast is for a bit of sun this afternoon. I appreciate and I respect your optimism. Now, from Jeffrey College. Yeah, 23. Oh. Some quick lads in this team. Well, it's a smart kick because there's no deep sweeper, but there is a man back for Bishop Wand. Now he's going to attack from deep, but Llandovery up in numbers. So is Bishop Wand the Ace Academy for Irish? Is that what it is? Uh, you can't call it Irish anymore. Oh, it's no, so London it's... South Central. Yes, it is, yeah. Well, that's been knocked on once, then twice. Well, yeah, because there, there was some talk as to whether or not we would have a first non independent school for a long time winning this tournament. We have made a little bit of history in this particular Roslyn Park National School Sevens with Jess Dubai becoming wow. the first non-British school to take home a trophy, which I think is absolutely fantastic and proof that not only the tournament's expanding, but the game's expanding as well. That was under 14s, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Um, they were awesome as well. Uh, we've, we've spent quite a long time pumping up their tyres, but the way that they bring multiple age groups, the parents come over, they all support each other, they play in the right spirit, they've been a real credit. A it's, real credit. It's great to have an international play with this tournament. It's good to have you know, the Welsh, Scottish, English yes, teams as yeah. well. You know, it's, it's brilliant. And uh, particularly in the last couple of years, great to see the Welsh and Scottish teams really representing themselves well. And we see that with uh, Llandovery College here on day two of the under-18s. And a little bit of good old-fashioned up the jumper. Sam Gardner, that is. So he's is Owen Griffiths, number nine. Quick ball here. It's all stacked a little bit narrow, so no options on the left-hand side on that phase. Options both ways now. Here we go, coming rushing out of the line, making that tackle. You can see them in your peripherals, and we're going to see quite a lot of that today, that greasy Release. bouncing ball. Will you miss metres? Oh, and it's Bishop Wand. Ever so close to getting something, however. Takes us through to half time. Front every college seven. Bishop Wand nil. Um, let's talk about the refereeing community then, because there are absolutely loads of you, and you put in serious graft. It's hard going out there, but you come back year on year. Why? What is it about this tournament that brings you down? One, Rostin Park look after us. Yeah. Two, you know, it's an absolute delight refereeing a you know, high standard of sevens rugby. Right? And you're also meeting referees from around the world who come here for the week. OK. And society, you know, we've got referees from Hong Kong, from America, um, again, Scotland, Wales, England, uh, obviously. But, yeah, so they, they come over. They come over for two weeks. They'll, they'll be looked after by the London Society and they'll be put up into people's houses and they'll do some 15s games some weekends. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's great. So, you know, and for us as referees, you know, it is... I mean, yesterday I did six games. Uh, it, it was I was tired last night. How's the body today? Uh, I'm, as I said, I've been rested today, so um, <laughs> it's probably a good thing. And there's, uh, I think, for the under 18s cup and, and plate, they have got referees who's like level five and level six in the wow. society. Yeah. And these are guys who do region, regional rugby, so like basically national three, which is the high quality uh, referees, and they're very fit. Well, I think you need to be to do that many games in a day, particularly for multiple days. Rain's got a little bit heavier. 
and that bit of breeze has gone. It was blowing from left to right, so the end that uh, Dundevery College will be attacking, but now it seems to have disappeared. Big shout out to all of our camera operators as well, who are stood out in the elements and don't have the benefit of one of these lovely housing umbrellas. Second half underway, Clendevery kicking to Bishop Wand, who've not really had an opportunity, but they have shown how dangerous they can be in this tournament. Patience. And now the change of pace, the games just smash into life, don't they? Need to be weary of the touchline here. That was Oli Agar earning the penalty. Yeah, still in the rock, you see. He has hand on the ball, so that was still in the rock. That's why he's given offside. He is a big man to have on the edge, Oli Agar, wearing number four. Oh, the dummy, the once, the twice, he's managed to keep hold of that. Well done by Joe Denham to get in that passing channel and stop the offload. I'm very pleased that you've promised me that the uh, rain's going to be done by one o'clock. Yeah, well, you know, it's the BBC weather app for you. Okay. You know, so I'm not a meteorologist, but... Uh... Always trust Auntie Beeb, eh? <laughs> Always. Just it's got a feeling of a tight game, isn't it? Like, oh. one bit of brilliance, one mistake, yeah. you know, and that's that's the game decided, really, isn't it? And, and, and it, I think there's three group games in these um, play competitions, so you, you can't really afford to lose one. More good line-out ball. And on days like today, it's like possession is paramount, I mean, isn't it? Sometimes you put, look, there's, there's no, no one home, no 15, right? But you put your boot through it. Yeah. Trust your pick. Oh, what a clear out. Brilliant clear out. And a turnover, and that could be the moment of brilliance that changes here. this game. Oh, oh and it's gone forward. Oh, referee says boot. And we do not yet have a try. Look for all the world like Bishop One, we're going to score. Has to come, does come, and it's dotted down by Elijah Taylor. Nine minutes gone, Bishop Wand on the board. And that bouncing ball, that slippery ball, playing havoc with Clendenbury College, and Bishop Wander on hand to get the score. Yeah, I think he hit his boot and went forward that way, I think so. Um, or, you know, let's say it's one of those things. Well, a miss hit conversion, so Clendenbury College still have a small lead. It definitely came off the boot. It's whether or not there was a, a fingertip beforehand. Are we going to see it here? There's the offload. Oh, no. I'm not sure it was. It was a good call. One knee, but, one yeah. shin. <laughs> so can you uh, can you give us the ruling on that in terms of the laws? If it goes hand, hand, foot forward, is knock that, on. that is it's a knock-on. Knock on. But didn't touch it. that didn't touch his hand there. We've, we've got the, we've got slow-mo here and, and, you know, fair play, the referee in real time yeah. saw it and got it right. So you know. it has to be a deliberate drop onto the foot for it not to be a knock-on, for it to be a kick, yes? Yeah. Right. I'll remember that forever now. Ten minutes gone. Great game. One try each. And every ahead by just the conversion. They have opted to go for it's the boot And this, this is time. Harry Gwynn. He's a speedster. He's going to get there first. What's the bounce going to do? Oh, it's going to let him down. It's gone forward, but now Bishop Wand. It's, uh, you alluded to it moments ago. It's a good tactic on a day like today. Definitely. Just You, know, you need to play in the right areas, don't you? Even in sevens. Can you play, play in their half? Bishop Wand playing in every half and just manage the game. He should have nudged that again rather than landing on it, I think. Yes. It forward. But look, you know, it's easy from up here, isn't it? You just, when you're in that position, you just want it to get that bounce up into the bread basket, yeah. don't you? <laughs> right, right up into the guts and you're home and hosed. He's a quick lad, Harry Gwynn. Dead. I've got two lines on Harry Gwynn and it, couldn't uh, sum up a Clendevery College player anymore. Not it's not two lines, it's two words. It says Scarlet Farmer. Correct. <laughs> now Bishop Wand deciding that they want to go boot to ball. Lovely ball out of the back to create some space. And now it's Landevry with defending to do. Bishop Wand looked re-energised since that try. Now Logan we're in number nine. What can he do? Albert Mildenhall it's a tidy player in 11, and this leg drive eating meters. 
Bishop Warren into the 22 now. Everyone lined up, ready to go. The chop tackle's oh, good. And every college. Oh, no lift. No lift. No, it, and right. referees have been super hot on that. Having hands on the ball, not quite enough. And good defensive pressure forces the knock on. So again, talk talk about that. You can't just put your hands on the ball no. now. You need to see a clear effort. It's is a, that the law? It's a clear picture, yeah. Before a rock's formed, on your feet, supporting your weight, a lift on the ball, and it's yours. So you either turnover's good, play on, or if they stop you doing it, it's a penalty to the the person's won the jackal. Well, sometimes you're almost better off getting the early penalty because we've seen it a few times, not just in URC or Premiership Rugby, but in uh, in this here, you'll turn the ball over, you'll hit the deck, and then you'll get pinned yeah, for, uh, for holding on. You, it's uh, you you brutal. It is. The whole point of it is, like, you get quick lift on it, is to stop people piling in the ruck. Yeah. Well, we did see that massive clear out, and we've seen Bishop Wand Turn that ball over at scrum time. Best period of the game for them now, and we're approaching the final minute. Another score here for either team could be terminal for the opponents. There's the nudge in behind. Smart kick, Van Devry there. Good take with the wet ball, but now they need to exit. Is the exit via the boot the best thing to do? That's the decision that's been made. And if Bishop Wand are going to do it, they're going to have to do it from deep. That's a really smart take. That's the surface for you, isn't it? Again, slide on the surface. Well, the kick chase is well. good. Bishop Wand trailing by two. And every college committing. Really good tackle. Important tackle. <whistles> oh, penalty. Yeah, Ruck formed, got his hands on the ball. The rain absolutely hosing it down now. Last chance for Bishop Wand, trailing by two. Big handoff. Is there an offload? Yes, there is. And they're through. Oh, he's nearly dropped it. Does that open the door for the defence? The cover tackle comes across. They've held him out. Oh. Incredible defence. That is absolute class. Yuri Badham. Outstanding from Sandovery College. Bishop Wand threw everything at that. It was the strength of Oli Agar, followed up by Ruben Osgood. The chase back, he grabbed a handful of jersey. Absolutely remarkable strength in the rain, remarkable commitment. Oh. Will it be enough to win the game? Oh. It will! That was Antoine Dupont-like, wasn't it? <laughs> Amazing game. Van Devry College, hold on to take a victory against Bishop One Church of England School. As dramatic an end as we've seen this week, maybe as dramatic an end as we will see, reflected what we saw yesterday in Beach and Cliff versus Norwich. We've seen it again, over the line, but not enough. And Bishop won four to Slandevery College, 5-7. Two teams going for it, loved it.
We come back to the under 13s, looking to make a little bit of drama and a little bit of quality of their own. Dulwich College versus Watsons in the wet. Dulwich in the blue and black hoops. Watsons, I'm going to say brown and white. Maybe it's maroon and white, but either way, there is some white for the time being. I'm not sure how long it's going to remain white with the rain falling from the sky. <laughs> Sam's back. Uh, your, your old neck of the woods, Dulwich, mate, but uh, you saw the end of that game, that defensive effort to hold the ball up. Unbelievable. We've seen it all week. The defence throughout the week has been outstanding. But as you said, just the resilience, the toughness, the skill and the work rate and desire came through and they got the win. Superb start to the day. What about these under-13s then? If you're joining us for the first time today, the under-13s doesn't go through to a cup. They've all sort of self-selected groups to, to find their level. So we should have some great contests here. We have already today, but what a chance for these young men to test themselves. They'd have been hoping for hard pitches and sunshine, but... It's all part of the lessons, the learnings of the game, isn't it? We don't often go the whole week without some rain, so here oh. it is on the, on the Friday. But, yeah, these kids, it's great Good for them work. to experience the whole atmosphere, see what it's like, watch the bigger kids play on the big stage, um, and let's hope they really enjoy this game out there in the rain. But they, they love it. Oh, kids they, run around. They do love it, and they're not scared to move the ball either. And we've seen a line break. Another good tackle, though, and Dulwich, they are... Pretty narrow in defence, but they're making some big tackles and they're forced out into touch on the far side, Watsons. Yeah, good attack by Watsons. Oh, yeah, because obviously at under 13s, you don't have line outs, so it's just a tap yeah. in five oh metres for those God. that are watching and going, why wasn't there a line out? No line outs, no conversions. I gotta give just tries and fast play. Joy, joy, joy. There's something to be said for it. I'm a big fan. Now, Watsons. High tempo, isn't it? And Dulwich still narrow in defence, but trusted each other in the drift. Now they've got to go back the other way. Still nil-nil. Oh, good offload. And this will lead to a good score. Watson's in. Really good from Watson's. Again, moving the ball all the way to the right, not taking contact, going to the left. Little half break. Lovely offload under the sticks. You're a big fan of that, aren't you? You, you don't like players taking contact if they don't need to. If they don't need to is yes, the big thing. Yeah. Obviously, there are times that you've got to take contact, especially sort of, I get it, at the under-18s when defences are so good. But I do think that there is a, too much of a tendency to look for contact and then offload rather than pass the ball before contact. Well, as we move into the under-18s today, I'm sure we'll see plenty of both. Great restart. Skipping off the surface. Um, they seem pretty organised, this Watson's team in mm. defence and attack. They know what they're doing. They're looking to move the ball. they got look, six up and a sweeper. They've obviously done a fair yeah. bit on the training park, this lot. Here we go. Six up and a sweeper for Dulwich to try and break down. That's a loose ball. Referee happy enough that it's gone backwards. Oh, another offload and Watson sneaking around this. It's going to have to sit up and it is still just about in Dulwich hands. Ah, oh, the kick falls very kindly for Watsons. And we're going to see plenty of that today. Sliding in at the corner in the wet. That is maybe the one benefit of sevens when it hoses it down, is you can put some style on your finishes. Yeah, he's picked that ball up nicely. As you say, in horrible conditions. And then a superb dive for the camera in the corner. Um, Watsons putting a lot of pressure up on Dulwich there, right on their line. I think fair play. Didn't really know what to do. Boot the mm -hmm. ball. And you'll see this lovely pick up here and scoots in the corner. Go on, dive it in. Yeah, go on. Sir. Well done. Well <laughs> done. Oh, is that the rain easing off or am I just the eternal optimist? Eternal optimist, Dave. I like okay. it. Okay, yeah. Well, Gareth, who joined us earlier, has promised me that the BBC Weather app says it's going to be sunshine by one o'clock. So. If that proves to not be true, then you know you can take it up with. Well, you both had, you both got your shorts on, so well, well I, done you. Nice. Like I said, legs, Le legs are waterproof. Pink or, pink or salmon? Either or. <laughs> They're from a very cheap clothes shop in Poland where my suitcase got lost <laughs> when I was on the job. <laughs> Whatever Polish Primark is, that's where these are from. Anyway, it is Watson's 10, Dulwich 0, here on the final day. Oh, that's good strength. Good commitment to the carry. 
Needs some support with him, though. Good long presentation. Turned over. Not one of our international referees. And you know what? I think he's doing a great job. Yeah. There's probably a couple of knock-ons out there, but you know what? It's where the kids let them play, eh? Yeah, no, I entirely agree. Little bit of discretion. <laughs> and a good jackal. Well-earned penalty by Dulwich. As we said earlier, I think, I think Dulwich are a little bit narrow. If they can use the width, I think they're going to get a bit more joy. Oh, and he's lost his boot. <laughs> Oh, not, not today. Not today of all days. He's going to have a soggy, soggy. wet sock. So Dulwich looking for their first ah, try of the roll. game. Hey, Loads of room out left if they can move the ball. Here we go. That's the way to One go. One more before contact. Or oh, maybe no or need. Or just run around everyone on your own. Oh, oh he's just got it down. Just got it down. The gas merchant. That was a good chase and good awareness of where it was. And he actually did well to get it down because his momentum was careering towards that dead ball line. In the end, as you said, he really did well because it looked like, uh-oh, he's going to go out after all that hard work. But he got the ball down just before contact. Yeah, let's take a look at this finish. Backs himself pace-wise. I mean, if he hasn't scored there and you're the man on the edge, then he is going straight off your Christmas card list. Let's have a look. Yeah, he's done yeah, well, hasn't good he? Finish. Ball in the in the correct hand then, so he could fend with his right. Good skill. Oh, the driven low kick off, and that is a good take, but not a perfect pass. But Watson's on the charge again. It is easing off, isn't it? I'm not saying that the danger's over in terms of the wet stuff, but it's easing off. And there's a little bit bright sky is there or we both just really hopeful ah there's always bright sky at the Rostin Park National School sevens done it got to keep moving it feeding this big edge player it's quick strong loves a carry that's nice I just like to see them they're moving the ball out of contact if they could just do it to a couple of balls. Oh, oh, intercepted! Oh, is he quick enough to finish? The chase coming in. Good instincts, good awareness. Great clear out from Watson's then. The Dulwich guy was over the ball, but he just got absolutely smoked. Oh, that takes us through to half time, just a score in it. Watson's 10, Dulwich 5. All right, second half incoming. Glorious sunshine also incoming. I've been promised it, promised it. But in the meantime, these two young teams doing a fabulous job of giving us some entertainment. We've had three tries, two of them 
have gone to the team in brown and white and they're moving this ball so confidently lovely ball off the right hand to create some space oh and a pick bump on the tackle as well and the offload and now moving it away this is superb rugby from watson's they're really trying to move the ball to space and in these conditions it's not easy and he's got the big fend and he's got the pace into the 22. <laughs> the left arm's out in celebration <laughs> already. Good on him. <laughs> Put a parachute on that man because he is flying. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. But just these core skills again. Look at the ball transfer, the footwork, the handoff. Oh, it's a bit of everything, isn't it? It's superb, and, and leading up to that, prior to that, they, they pass the ball left to right to left. Watson's are really trying to move the ball to space, and then when they get that space, oh, splash down. Good on him. Good on him. He's going to remember that. I hope so. I'm glad it's captured on camera there. Identifying space with these kickoffs as well. Yeah, they're a tidy side, this Watson's, aren't they? They play nice rugby. They've got a mix of like ball players, strong players, quick players. Yeah, they're playing some good rugby oh well done ref well done just let it go See, yeah Dulwich can move the ball now I'd just like to see him run straight and pass the ball well there's the pass they've certainly got some size some pace some physicality That's it's just good. putting it all together here we go then oh the ball oh, over the top there's the player in the passing channel but it's back in blue and black and again can they move it again can we pass before contact yeah excellent one Whoa. <laughs> good fend well, to be fair, if you've got a fend like that, just run round everyone, eh? Oh, the cover oh. tackle was good. Wait. Back temple. So the next step Wait. for that young man is just a little look Wait. to his right and to see the support, <laughs> isn't it? He's like, yeah, you, Alex, on, Alex, it looks like Alex Brown's over there, Coach. And you know that they've done two on ones yeah, thousands yeah, of, of times, are. and then the boy just gets the ball and runs sideways yes. across the pitch. <laughs> Coach Killer. Of course. Dude, this is lovely from Watson's. Pass before contact, here we go. Yeah, they're doing the business, aren't they? They really are. They play nice stuff, Watson's. Keep the ball moving if they can again. Move it away from contact. But intercepted, and now Dulwich back on the ball. Ten minutes gone. Oh. Ah, it's a nice pass. It's bounced into the bread basket, but it is still with... Watson's patience and perseverance. As you say, really patient on the ball. And oh, just trying to hit that hard line again. He's just forced it a little bit. This is the thing, seven, you get tempted by a half gap. But there's, if there's a half gap in front of you, there's a bigger gap for someone somewhere else. Yes. You've got to try and move the ball to space. And it's really hard because in 15s, you're like, go forward, run like those half gaps. And then like sevens, it's almost a completely different sport, to be fair. Here we go, boys. Absolutely. First scrum of the day. And in no. these conditions, right. yeah, that's the, excellent. The boys have handled incredibly well, right, haven't Watson. they? Come on, boys. Play on. Again, Watson's with the ball really good, but in defence, they come up quick. They make their tackles. Here we go, run straight. Dummy. Oh, it's a lovely dummy, Ow. and that creates the gap. Into the 22 they go. 11 minutes, still bags of time left in this for more tries at the moment. And here they go, all the spaces out here. Good defending from Dulwich. But how much longer can they last? Good step. Takes himself back towards the tackle, but... Oh, he might be small, but he is mighty. Brilliant try. Yeah, really good. Off his left foot, then the handoff, as you said, for a small guy, but he's timed the handoff to perfection. And he's dotted down under the sticks. They're, um, they're playing lovely rugby here, Watson. It's Tackle. 
There you go. Right then. This is where, last couple of minutes, I mean, I know you would anyway, because uh, you've got such an affinity with the place, but this is where I go all in on Dulwich, because they've been up against it. Watsons are going to get the win. Oh, well, that is a good kick. Is this going to lead to a score? No. Nope. <laughs> it's well covered. Rose Ed. Yeah, exactly. Get yourself. Uh, no, it's not your, it's not your it's not your penalty, young man. Oh, not sure what that was for, but maybe he's just in front of the kicker, I think. Yeah. Okay, though. But yeah, as you say, it'd be nice for Dulles to get a try. Watsons have played really well. Yeah. Really nice rugby, but as you said, it'd be nice to get a black and blue over the over the whitewash and try and get a score well, from here. Oh, but those Watson's boys are up quick, putting pressure on Dulwich. Just, uh, just another word for the referee. You've mentioned it already, but I think he's handled this game in these conditions really well. He's done a good job, and that's a great offload. And it will be a Watson strike in the last minute. You know what? He's shown great empathy. And, like, the refs, actually, I think, watch, I've obviously been here yesterday, I think they've done a great job. But sometimes you just think with society refs, they sometimes are just a bit of stickler for the raw yeah. laws. These are kids, they're going to make errors. They're not doing it deliberately. I think he's done this game superbly. Obviously, we've got a monster of an under-18 game coming next. That's going to be <laughs> That's obviously going to be ref differently, but so it should. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And empathy is the word, isn't it? Whatever. And particularly with these under-13s, the whole point, the boys or girls, we want to give them a taste for the game that keeps them in the game for as long as they feel comfortable, as long as they want to play. And if they come here and they have a positive experience, then that is certainly going to help on their rugby journey. Here we go. He's in space. Has he got the legs? He needs someone Good there with tackle him. tackle from Kirkham again. I'm so, sorry, Watson's. Thinking about Kirkham later on, aren't you? <laughs> They're on pitch RE1 at 1 o'clock. No, no, no. Referee did say no hands there. What I will say is he's been refereeing throughout the week. He's uh, he doesn't take any messing. He's a stern old operator. I like him. Yeah. I, think, I think he's great. Yeah, he's got me a really, too. really good sort of um, the way he talks to the kids, um, trying to almost coach them during the game, which is what you want. Okay. So he doesn't want to be blowing his ref, his whistle all the time. Yes, no, yeah. This has been a great game. In, pretty testing conditions but as you said the rain's gone yeah and hopefully it won't come back and we're going to see some superb under 18s rugby throughout the rest of this day but it's under 18s coming up next we've got to get to the conclusion of this one first watson's 25 dulwich five next stoppage will win it this is good offloading by dulwich now that's a good pass as well but oh just not quite gathered and if it was then there would have been well green pastures with a hint oh, oh great tackle technique Really good tackle technique. That's how you do it. You're Foot in right. close, hit with your shoulder, driving back. But Dulwich have managed to offload the ball, keep it. Can they just try and move it to space? Well, where is that space? Is it on the left-hand side? This is great defensive discipline by Watson. And that draws this one to a close. Congratulations, Watson's victors over Dulwich. 25-5.
second under-18s game right. of the day. Llandovery College against Set. Bishop Wand earlier. Brilliant. That finished 7-5. Bishop Wand were over the line, but held up with the last play. And now Dulwich switching back the other side. Look how narrow Harrow are in defence. And Dulwich are in attack. It'll kick in behind. They're not quite on the same wavelength, but this a tough take and a, and a good take. And Milanch making a good tackle. Seven minutes gone, so this will be the last attack of the half. Can Harrow conjure something up to take the lead? That step will help, that acceleration will help, and it will be two unanswered tries for the boys from Harrow. <laughs> Sam Winters, in he goes. And Again, a superb step, and then it's that acceleration, those first 10 yards, he's gone. <laughs> Um, I think just a little bit of difference. Harrow seemed to be playing with, have a little bit more width, which again makes it a lot harder to defend because there's more spaces. So then your steppers, like look at the width, they've got nice and wide, the wing is wide. And then that sort of third defender, that's what you're looking for. You're looking to attack the gap between the second and third defender. And he's done it brilliantly there. Excellent score. We've had three excellent scores, two of them have gone to the men in white. And at half-time, Harrow 14, Dulwich 5. Wrap and trap, and we're going to make our first time tackle. The rest has been done. Superb pass back from a goal line, and then simple execution to the edge, and then decision space. Yeah? yeah. Right, let's go. Changes Welcome again, starting line up on the pass. Let's run away with it now. Come on, come on, come on. Dulwich receiving the kickoff to start the second half. And very often in the under 18s cup, the kickoffs, the restarts, absolutely massive. But you were saying earlier, when it's a little bit wet underfoot like this, it makes that particular skill harder to execute. Yeah, obviously, if the pitch is a little bit bo boggy, it's hard to then get purchase on the ball and like get height on it, which is what you're looking to do. But I think it's still firm enough at the moment, and that's proved it. Great kickoff, good hang time. Yeah. And it's forced a knock on from Dolly. So, yeah, so that's what you're looking for. Kickoffs, you want to put the ball as high as possible, and you want your big forwards to sort of get under the ball or put pressure on the receiving team like that. And again, Harrow have got a superb opportunity to strike. Well, the last time they had a scrum in a good Press. position, didn't go according to plan. Right. They ended up conceding the penalty. Since then, Press. they scored two tries, and as they converted, it's a two score lead. Nice pick up off the floor. That is not an easy skill executed by. Bit of Edstrom. And then the big Biff intercepted. That was Will Davis in the passing channel, and it's a penalty. Good read from the Dulwich defence, um, recognising that it wasn't offside and there's a gap here. See, that Harrow defence is coming so hard. Now Dulwich, passing needs to be crisp, numbers need to be good, inside options a good one. And another advantage coming here, and oh, what a tackle. A hint of drizzle in the air again. Another inside ball, it's a good one, the acceleration good too. Hamish Millen, she's got support with him. Charlie Pickering yeah! is going to go in. First try of the half is going to go Dulwich's way. They reduce the arrears. Conversion to come to make it a two-point game. That's the start Dulwich needed, the start this game needed as well. Really good play from Dulwich there. And again, talking about um, Harrow exploiting that gap between the second and third defender. That's what Dulwich did, but they did it with an inside pass rather than an actual step. And then again, the support. The offload, and that's a big conversion. Dulwich 12, Harrow 14. Just a replay, they're having a little bit of joy with these inside passes, Dulwich. Yeah, so here, the here you half. see, so there's that gap between the second and the third defender. Exploit that, recognise he's not going to go himself, and a good offload. Yeah, it was a big chase back by Henry Dargan, nearly got there, got a handful of shorts, but... Charlie Pickering on hand. 
Oh, miles offside. Not even nearly onside. He was, but you know what? He realised himself and stopped. So, but I think the whistle was already in the, in the mouth because I think if you'd given it another second, he probably wouldn't have blown that. But that's a big moment in the game. Bosh. That's a big <laughs> carry, yes. Sometimes you've got to go direct. Big clear out coming by Harrow as well. Just as the rain starts to fall again. Important possession this now for Harrow. They'll want to get something from it and they're bursting through tackles as well. One missed tackle and you are toast in this game. Harry Dargan. Under the post and it's the fact that it's under the post is so important because it'll be a two score lead again. As you said, you miss a tackle in a game of sevens, it's probably going to lead to try. I sort of often go, it's like pass, catch, tackle. If you do those things in sevens, you're generally going to be all right. He's a big, strong, powerful boy and on a good scissors line, but Dulwich will probably be disappointed with that tackling. And they said, Dulwich need two scores now, but there's enough time. They can claim this ball. We see it now. Harrow go wide. He comes on that switch and then it's like, right, I'm going. And he's just attacked that little scene between the two, two defenders and fair play under the sticks. Once he backs himself, he is a tough man to stop. Dulwich going again. They're not letting that condition stop them from playing. That's a lovely bit of footwork from Tom Charmier. Counter -ruck good. Counter -ruck's good too. Entry. Oh, and then Dulwich entering from the side. Possession so important. We're in the last three minutes. Clock continues to tick and Arrow. Nine points to the good. That is a lovely inside slip. Top quality ball control. <laughs> and perhaps that's the score that buries the game. Dotted down by Sam Winter's second try of the game for him. And that's a very friendly scoreline now for the Herovians. 28-12. Yeah, again, we keep, it, we, it, almost every try has come from this scene between two and three. Again, you see here, I think this is George Simpson, used to be a St. Benedict's boy, actually. Takes it wide and there, creates that gap between the second and third defender, and he's got the wheels to go through. Um, impressive play from Harrow. And an impressive lead now on RE1, and Dulwich can't control the kickoff. And Harrow have been excellent however when you get gifted the ball like that you can play rugby like this fluid handling really is excellent stuff but held in the tackle going for a second bite at the cherry now Dulwich need to go there needs to be some urgency about their play Tristan Saunders scorer the first try can't quite free the hands oh. Arrow absolutely all over this ball so here's Sam Winters coming all the way out to Stratton Stratton's got the man outside him Ashton Alinchich we're in number 14 the Harrow pretty much just keep hold of the ball but they won't they'll want to keep on playing Dulwich just can't get their hands on the pill then turned over though Harrow's work at the breakdown has been exceptional. I think sort of over the last few years, that's been the real big sort of development in school sevens. The breakdown is massive. And Get over one. it, the Jacqueline. Like, I think and they've right. got three penalties just in this half, Harrow, two of which have led to scores. Well, they're knocking on the door again here. Oh, the dummy and the go. <laughs> Ashton Ilinchich. Goes over for Harrow. It's 33 points to 12. And just to go back to to that point, usually teams traditionally would have had one or two jacklers. It feels like everybody on the team has got that in the in the armory now. In the top teams, most definitely. Um, if you get isolated as a ball carrier, these top teams, everyone in the in the team is going to be over the ball jackling. And Harrow, that was a very, very impressive performance from a Harrow side that I don't know how much sevens training they would have done. As we said, they won the Schools Cup last week. They look very impressive. They certainly do. They certainly do. They have been the talk of the town. And once again, they've sent a message. They put the rest of the competition on notice by defeating Dulwich College 33-12.
units for uh, yeah the whole of this academic year so far. So since September, I've yeah got eight eight units. I love the fact that the stats give you a, a sort of a basis for sort of analysing what the players are doing, how hard they're working. I think in, in training, but in matches as well, it's interesting to see who kind of the, the unsung heroes, if you like, the people that, that work that you don't necessarily see them doing the work. So the students have, uh, yeah, they have real kind of responsibility to do all the uh, uploading of data themselves. Uh, all I have to do, look on the cloud uh, sort of platform, and then I can do my analysis from there. Yeah, it's been really interesting. I've enjoyed seeing how far is running as well as my max speed. Well, it's been great. I mean, it's been really fun having competition within the squad. See so who's run the most, who's the fastest. This is one really good thing about the app. So each player will have an app. We've created the rugby school community, uh, so they can compare themselves against each other and get leaderboards for each metric. And yeah, it certainly breeds that uh, that area of uh, competitiveness. Everyone's like putting their best teams out, working hard, and never giving up until the final whistle. So when you come out here and seeing you know everyone, all the big schools and the big names, and putting ourselves up against it, it's, uh, it's really good. It's been brilliant. We love we love coming down. Uh, we're lucky enough this year. It's our it's our 200th year of rugby. Uh, so we're. We're celebrating massively this year. I think the standard's been really high. We were here last year. 12 months on, the girls' game has exploded and uh, we've had three really tough games today. It's been a yeah, great tournament, great standards, um, and nice to see how we mix some of the bigger schools and the bigger names of rugby. Yeah. Blundells versus KCS Wimbledon in the under 13s. These youngsters enjoying themselves out there and enjoying themselves with early scores as well. Well, it's not just about these two out there, it's about uh, all of the schools around and about, all of the colleges, all of the internationals, but sometimes it's important to focus on the schools here in England too, of course, so much success, and uh, may as well talk about Clifton College while we're here, haven't we? Um, how's everything gone for you this week? Yeah, it's been a fantastic week. Um, we put the most sides we've ever put in, so we put seven sides across the board, which I think... You know, it's a, it's a hell of a challenge in terms of logistics, but in terms of pupil experience, the, the, so many teams here, so many different age groups, girls and boys all being in the same place at one, it's, it's a unique sporting occasion. There's almost so much chat about the, the, the under-18s and the boys and the ace girls, but what about these under-13s out here in the wet, playing great rugby, attack and defence, and hopefully setting themselves up for years and years to come, so maybe that they one day get to play in the 18s as well. Yeah, this is where you grow stories. You grow the love for the tournament. Our, our prep school were here yesterday. They then stand on the sideline and, and watch the older boys and the girls play. And, and it builds a story oh over the years that, that really sort of drives rugby and your rugby program oh in your schools. You feel, sometimes you get sanitised to how um, much this means to kids. And it, this is, this is I remember being a part of this, and I think children always do over the years. And it's such an important event just, just for the development and growth of children and your rugby program in your school. So you say, you're talking about memories there. Do you remember being here as a player? I, I remember being at actual Roslyn Park. I'm okay. old, so when it was down there, yeah, yeah. So I, I actually remember I, we got the quarterfinals. And remember, it, it, so it's a, it's a massive occasion. And everyone's got their own unique story. Even yesterday, we had three teams, four teams, all playing on different pitches. And we come back to the tent and there'd be different stories of what had gone on. And everyone would relive it and then go back to their games. It's a fantastic event. That is what I've absolutely loved. Is uh, So a couple of days ago when the sun came out, we went around with the camera for the live stream and we were talking talking to some of the, the youngsters who'd played and even the ones who'd had a terrible time on the pitch had had such a good time off the pitch. And as you mentioned, they'd made great memories. They'd made fr fr friends and enemies, they call them, don't they? Because they want to beat them on the pitch. But, you know, we've got schools from the north meeting Help! schools from the south for the first time. You've got people, you're on the 15 circuit together, but you get to renew those, those rivalries on the sevens pitch as well. It really is absolutely magnificent. And we've got some... Smart attacking play here from KCS. Lovely little wrap around. He's going to back himself for the gas. Good balance. 
So impressed with the skill set of these young players and the eye for the try line. Here we go. Good offload. And that's something as well. I mean, the awareness of these young players to keep this ball alive. They've got numbers here, though. Queuing up for it. Chance to level the game. Foot race for the corner. An unselfish final pass. And that is a fabulous try. Yeah, I mean, that's perfect seven, isn't it? We've gone full length down to an edge, offloads, then managed to hold off feet, pass, 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 and they score in the corner, which is just how you want to see sevens being played. We have got tournament director Andy Higgins loitering around here with intent. Is he is he watching what you're saying or what I'm saying? Who's he got his eye on here? I, I think he's prepped me fully for this got this uh, this interview. So, oh, has uh, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, totally, are, what totally. are your key lines then? What are the things you have to say? Well, I just want to thank Andy for how you know <laughs> how great the tournament is, how it's grown, you know, how he's improved the weather from last year. Only marginally today, to be fair. Well, we, yeah, we survived so far. So uh, la last year we played a sevens tournament straight off the back of this, and we took the boys up on a bus, caked. Did you talk about memories? Oh. Caked head to toe in mud at one of the services was an interesting uh, occasion for a few people that were buying uh, takeaways. So uh, yeah, as I say, stories created here are amazing, and it's, it's great to see Blundells out here. You know, playing against a team from London, as yeah. you say, teams you don't normally play. That is absolutely fantastic. You'd need uh, you need a pressure washer for those kids who you parked on the bus last year. Yeah, we couldn't find it. We, we actually forgot to buy towels, so oh, yeah, we, we no. pulled up outside an ASDA to buy a, a load of towels <laughs> just to try and mop 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 the boys down. Which is uh, but the thing is, those are the stories that that people don't necessarily experience and don't necessarily appreciate that there are just these logistical things that, if you take them in the right spirit, are great fun. Yeah, and it's the, the whole nature of do you make the second day, do you not make the second day, do you book hotel rooms, are we staying overnight? Yeah. Suddenly you've you know, got a group of parents that haven't planned anything. I was just talking to a parent down there who hadn't, I don't know, she hadn't backed us to go to the second day, so she, <laughs> she just had to go to next to buy, buy a load of stuff for today because she'd uh, not planned on being here. And as you say, it's, it's, such a, you know, it's such an unknown or the day just pans out and grows. Oh, she of little faith. That's, that's what I said to her. She had to stay at a friend's house, and, you know, had to use friend's makeup to come back here. So, you know, these, these sort of stories that go on are, are brilliant. 5-5, five, five. this is an excellent game. Still 90 seconds of the first half to go. That is a nudge for the corner. Will it yield a try? Oh, not this time. Not this time. Well, I've been speaking about this uh, a few times because I always look forward to this, to this week. And lucky enough to work in professional rugby and quite a lot with... Uh, with the Welsh clubs in the URC. So I speak to a lot of the players now who've played senior rugby, some who've been capped for Wales, all who have played for either Dragons or Ospreys or Cardiff or Scarlets. And because of the way school rugby was in Wales then, a lot of them didn't get the opportunity to play here. And even though they've achieved so much in rugby, there's part of them that's gutted that they didn't get to experience this because so many friends and, and players that they grew up with and players that they play with now did and they speak about it in such fond terms because it really does hold a special place in the rugby landscape. Yeah, and I think the tournament has very much come back to now being a, a British tournament in some ways with the, the, you know, the Scottish sides have always been here, but the Welsh sides are really sort of buying back into it. And I think it's great to see because they bring so much to the tournament and there's that unknown, you know, you look up the name of the school and you can't quite work out where they're from and the nervousness of the children. It, it creates genuine excitement when you play teams you don't know. Well, you say don't know, can't say as well, because we've got Colega Kamoiv on this pitch uh, coming up and I've just had it... Well, to, to the point where somebody asked me if I had the team sheet and I wasn't sure what they were saying. But uh, in the, the first under-18s game today, we had Llandevery College against Bishop Wand. It was a 7-5 thriller that involved Bishop Wand being held up over the line after a chase back with the last play. So, yes, the Welsh teams, the Scottish teams, South Africans, Australians, teams from Dubai, they all bring a, a unique flavour to this great tournament and we love to have them. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see Clan Lovery, a great school with great uh, heritage and great players, and we, we play them as a school as well, and they bring a fantastic intent around them and, and a different way of playing that really sort of challenges you know, us and the way we play, a physicality and an edge, which we find brilliant. And you know, it's, it's a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour drive from, oh. from Clifton College to Clan Lovery, but the, the occasion is brilliant. Clan Lovery is at least a two-and-a-half-hour drive from everywhere. The roads get a little bit tricky. <laughs> when you get to a certain point of mid Wales or West Wales. Just seen 
Is that Will Greenwood walking past? And he's gone back to the bleach blonde from uh, from the old days, rolling back the years. Yeah, there's quite a few of the old boys running around. And my colleague, who I work with, Danny Grucock, if we can try and get to RE6, it takes him about four days to get there, stopping and <laughs> chatting about the old times, reminiscing about the days. Oh, that's great, though, isn't it? And this is a decent kick, too. What's the chase going to look like for Blundells? It's going to be KCS Wimbledon who get back, and if they force the knock on there... Oh, just a little, little slither of one. Yeah, it's not a bad tactic in these conditions, is it? You put the ball in behind and actually it's hard to play. Half-time. 5-5, five, five. we'll be back with the second half. Second half is underway. 5-5. Five, five. Penalty, you cannot leave with the shoulder, mate. You can't leave the shoulder into him. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> can't leave with the shoulder. Even at under 13s, the lads like a little wait. bit of biff. But our referees making sure that it is all above board. <laughs> above board, but not above the sternum. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, this will be a, a very big pitch for some of these boys to play on. And, yeah. and obviously with the crowd and the atmosphere, it's... It's what this is all about, but in terms of moving the ball, they get a real opportunity to do it. A lot of the times when you play sevens tournaments at this age, you're kind of on half a pitch or you're squeezed in somewhere. For, for them to play on this, it's amazing. How do you set ambitions um, and expectations for these groups of, of young players across the age groups then? Well, I think clearly it's relative to, to their ability. You know what's coming through. As you move through and build in the age groups, then the expectation may become more around performance and results. But at this age, this is about building experiences. Put, rugby is all about putting children in uh, situations they may not be in or may be used to, and, and you know, creating a nervousness around the whole thing. And it's a learning experience at this age to explore and to try things. And I think, yeah, as you can see out here, this is a unique stage for them. They're on a live stream. These yeah. are all the things you want. Rug rugby's there to develop children. It's a wonderful sport. We know it's about fitness, uh, about health and well-being, but it's also about you know, life values and traits yeah. and things like that. And you see them being demonstrated here. There's a ma magnificent opportunity for these children to show what they can do on this stage and perform. It certainly is, as as team members, as teammates, as as leaders, as individuals. All of these things all contribute to the game we love and. Every now and then the weather plays a part too, and we've seen that there with that little knock on. Yeah, they would have come up yesterday thinking they could throw the ball around anywhere. Oh, yes. It was glorious, and then they've had to suddenly adapt to uh, slightly different conditions. Of course, with the under 18s coming to a conclusion today, that is going to play a huge part. Fingers crossed, again, I've been promised one o'clock the rain's going to stop and it's going to be glorious sunshine. But I mean, it's, it's been quite interesting because there's been a lot of seven storms going on prior to this, and yeah. a lot of them had to go on on artificial surfaces oh, okay. and 3G pitches, yeah. which has been great, but we've all known that 
those players that we played on there and the way we played, is that going to actually tra transfer over to here? And clearly, when we come to the business end, mm. it's going to be very different to those games we played on 3G services. So where is your sevens tour taking you up to this point then? Where have you, where have you taken the school? So we've been uh, at the TSC sevens, which Bye. was up at uh, Six Ways. Again, artificial surface, which was brilliant. Uh, we did the floodlit sevens, Ipswich. Again, Lovely. artificial surface. Um, and then we did the West of England, which finally put us on some grass surfaces, which is important. But it's even the squad you think you might pick. You know, what's it going to be like on the second day? And, and that's it's a big part. And I know last year, you know, we had a boy unavailable because he was on international duty, a prop. But actually, it would have been quite useful given the conditions <laughs> yeah. last year. Second try then for KCS Wimbledon. They've gone in to sneak ahead. Looking down, a few people have made the same error as me today and put shorts on. You're one of them. Although legs are waterproof, to be fair. Yeah, that, that, that's what we were saying. Unless to put in the washing machine, so that's, <laughs> uh, it's always a bonus at the end of the day. But um, we're going to have some very muddy buses when we uh, when we arrive back to school eventually. Oh yes. Oh yes. It's casting my eye. Who do I see? Dan Murphy down there. He was uh, formerly coaching at St Joe's. Now he's Hartbury University. They've got a stand here, looking for their next generation of talent in Buck Super Rugby. And the Women's National League, of course. Oh, excellent kickoff. It's been gathered on oh, and then knocked on. And it's a, Forward by Blue. a tough break. From down. Red Bull mark is here. So what about in terms of your group of, um, of under-18s now? What are they going to be moving on to do? Are they going to be sticking in rugby? Will it be university, clubs, jobs? What's happening with this talented group? Well, that's it. The most important thing is we track these... Well, you know, boys to see if they Bye. and girls to see if they continue playing rugby. That's the most important thing. You know, we always talk about the one percent, the two percent that we know and their names go up in lights, but we want the others to stay in the game. You know, I'm involved in Clifton Rugby Club, and I want the boys to come up to Clifton Rugby Club afterwards. Yeah. I know uh, Tony Yap, who coaches Blundell's team out there, he coaches at Taunton. He wants the boys Bye. to come up to Taunton Rugby Club. We want to stay in the game. You know, this, this is the most important thing about rugby. It's, it's not solely about the stardust. Of course. I remember having a chat to, to Gary Street, who's having a bit of ill health at the moment, and we wish him all the very best with his recovery. But, of course, his rugby journey's seen him lift a World Cup with England women, but then he was involved with the Harlequins Under-18 Academy, and I had a similar conversation to what we're having now on the Premiership Academy's final day. Of course, all the teams were, were there. That was at, at Six Ways too. And I said, well, what's the objective? Because, you know, you'll take a few of these on to Senior Academy, and some will end up playing first team. And he said exactly the same. He's like, we want to create an environment where these young players feel as though they can stay in the game for as long as they want to. And it doesn't matter if it's British and Irish Lions, if it's KCS Wimbledon scoring another try here at Roslyn Park, or if it's London Cornish fourth team, as long as they're in an environment where they're enjoying the game, then, then we've done our job. And there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, and I think we have to be very mindful to make sure that they understand that this journey, if it's an aspirational journey, 18 isn't an age where that aspiration isn't, it's not stopped. We were playing a team at the weekend, like Tony, and there was a boy there who'd, who'd been in the academy pathway, contracted for a couple of years, then probably not kept on. And then four years later, he's, he's played 180 league games and he, he's signed up by another premiership club. You know, yeah. that journey, it goes to 24. It goes a long time. I think we need to remind the children that 18 isn't that pinch point. Well, there are a few examples of that, aren't there? Um, we're going to meet one later today because Alex Dombrant's going to come and join us and he wasn't involved with an academy, went to Cardiff Met and now is back in the England setup and played incredible rugby. There is George Makepeace Cubitt, who fell out of um, rugby altogether, signed for, for Rams, and he ended up playing a key part for England in the 20s in this Six Nations yeah. campaign they've just won. So loads of examples that if you stick at it and enjoy your rugby, then anything's possible. I mean, we had Emmanuel Fayewabosa at oh, Clifton College. Of course. Yeah, and, and his journey is, is one, you know, ups and downs, roller coasters, came to Clifton College, and then uh, university didn't quite work out, moved to Aston University with Wasps, was obviously the story about them move down to Exeter you know that road is never an exact road it's never an exact science and he's quite good as well isn't he <laughs> yeah I, I think whichever way he was going to find a path somewhere um but you know and clearly he's still uh, you know on two paths he's mm. an academic and his and his um and his rugby path and he's, yeah. he's combining the two at the moment and uh, you know he, he was 
very studious at school and very switched on. And I think whichever way he was always going to try and do the both. I'm not sure he thought the England uh, scenario yes. was going to come up that quickly, but he, he's, he's grabbed it with two hands. And I think that game against Ireland, he uh, he showed what he could do. Oh, he was he was exceptional. And of course, for these for these young players, you, they, I'm, I'd imagine they all make you make you very very proud in different ways, no matter what they go on to uh, achieve success in. But when somebody who you've got to know at that age group and you know they've not had the easiest of paths into that level of the game when they do achieve something you must be incredibly proud of that yeah it is because you remember those parts of the journey where it wasn't all sunshine and there was difficult decisions to be made and you know that it's it, every, every journey which looks so simple and perfect actually it, it waves and it changes and you take different tacks and it's really convincing in my day it was very different you know you went to a club you went up the clubs you did that now yeah. there's this kind of s strict pathway it looks like but no one's pathway is really that and i think we need to make sure that these guys out here know that those little bumps in the road are quite common and it's not the end and how do we get over them and as you say with alex don brown he'll tell a different story and and, and lots of internationals all will have different stories yes. it wouldn't be that clear pathway just through and i think rugby you know creates resilience through that i think well, these young players are having to be resilient in the rain here, and hopefully this experience on RE1. I'm sure the tournament organiser said the sun was coming out. This oh, afternoon. I know, I know, I know. It's full of promises he is. Oh, but he's done a, a cracking job, and I'm pleased he's put some some tracking and some path down on this thoroughfare alongside RE1, because otherwise it gets... Uh, Pretty treacherous. Right, last opportunity then for Blundells to get a score here. They're going to lose the game. Can somebody get something for the highlights reel on the live stream? This really good defence from KCS. Now then, can they use the width? Slippery, aren't they? You need the 21 mil studs today. Good offloading, though, and good game awareness. But also the line speed, the defensive pressure. And that's the knock-on, which could and should bring us to the end. KCS defeat Blundells, 15-5. Into the women's open we go. Cardinal Newman versus, for the love of the game, our Canadian friends. Well, they're friends to everyone apart from those who they've played because they have been dusting teams, as have Cardinal Newman. So for the love of the game, the Canadians in the red. Cardinal Newman in the black with the red trim. And this is about to go up in terms of pace, in terms of speed. Cardinal Newman with the defending to do first up for the love of the game. Just a reminder of their story. They've come over on 15 saw. They weren't even due to play in this competition. They found out about the sevens. They made some calls. They got in and here they are on day two. But it's Cardinal Newman who strike first. Venomous finish from close range. And the first attack leads to the first seven points. And I think those tries from close range, those narrow tries, particularly as the rain falls, it's going to be more and more common, more and more popular. And in between games, the opportunity to seek sanctuary and get warm and dry 
It's going to be welcome and greatly received. Cardinal Newman then restarting the game for the love of the game. Looking for some space up the left hand side. Finding it quite hard to come by. Good ball from the base, just a little bit slower than they'd like though. They need to find a way to create ruck speed. And the referee warning them. But not listening, so 7 0. Good discipline, 10 metres from Cardinal Newman. Now up they come. Crash ball up to halfway. Where do they find the penetration? Oh, penalty. Holding on, great pressure at the breakdown from Cardinal Newman. Now they come forward looking for try number two. Great line. Referee says no crossing, no obstruction. And now they move the ball out. Here's the try scorer looking for number two. And we'll have the first set scrum of the game. Oh, the rain refusing to go away here on day five of the Howden Rosslyn Park National Schools Sevens. Lifton College down there giving away Whoa. snacks, brownies, rocky roads. I wonder if I can get someone to throw me one of those up. They look absolutely delicious. Here come for the love of the game, it's off the boot, she's onside. But now the referee bringing it back for offside. Oh, I've been thrown a rocky road, I'm over the moot. No, no, one's fine, one's fine. <laughs> that is Clifton College, go visit them. The best guys. Oh, Tom Mitchell's helping himself as well, of course he is. How does he keep such a sleek athlete's figure? Oh, that is a massive collision in the middle of the park. Here in the rain on RE1. This really nicely done from Cardinal Newman though. Oh, the offload, brilliant, the line, superb. The tap tackle tops the lot. And the Canadians hanging by a thread, winning the turnover. Unbelievable defence. And it's still just 7 0. For the love of the game, a little bit upright in the contact, which, when you're accelerating on a dry track, works. But here, when it's a little bit wetter underfoot, it is tough going here for both teams. Soggy, sodden, and wet. And Cardinal Newman's dealing with these conditions a little bit better. Brilliant pass, brilliant support line, brilliant try. Oh, Cardinal Newman's. They're playing some code out there, aren't they? Well, they defeated Sam Whitbread Academy. First half, and they conceded three tries. They haven't conceded a try since. Joe Burns, who's going to be joining you on commentary later. Great company. He's also a great man. He's handed me a coffee. Because it is cold and wet up here right now. But we're being kept warm by this great game. Great game that, for the love of the game, 
in the red. Our Canadian tourists are just struggling to get into. Oh, monster shot. Huge tackle. Great technique. Welcome to England, as they say. No, oh, look the other way. There were numbers there. Could have gone to the left edge. It's Cardinal Newman's ball again. Playing really well, handling fluidly, and it's going to result in a third try. This is absolutely brilliant rugby from the girls in black. Tough conversion coming up, but taking us through to half time. I'm sure Cardinal Newman would have taken 19 0. Will they get 21? No, they won't. 19 0. nil Cardinal Newman going along very nicely indeed. They can maintain they're undefeated. And a high tackle means they get a penalty first thing in this second half. Oh this oh, good turnover. Oh and a good tackle. Cardinal Newman's defense is brutal. Brutal, but also brilliant. Well, direct carry into contact, and they're not on the same wavelength, are they? These offloaders. And it's costing them. Put in at the scrub. Minute of the second half gone. No scores yet. Three scores, two conversions. For Cardinal Newman in the first half here on RE1. Final day of the Howden. Roslyn Park National Schools Sevens. And a defensive pressure from For the Love of the Game. They're just giving away too many penalties. I've seen a Norwich hat going past me. Norwich boys after that great victory against Beach and Cliff yesterday, booking their spot on day two. 
for the first time in a long time. First time since their team consisted of the likes of James Cherry and Freddie Stewart. They'll be back later. You can keep across all the results from across the competitions, across the pitches on nationalschool7s.co.uk. Now, Cardinal Newman. Inching that one against the head. Good offload as well. That's the difference between the two teams right now. Their offloads sticking too many balls to ground. For the Canadians, for the love of the game. That's a lovely little inside line. Then the bend is good. Brilliant finish. Patient play. And as soon as the opportunity came, it was taken. Another excellent try. Cardinal Newman. Oh, scores ahead. Another conversion to 26 nil. So let me just take you through their results. I mentioned they conceded three tries in their first game. They've then beaten Kings Taunton 55 nil, Gordon's 45 nil, Royal Hospital 51 nil. Haven't conceded. This would be the fourth game in a row they've not conceded. And for the love of the game, they're a good team. They beat Bishop Wordsworth 35 12. Then Langley 54 0. Blundells 31 12. And us scored 10 Werthig 46 0. So for Cardinal Newman to do this to a team of such stature it is good going. They've got Angel and Colica Kamoy to come up. Penalty advantage coming then. Player in at the side. They've opted for the boot. Well, for the final couple of minutes of this one, we've got Greg from Rosslyn Park Community. Of course, it's one big rugby community here, and we see that with the international flavour of the teams. Our Canadian friends, they're on the wrong side of this result because Cardinal Newman are about to cut loose again, going around the outside and looking to screech into the corner. It's going to be try number five to put this one to bed. And while we wait for the kick, let's talk about uh, Rosslyn Park community then, because we had one of your community schools here on pitch RE1 yesterday, but there's loads and loads going on outside of the tournament. Uh, firstly, hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, Thanks for having me. Secondly, uh, tell us a little bit about um, the community, the projects and everything you've been up to. Well, the first thing is it's fantastic that a few of our community schools have got on RE1 and RE2. Fulham Boys School, Grey Court, Emmanuel. They've all had that little flavour of... Um, stardom on the tv which is fantastic uh we put coaches in schools we apply for grants and run programs for children who are pupil premium and don't get the opportunity that other school kids may get we run half camps uh, holiday activity food so during the school holidays kids come to the club five hours of coaching hot meal all free of charge and uh, we're desperate to uh, push our girls program Lots of going on, all good stuff. Well, we had Emmanuel in the under-13s against Bedford Modern earlier on. What a game. There were tries coming from all over the pitch. Um, it's really interesting, a, a couple of points there, and without wanting to uh, to labour it too much, because, you know, with all the positives, there are negatives too, but the F in, in the HAF is pretty important as well. You do you do a great job there to, to provide safe environments and a, and a bit of nutrition and great experiences for kids who might not have it elsewhere. Absolutely, and the coaching is high standard. Um, there's a low ratio of children to coach, so they get lots of good tuition in all sorts of different sports and activities. And it puts smiles on their faces uh, when they may not normally get the opportunity. And do they enjoy it? Mm, they love it. And we're very lucky at Rosen Park to have a 4G pitch. Um, so whatever the weather, we get them outdoors doing activities. 
Well, it's great to have you here and great to hear about it as well because, of course, people tune in for all kinds of reasons. It might be to remind themselves of when they were here at the Rossin Park National School Sevens or to, to watch one of the kids or, or one of the teams that they used to play for. But it is much bigger than what goes on between the white lines during this five days of the year. Absolutely. And, and some of the children from our community schools just don't get the opportunity that uh, maybe some others do. So it's a great opportunity and thanks to Rosin Park for allowing them to do so. Well, we do have some uh, schools from absolutely all over. It's great to hear uh, about some of yours. We will, uh, we will leave this one go shortly. It's great to note that we've actually had some state school winners of the tournament as well. Ascol Brinkelanog on the first day. Um, you talked about the girls' programme then. We've been watching a great girls' game here as they shake hands, soaking wet through. Um, how are you, you planning to expand that? And if there are some people watching or listening who feel as though they could benefit or could contribute, is there a way to get in contact? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. So we're going to start an under-12s and an under-14s girls' programme uh, from September, because uh, obviously girls' rugby, for those that don't know, go in two-year bands. The under-11s are allowed to play a year up, so that actually becomes a three-year band and we'll be running that in parallel to our boys uh, our minis program on sunday mornings and the first stage will be we're running a big inner warrior camp on the day that uh, the red roses play away in uh, france um, so that is on the 27th of april saturday afternoon two or three hours of coaching hot meal we're gonna have a q a with some famous uh, rugby players and then everyone can sit down and hopefully watch the red roses beat the french Sounds good to me. Thanks very much for having a chat. Lovely. Thanks for having me. Here we are back on RE1. Lovely to have you along in the rain and it's Blundell's under 80s. Lucas Yap's pass to his teammate gets intercepted after one more goes along the line. Hampton in the all black with the gold hoops round the sleeves. A hop and a skip and doesn't sevens look different? In the dripping rain, the pouring rain that's just beginning to break this pitch up and it could have a say in the manner in which the under-18s final unfolds. When it comes to the cup, Blundells defending, Hampton searching. It's a nice carry there from Tim Wright. Still Hampton into the 22. Bit of room out here to the width. Finley Wiseman receives the ball. James Aimbrart. Oh, gets clattered by two. But it's a high one. And Blundells are going to be reduced to six here. Looks like Lucas Yap, the one to be given his marching orders. Hampton need to be patient. They need to pick their moment. They're going to strike. On the right, big left arm bend and Ben Conahan bullies his way across the line. And it's the opening score for Hampton. No extras to add. Let's go. 
minute on the bid. Timing happened. We heard that one minute on the bin. So Blundell's still down to six, but it's a wonderful take from James Clarkson. Absolutely owned the airspace, and off goes Rocky Prowse. He flings it inside, but it's pinched by a black hand. And to get the put in. Let's go, both teams. All in the hands Bro. of Tim Wright, Finley Wiseman, Bro. the captain wearing Bro. one, one of the bookends in this scrum. It's nice, clean ball. It's as crisp as can be when it's as wet as this. A straightening, an absolute injection of pace with a brilliant tackle low. Stopping the man before a ball looped over the top goes to Toby Smith. Toby Smith racing to the paint. Knocked on as the offload is forced and Blundell's scrapping. Oh, about a minute from their try line and it's a cartwheeling tackle and it's a difficult one. He was at high pace, it looked out of control. And Joe Cornell leaves the field just as Lucas Yap returns. So from 6v7 to 7v6 and Yap with amends to make, he makes the break, he offloads off the floor, and Archie Joyner follows him to it. Jack Clover, happy to take the pace off. Joyner, yap, yap, spots some room. Again, the pop not going to hand, Clarkson's there. Nicely worked by Blundells, who attracts a tackler, they back their man on the edge. But it's flung back inside. Stop play, time off. Injury here to one of the Hampton players, so time off. Hampton leading, five points to nil. With just under five minutes played. Removed from the match, Tim Wright. Okay, Vanis, here we go. After a nasty knock. In possession, Wendell Strum. A lot of cheers from the touchline from the Blundell support. We had a wonderful 15 season all Brush. the way to the semi finals of the Schools Cup. Ten. Coming unstuck against Harrow in the end. Yap led them from 10. Smart hands, Prowse on the edge, inside, outside, off he goes, but a handful of jersey isn't enough to stop Rocky, who lands a try scoring blow in this match against Hampton. Five. Conversion added by Lucas Yap. All of a sudden, Bundles leading seven points to five. Not enough strength in the fingertips and Rocky Prowse not allowing his legs to stop running. Oh, brilliantly taken. It was an awful kickoff to try and have to handle, put up in the air with loads of altitude. And then the wrestling carry for, forward from Will Maunder. Penalty to Hampton. Nice footwork. 
draws in two defenders. In a room out here to the left. If Hampton can find the hands and find them quick enough. All tucked under one arm. It's only going one way until it's shoveled from the grass. 30 seconds left of this first half. Hampton back to the full compliment, having been serving out a yellow card ban. It's a nice little apology there as he returned to the field. Joe Cornell. No intent, no malice in the Run. challenge, just one of those Boy. humans running at each other at high pace and sometimes the player gets spun around. Hampton yes. too eager. Yeah, spotting some room and bouncing off his right foot, then weaving along another step. And just as advantage over is called, Will Clover receives an unsympathetic pass that falls to the floor. And it's half time here on RE1 and Hampton Trail Blundell seven points to five. Second half about to restart here on pitch RE1 in the boys under 18s cup competition. Because Friday, Lucas Yap, I beg your pardon, Lucas Friday did join us on co-commentary at All one stage right this week. Well, Lucas Yap comes up with an interesting ploy. He drills it low along the floor, it scampers to the five metre line. And Hampton find an ungainly clearance. Nice line out, work to the front, but spilt forward by Rory Patterson. The weather is beginning to have its say here at the Howden Rosson Park National School Sevens. Good shot from Blundells, but Hampton come away with it in the 15 metre channel. Oh, really wrong footed his defender there and almost wriggled free of the challenge from Prowse. Hampton, lovely hands out to the edge, another big man there, and we've always seen his feet. Joe swinging around in the tackle. Theo Tyler low. Advantage offside. Seven. Seven white offside. Mark's here. Prowse called offside. Bit of a messy tackle keep going, as well. Keep going, keep going. Hampton continue to come. That's Cardosi. Tyler Lowe. Oh, Tyler Lowe's looked really strong and in Run control, away. hasn't he? Wiseman, the captain, ships it out in a blink. It's on the left edge. Snappy hands. The offload rolling backwards. So still there for Hampton. You've got a bit of a missile to deal with. High tackle called. Hampton aren't hanging around. Delay on the ball. 
Oh, and look at the power. The black jersey bomber up to the five metre line. But as turnover goes, there ain't much better than that. Yaps off and away, and he boots it up the field, but he hasn't got it in the legs. Isla Lowe is back there, and the game is breaking up. Wiseman, his eyes bulging at that big right-hand side that he had to charge into, spills the ball. Hampton still trailing by two. Hampton, plenty of possession, they're yet to make it truly count. Again, they attack the edge with their big blocks on the sides. Fierce press from Blundells. No off feet, leave it. An interesting breakdown there. Very Southgate thought he spotted an opportunity. Distinguishable by the cleanliness of his jersey. Away. Those jerseys won't stay clean for long. Harrison Blake Reed putting his shoulder to the wheel. Tyler Lowe has been a presence. Offside again from Blundells. The penalty's racking up. 13 offside. No more than that, fellas. Blundells, who beat the very impressive Norwich school yesterday, 14 12. Oh, sorry, earlier this morning, 14 12. They're leading by two points here. Shaking off challenges, but Blundell's absolutely dogged in their determination. A big fend and then a reach of the legs, sliding on the knees. More offside from Blundell's, who were just about surviving, but they are infringing. Off to the left edge, advantage over. The pace injected, the offload inside, and Hampton sliding home for a try to take the lead. Well, it's on the ten out of the way of the kicker. One forty-five to go. That's what our referee said. And those extra pair of points are coming very, very handy as we get to the crunch seconds of this. It was a brilliant tackle and just an over chase from the second defender left that gap, but it was brilliant. Selfless running from Tim Wright. And he's rewarded with a try. Blundells collect the kick. Then they wear a tackle. They bounce. Oh, from the fingertips flipped. Five-point game. Prowse, the scorer for Blundells, goes out the back door. Oh, another brilliant tackle low around the tiptoes. Scrum advantage there for Blundells. Less than a minute on the clock. Bit of manipulation of the defence, he's looking for a runner and the ball spills forward. An advantage hadn't been played. Long advantage there. Hampton going down 19-7 to Brighton earlier this morning. Blundells victorious against Norwich. If Hampton were to triumph here, this would blow the group right open. Full resource by Harrison Blake Reed. Last play of the match. Yap. Yap can't scamper free. Sets up long and strong. Opportunity on the short side. Bouncing through the black jerseys. A wrestle to the floor. The poaching instincts there, but not on the ball. Yap. Switch. 
Red and white jerseys queuing up on the right. Another switch brings us back to the left. Yeah. Feeds the big man who goes inside out and squeezes a pass out to Jonah Thomas. Yap dancing on the threshold of the 22, Harvey Southgate. Harry Southgate pops it to Prowse. Prowse busts the tackle and cruises home for the equalising score to the delight of our E1. And a huge kick That's the game. to come to potentially break That's Hampton the Hearts. Lucas Yap, a prodigious ticker, kicker. Oh, cannons the upright. Times. The most extraordinary of endings here on RE1. And it ends on us even. Can you believe it? Full time here in a breathless encounter. And the spoils are shared between Blundells and Hampton, 12 points apiece. Under-18 Girls <laughs> Cup action with Exeter College knocking on from the kickoff as they come up against Samuel Whitbread Academy. And I can assure you that the score is nil all. There's no handicap system hey. here hey. at the Howden Rossin Park hey. National School 7s and Exeter College in the under-18s hey. open looking to emulate the feats of their fellow females yesterday who achieved the unthinkable. Hey. The Ace College victorious hey. for the first time hey. since the Ace competition was Hold born. Hey. It didn't end up in Hartbury hands. A fabulous victory for Exeter College who were defeated in the final last year. They're looking to go just as deep into the girl women's open. But they're defending hard at the moment with the Samuel Whitbread Academy also on their first game today. Just attacking on that 22. They uh, had victories over Gordon School, Royal Hospital School, King's College Taunton yesterday. Just the only defeat against Cardinal Newman, Sussex. You have to release, and I can say with great delight that England and Great Britain sevens great and Olympic silver medal winning captain Tom Mitchell has joined me for this and hopefully a few more games, Mitch. Hello, Joe. Good to be up here. I thought you looked like you needed some company up here in the rain. It is a little bit wet and soggy and lonely up here, but the, the committed sevens is keeping me good company as well. And now you. Penalty one by the Exeter College girls who've got a lot of room and they've got a lot of purpose in the way they run. Head down straight away from Meg Polverino. And she looks for some support before the handling error comes into play. And 
at Mitch, he played all around the world, he played in every condition possible. This is the most suboptimal of conditions, but what, what advice would you have for these young players who want to put some air on the ball, they want to play sevens, but you've got to be sympathetic to the conditions. Do you know what? People think sevens is a game that follows the sun. It's remarkable how many times I've ended hey. up playing in conditions like this. And Mate. you do have to adjust. You just have to tighten up the Mate. gaps between you so the passes are a little bit tighter. Maybe use the kicking game a bit more. Wouldn't mind seeing some teams explore that backfield space. Put it on the toe and get after it. But where they're going to run this one all the way around the outside. Oh, that is an expert kick. And oh, well taken out after the tackle, which is a real shame. Because Charlotte Mansfield, who's part of the Exeter Chiefs Centre of Excellence, had shown the gas and then the aptitude to drop it on the toe and put in a real mischievous kick for her to chase. Pretty smart option when you're getting close to the touchline as well. Just poke it down, get yourself after it. Off Exeter College, go to the left, but the fingertips let them down. Good advantage played by the referee. Well, that's a penalty. <laughs> Nowhere near the ball, but taking the woman off it. Might have a little shrewd move there, actually, just killing the play, just giving away the penalty. Give yourself the chance to get set in defence and no yellow card or anything there. So maybe a smart move. Sometimes you've got to be savvy. Play it on the edge. Some would say cynical. <laughs> I was trying to use the correct terminology, Joe. You call it what you want. Oh, a beautiful hands, and then a high shot comes in to halt it. Again, we're denied a magic moment by a bit of a legal play. Both sides need to tighten up the discipline. Oh, that's a lovely little show. Well, I know we said we need to tighten up. You can see both teams now playing under a bit of a blanket. And the Samuel Whitbread Academy just need to try and find a little bit of width and find some space, but they've lost the ball at the breakdown, getting isolated. You're going to see more of that. The more carries you get, the more rucks there are, the more opportunities to steal ball. And this is chopping and changing hands all the time, the possession. With this wet weather, with the opportunities to steal at breakdown, it is going to go back and forth. So just prioritising, holding on to that pill is key for these teams. The Samuel Whitbread Academy side. A lot of hey. talented athletes. Set. Lauren Sazaz, who plays a rugby for Hertfordshire, on the ball here. And feeding. The girl just won beyond. Good contest at that breakdown. Oh, how's about a biff? We love a bit of air on the ball, but we don't mind the contact zone either. Samuel Whitbread Academy, one more along the chain. It doesn't get there. Georgia King, who started her sporting journey as a netball player, was waiting patiently, but not delivered the goods. An extra college. Just as they think they're going to break away, they get intercepted. Good low hit coming in again from Charlotte Mansfield. But it's tough, tough conditions out there for handling. Just takes the extra split second to get the ball under control. Really hard to get out of trouble. Both teams are doing a good job of just shutting down in D. You've got the opportunity to uh, put some pressure on. Joe, you feeding me a kick cat up here? Yeah, I'll have a bit. Thank you. Take it in turns. When, one, when the other one's commentating, the other one can eat Kit Kat. Never seen you so generous. Exeter College. As I said, looking to follow in the footsteps of their race programme. Admirably looking for wit at any opportunity. But Samuel Whitbread Academy, they, they just refuse to be broken down. Yeah, definitely defence on top at the moment. Just Mitch talking about the women's com the girls' competition. Girls' competition on a wider point. We had a wonderful interaction with some girls from Clifton College earlier today, didn't we? It was unreal. Uh, and hopefully we'll get the chance to, to get them on air later because we were just hearing their first-hand experience of a couple of girls who are playing for the very first time here at uh, Rosden Park. And that's what it's all about. You've got people who are very experienced campaigners and who are thoroughly in the game, and then you've got others doing it for the first time.
Literally the first time they've ever played rugby here at the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. The Samuel Whitbread Academy girls, they're no newcomers, they're no slouches, and off goes Imi Carr. And she's going to get the first score of the match. Brilliantly done, kept alive. Just heard how difficult it is to control the ball and offload. It's a wonderful break from the Samuel Whitbread Academy. And a great finisher as well. Good wheels, good movement off the ball to get on the end of it. And finally, in this game, the deadlock is broken. Samuel Whitbread Academy take the lead. They get seven on the scoreboard. You feel in these conditions that that conversion, that turning it to seven, could be important come the full time blast. But at half time, it's Exeter College trailing Samuel Whitbread Academy, seven points to nil. Girls Open matchup against the Samuel Whitbread Academy. We break the deadlock late. Final play of the first half. And that's beautiful hands and a lovely fan. Then the acceleration. It's a long way to go. She's looking for help. But instead, all she finds is the tackle of Jess Main. Outstanding breakdown work. Exeter College have stolen in. And Love that from the referee, not too eager to blast. Let's the turnover be completed and we get a bit of play on with Exeter College on the ball. Oh, asking too much of the stretch of Millie Crumpler, whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday, Millie. Get folded a little bit in that <laughs> they celebrate it differently at Samuel Whitbread Academy. <laughs> Here go Exeter College. That's real stodgy conditions and that's not the pass you want to receive. A bullet low to your left and another birthday gift for Millie that she uh, might have wished that she didn't unwrap. Ball is out and ball is in the hands of Samuel Whitbread Academy, who oh, produced a gorgeous wraparound play. Then the back door offload. They're skirting around the side on and on. And a straightening, then a thunderous hit to stop them in their tracks. Committed defence from Exeter College, who are under siege right now. Oh! Welcome to Devon. A big right shoulder tasted by the Samuel Whitbread Academy. And Exeter College, can they go 22 to 22, slung inside? They just can't get outside the edge at the moment, can they, Mitch? Like the look of that. 
Brilliant pick up. Oh, turns on a sixpence. Sora coming. Looks to blast through the tackle from Millie Crumpler. Oh, bit of Jouet with the boot. Dick attacker rugby here on RE1. And Samuel Whitbread Academy. Oh, my goodness me. Runs into a brick wall. Who was that? Bonnie Perchel. Billy Pula's number one fan. And involved with Exeter Chiefs. Oh, it is war out there, isn't it, Mitch? When it breaks up like that, you just never know where it's going to go. Right. Five. Six. Balls out. Nice start. Round the blind side. Exeter College a little bit sluggish to resource the ruck after they'd won it. Good. And a sloppy ball to Bonnie Perchel. Good steal. Good steal from Samuel Whitbread Academy, who were digging their heels in here. The next try, absolutely crucial. Three minutes on the clock, just seven points to the Samuel Whitbread Academy. A soul has just been taken in the midfield by Phoebe Reed. A skeleton shuddering hit coming in from the number seven. So tight, this. Only seven Go. points in it. It is still Go. very much anyone's game with a few minutes Go. to go. They'll want to get another score on the board here, Samuel Whitbread Academy. They're going straight up the middle. Right up the gunnels. And then a cheeky little left boot thrown into the mix. It needs a game-breaking moment. It needs a big player, a big carry. One that's going to drag the opposition with her. Bonnie Perchel, almost the woman to do so. Big Ben getting round on the arc. One more pump action from the right. Casey Cornell dragging her team to the 10 metres. There's a bit of room for Millie Crumple. But the offload doesn't stick. Short sight on. Short sight on. Casey Cornell. Finding the offload, the Bate girl weaves inside. Exeter to pick and go, two metres short. And no roll away. Exeter College from point blank range. Still not there. Epic defence from Samuel Whitbread Academy. There's no one outside, but she doesn't need anyone. Phoebe Reed with the try underneath the sticks. And the conversion to level the match. Yep. And she nails it. How oh, good. Seven apiece. That was just, they kept coming. It was great scramble from the girls coming across in D. Couple of attackers scragged down just short of the line, but in the end, they tapped and went off the penalty. And under the stick, so important, so they could get the seven. Oh man, I just love the utter commitment out there from both sides. Neither of these teams deserves to lose, but is there gonna be one last sting in the tail for Exeter College? or Samuel Whitbread Academy here at the death. You can just see they are absolutely out on their feet out there as well. It's going to take a bit of grit, a bit of scrap from both sides now. Who wants it more? More crunching shots raining in from Exeter College, who knocked the ball down in the tackle. Not sure how much you knew about it. That's two penalties on the bounce now. Samuel Whitbread Academy just marching their way up the field, pushing Exeter College back towards their own try line. Backs against the wall, 
Backs against the try line soon if they carry on this way. Oh, beautiful delayed ball! And a dreamy line that is going to shatter the Exeter College hearts. Imi Carr, the match winner at the death. Well, they've plugged away and plugged away up the middle of the park. They chewed that turf up time and time again, but this time it was an incision. And she went through untouched for the match winner. Ah. Oh. Utter heartbreak for Exeter College, but how about this for a game-breaking, a game-clinching moment from Samuel Whitbread Academy. The pass was a bit loose. The delay was oh so perfect. And Imi Kerr, no one was chasing her down. Lovely little hold, great acceleration through the gap. Could have gone either way. That's the way it goes in this game. Full time here, Exeter College 7, Samuel Whitbread Academy 14. A big one in the boys under 18 cup, Sedba in brown. Suitable colour for the conditions we're in. Lining up to the left against Millfield School in the famous red, green and blue hoops. And we've got Anna and Dave Gavitas along for... Charlie Gavitas. I beg your pardon, I've known you for years. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Along for the ride, Anna working with us on Next Gen and Charlie Gavitas coaching Blundells as well at the competition. And you've come up against the Sedba side already this competition. Yes, we have actually. Uh, very welcome, like Sedba side. Um, this will be tough. I think this will be about resilience, not more necess unnecessarily about skill. Boy. Yes, I mean, I have to be honest, you uh, you played your role in one of the worst games of sevens I've ever been involved in from a commentary perspective, but Ted Burt were victorious. Millfield are looking for an early score, racing round the edge! The big don't argue coming out from the left arm of Zach Whiteman Dowder. Try time for Millfield. He is so quick. Yeah, it's a very good start for Millfield, but I would say that several were disappointed with their tackling on the edge there. Uh, Millfield didn't seem to have to do very much to score. Now, you guys have a family vested interest in this fixture as well. If, if you'd like to divulge to the, the viewers and the listeners. Frederick is my son. And he's obviously my brother, and I am an OM as well. So we'll try not to be too biased, but we can't promise much. Said, but obviously being long rivals of Millfield all throughout the throughout the school. Well, I'll, I'll back the brown corner to keep things level. But certainly Millfield starting in fast fashion, nicely claimed by Sedba, who's under 16 boys on the competition yesterday in imperious fashion. Under 14s and now under 16 champions. A potential dinner here. Oh my goodness. 
He's just been swallowed up in the tackle there by Charles Heffron. He's going round for more. There's definitely no love lost between these two sides. I actually think that young man was a bit unlucky there. I thought it was a very good tackle. There's certainly, uh, certainly some sound effects that came with it. Sedba looking a lot more fluid today than they did last time they took to RE1 yesterday. Looking to ship it to the right. Holmes. Another tackle shaken off and then a handful of jersey and then the cavalry right side clear up comes into the kidneys said but won't batter an eyelid they'll convert they'll race and charlie turnbull of the falcons will swoop in for sedba we promised we wouldn't be too controversial about that but maybe a maybe a tackle off the ball there but again sedba won't be complaining too much about that I'm not really the one to talk about referees, so I will keep stum about that. Um, but yeah, totally agree. <laughs> well, we have to say our referees all giving up their time. Well, that's a beautiful full conversion. All giving up their time to be at the school sevens. And we're going to get another look at it. It was shake off there in a tackle assist. And well, it gets wiped out from the side, doesn't it? I don't think that anyone can dispute that. But Charlie Turnbull back on his feet after that blast and then sliding across but an equalising score. Ah, rather unforgivably, a kickoff out on the full. Bird, do you ever kicked it in sevens? Have I ever, have I ever kicked? I wasn't on the field long enough really when I played sevens to, to be bestowed the opportunity. I played 10 in my youth. Oh, that's a nice option. Space in behind the brown and the gas set free. Great patience demonstrated from Ben Morrow there. Really resisted the temptation to drop on the Sedba man. Can't drop on the boy on the floor. But Sedba and nailed in in Coffin Corner. Newton had a little dart, got shut down, and now the brown straight in through the middle. That's the carrying of Leo Williamson. Bit of a wayward pass there, and Milford will be hoping to capitalise on that. Well, Bulanutha does so well to recover. But in doing so, gives away a yellow card. So Sedba will play the next two minutes with six. Two minutes and a bit of change remaining of the half. Big men in the middle getting side down low, pop off the floor. The spill from Ben Morrow and Sedra breathe a sigh of relief. Yes, Millfield have got to realise that when seven against six is a patient, they'll score. What's the, what, what is the strategy other than patience when you're seven against six attacking? Well, it's, well, it's obvious. You just stretch the player, the six Five. players round and round and round, you create gaps. Set. Basically, you don't force anything because you don't need to. You're in, you're in control of the game. And obviously, for two minutes, you should be scoring points. But you don't need to do it straight away. And that's the trouble. Youngsters think they have to score straight away. All lessons learned under the microscope of the stream on RE1. Well, look at that for confidence. Look at that for vision to free up that left-hand side where the defence is slightly less connected. Millfield are unable to affect the turnover. Again, big gaps opening up. Nice glide on the reception on, from Holmes. But Sedra in a spot of bother. Wow, that was a big clear out that needed to come. But then they had her on the floor and Millfield smell blood. I feel like it's brilliant defensive work from Milford's number nine. He may not be the biggest player, but God, that defensive effort was brilliant. Morrow puts the footwork in, frees up the man yeah! outside, he goes airborne. And Owen Erasmus has lift off the Millfield. You'll notice when you've got six players on the field, if you, if you are in possession, it's very, very difficult. But the secret is to keep the ball, keep the ball again as long as possible so you don't. You're waste, wasting those two minutes to get your man extra, well, your, your normal man back on the field. 
and at first, a... sorry, Anna, at first I thought Severo were doing the right thing, but then they took contact and also didn't get people close to the ball and lost the ball. Referee ordered a penalty. I mean, let's be fair, that, that was a good finish as well. Yeah, absolutely brilliant finish. <laughs> I think Milford were really happy to score at that sort of time as well, not long before half-time. That one is coming down with wisps of cloud on. It's not so forward from a said Bahan. This will be the final play of the half. Out to the man who got it all started. He's a slippery customer and he wriggles free. He tries to ride to the corner and still he won't be stopped. <laughs> Penalty conceded for holding on on the floor. Sedba are back to seven. Take step, please. They're in their 22, they've got a penalty. The Sedba way is let us play. Oh, weaving the Millfield defence into a pretzel. Holmes. Newton loses his footing. Willanutha asked to stretch. He did really well to hold on to that because it was probably slightly out he in front of him. Just lost the ball in the contact. <laughs> and that'll be the half here on our one Three tries scored, two to Millfield, and that's why they lead Sedbet 10 7 at the break. Again, I wouldn't like to be too critical of the referee, but he said it no advantage, but they just kicked the ball to Ben Morrow in space. Well, we'll come back to your thoughts in a moment, Mr. Gavitas, because I believe that Dave Rogers is down on the touchline being super quinzy with his rugby friend, Alex Dunbrand. Yeah, certainly I'm Joe. I'm here with former Wales under 20 international Alex Dombrandt, who is uh, making friends with some of his old pals here uh, from John Fisher. You're here in a limitless capacity today, kissing babies, taking pictures, having a lovely day. Bringing back any memories of former glory years? No, a lovely introduction. That um, yeah, no, it's great to be back. Uh, got some fond memories uh, of being here with John Fisher. Got to the final of the cup competition, so no, some fond memories for sure. Final? How much of a part did you play in that one? Uh, it's the first half merchant, so they only put me on for the first half and then they dragged me off. I only had about six minutes in me, so yeah. That's all it needed. Uh, we've been watching a cracking game here. It's Seba versus Millfield, two of the powerhouse schools. Uh, you played in a final. These youngsters are absolutely gagging to, to get autographs and take some pictures. Um, you've been a part of some pretty special rugby occasions in your university career, in your professional career. Of course, a couple of cracking games uh, in the Six Nations, back in England colours as well. But this tournament uh, and these memories you make, they stick with you. This is important, isn't it? Yeah, no, massively. Um, you know, the reason I come back here and, and see the lads from John Fisher is because the school means a lot to you and, and it comes from the memories that you make and, and there's nothing better than coming to these tournaments, getting a, a day or two off school um, and just playing rugby with your mates. This is what rugby is all about in my opinion. So, you know, I, I love coming back down here, seeing your old teachers and, and trying to support uh, the John Fisher boys. Well, let's bring it uh, to England then because it looks as though you're all having a lot of fun playing at the moment, a lot of fun training and, and the environment you've managed to create seems like it's, it's loads of fun and it leads to great rugby so for these youngsters on their journey whether it's the prep schools up to the 18s how important do you think that is to to cultivate that and, and really get a great group and bring the best out of each other in that sense yeah no massively important I think to create an environment um, where everyone can be themselves and, and that's encouraged is, is only good and it can only bring the best out of you as an individual so no whether it's for, for Quinns or England or school or university as much as you can create an environment where people can be themselves and and that's encouraged. I think that's only a good thing. So we're back underway here. We'll throw back to Burnsy and Com shortly with Millfield on the ball. But very quickly now, out of the Quins and the England teams that you play with, I need you to pick a seven. You're allowed to include yourself. Um, OK, so front row of myself. Um, <laughs> myself, Andre Esterhazen and Luke Northmore in the front row. Danny Kerr, Marcus Smith. Oscar Beard and some gas. Cassius Cleves. That what a team. Seven. That's what a team. Good man. Cheers. Have a great day. Enjoy it. Alex Dombrandt, Joe Burns. Brave man to leave Caden Murley out of that one. 
But here are some flyers for Sedber. The Brown beginning to purr. They cop a high tackle, and it could come with a yellow card as well. Bulanutha clothesline en route to the paint. And now it's Sedber's turn to show us what they can do with the extra man. Tap. Newton, the playmaker at 10, sloppy pass, and well, if that had gone, they definitely had the numbers here left, but instead, they travel back into traffic. Oh, Millfield, brilliant counter up. they sensed it, but Sedba somehow have kept their fingers glued to the ball. It's another intentional knockdown. Millfield will be down to five here. It's going to be difficult for Milford not to concede here with only five on the field. It would be unforgivable from a set perspective for Millfield not to concede here. They're looking at nearly two minutes, 90 seconds, playing with five. Hard enough when you've got seven on the pitch. Yeah, I think when you've only got five as well, it's not even the duration of them just being at five. It's those still those five players that have to, when they are back to seven, that have already done the work for the full seven. So. It's not for the, just the duration that they're off. Sedbert go route one despite the numbers and he wrestles and reaches and is held up. I would say that's uh, criminal from Sedbert. Um, very strong, but you've got two extra players. Why not just move the ball? Move the ball. You score. And now Milford have got the ball. They'll waste the time. Well, tight. Um, Sedbert have got the ball, but and will score probably from this. But they've wasted 30 seconds probably with, with those players off the field. Morgan Williams, the captain of Millfield, the hero on that occasion. But as he said, they got the ball and look at this. Three said better attackers, only one out there for Millfield and the scrum gets reset. That's a very good scrummage from Millfield there. Again, wasting more pressures extra time i'm sure um Sebra will score out wide but if milford keep them out wide they've still got another chance from that kickoff five set well they've got charles heffron in there he's been like a caged animal all match here on re1 that that is brilliant milford defense absolutely brilliant milford oh defense. my gosh the scrum half did brilliant he's actually been brilliant all all day about that putting pressure on the number nine what will they do here? I think they might tap, put this off the field from the pelt and waste more time. Although they're very brave. That'd, no, be, the, that'd be the smart option, are, wouldn't it? They are actually going to just put this ball off the field. First yellow card back on. There you go. A bit of extra time wasted. The ball's in the trees. That will waste another five minutes. And they're back to six now as well. They've done unbelievably well not to concede with only five players on the field there. Absolutely brilliant. I'm sure. Freddie and Mr. Mallet will be really, really chuffed with that. Well, what's that going to do to Crucial. The, emo the emotions and the psychology of Sedber, who pinched the ball and then get oh. get bullied off it? Well, I think that probably is the right decision by the referee there. I think that's def definitely the right decision. He didn't have the ball, got bumped off by Heffron. Can you remember the first half? <laughs> And here we go, nice line cut, piercing line, and Heffron putting his head in the spokes again. Again, they could put the ball off the field again. I know they probably lose the possession, but they've now got the seven on. There you go, back to seven versus seven. I think Zebra will be cursing themselves. And now they're going to play Millfield. Back to the full complement. A shot in the arm, having survived the siege. Switch in the middle, in retreat. No sweeper at home for said, but high tackle comes high, in. Yeah. Maybe a bit of an opportunity to see that ball flow left, but we do come back for the penalty in 90 Bursley. seconds on the clock. Bursley, I know he's in brown, but he, there is a sweeper. <laughs> Sorry, that's true. That's how difficult it is to see in the pitch that is deteriorating due to the downpour. Goodness me. Millfield. Leading by three. A minute and ten seconds on our clock. This boy's feet are so good. The dancing feet. Bullanutha dismissed. 
Oh, and a touch line coming into play. There's going to be one last roll of the set for dice here. Grandstand finish incoming here on RE1. Over the top, and the referee right there to check the angle of the throw. Penalty arm goes up. So, Zedba from within their own half, looking to break down this stubborn millfield defence, this titanic effort from them in the second half that's seen them battle with not just six, but five men at one stage. Shitty, and now they'll shitty, do it again shitty. with six. Well, no yellow card comes. But Sedba are off. Sedba. Lassoon in the centre of the field. A loose offload. A knock on from the Brown. And that could be the game. The ball slips over the shoulder. Sedba just need to get it off, surely. But there's time for the scrum. I'm too scared to say anything in case I jinx anything. Well, this will, this will be, the, if they're clever midfield, they'll say, referee, is this last play? I'm sure Sebra put tremendous pressure on, and here we go. Very sensible substitution here. Big, big lump comes on to scrummage for Millfield and hopefully secure the ball, and they'll see the game out. Well, Millfield accounted for the much fancied Kirkham grammar earlier this morning, the arch rivals of Sedba. And our Millfield going to take two northern heavyweight scalps here on this Friday morning. Bro. With Wellington College to come. Boy. Goodness me, what a Set. group. I was supposed to be doing the graphics on the on RE2 for that game, the Milford Kirkham game, and I just could not concentrate. Millfield! <laughs> get the ball across the line. They managed somehow to drag themselves through this epic contest that saw them fight with five. A performance full of character. And another victory for Millfield, who down Sedba's school 10 points to seven. Absolutely brilliant game. I think, we, as we mentioned earlier, that when, when Millfield were down to five and Sedba had those players, maybe, I hope they were not kicking themselves now about maybe passing it wide rather than going himself. But Well, the beauty of this game is that hopefully you learn from your mistakes but, and hopefully the Sedba member of start head of rugby will not shout and scream at their players after missing that opportunity because they'll have another opportunity. It's a tough group, very, very tough group. I'm sure the winners might even lose a game in this group. Knowing said that as I do, there'll be no ranting and raving, I'm sure, but certainly they've been involved in a match that has kept us on the edge of our seats. More action to come shortly here on RE1. All right, the action coming thick and fast here on RE1 with Hereford Sick Form College against Peter Simons College in the girls under 18 Open. We've enjoyed 
a titanic battle between Exeter College and the Samuel Whitbread Academy previously. But here, we might get an early score. Handful of jersey puts a halt to that. Peter Simons College attacking. Get to free up the hands, getting it to the middle, straightening, and wow, what a finish! Peter Simons College in for the opening score of the match. Kick off, bounces, and it gets returned here. Hands off that now, thank you. From the Hereford Sick Form College. Who go barreling through the middle, a low tackle round the ankles, but the offload right on time, right on the money before she gets swallowed up by two blue jerseys. They converge upon her. The red mark at the line out there. And there will be a line out to the Peter Simons College. Blue ball. Big, here, long, here, grueling yeah, girls under 18 open competition. Hereford have beaten Clifton, beaten SBM College Group, colleagues Sir Brenfo, Trinity Croydon, <whistles> and they just Great. fell by a score. Trump, the Clandovery College. Trump, 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 Trump earlier today. As for Peter Simons, wow, they've been posting some big scores. Bridgewater and Taunton, St John's, Leatherhead, Langley Park, even be at Exeter College en route to today's action where they kick the day off with victory over SMB College. Bye. Clan Dovery awaits. But for now, it is Hereford who knock upon the door. Beautiful feet, drop of the shoulder, and then an engagement of every piece of that joint into the tackle. Back again. All left behind, Peter Simon sense. They could drop, and they do. First to it. Oh, she was looking for the inside ball, but her players were in front of her. Peter Simon's looking to wriggle free, but actually gyrating their way through the body of red jerseys. Oh, the big blast doesn't explode because the ball is spilt forward and Peter Simons with a hop and a skip burn, a stretch of the legs and then a bust through the tackle and then one last injection of acceleration takes them to the line. A wonderful finish that she had to fight for all the way. Peter Simon's second score of the match. Great effort on the conversion as well. 14 points to the good. Ball's just behind you. Oh, charging into tackles. Big clear out comes. Hereford, full of fight. Trailing by 14. Last couple of minutes of the half. They need to release that if they're going to be on their knees. Tackle 
Peter Simons, they've had two real attacks and they've scored with each one. They've been really clinical. Great weight on the pass, good defensive read as well. Almost halts that attack and then an intercept off the offload. No, 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 you're no. Long way to go, but a try now here in the final 60 seconds with make this match very interesting indeed. They just can't escape the clutches of this Peter Simons defence. Who've now also turned the ball over. They're in possession in the 22. Another good turnover from Hereford. Neither side cherishing the ball. Wow, monster here. The attack, the attacker takes off there. Scrum calls, scrum. Okay, line out. Okay, there's your mark, Red. Let's go, please, Blue. Take a few steps, please. Back on the try line. Keep them going. Back on the try line. Ten metres. Ball. The driving mall finally breaks free and Peter Simons get taken down five metres shy. The offload goes to the floor, it does go backwards. <laughs> but another knock on brings the half to a close. It's scrappy, but it's Peter Simons at the moment. They lead Hereford Sixth Form College. 14 points to nil, which brings me to the touchline where we've got one of the finest to ever play the shortened format of the game, and he's with Tom Mitchell. We're here down with Alex, known as Keezy in the game, uh, recognisable around these parts, and an expert in the student game, used to be head of things up at Durham Rugby. Let's just talk a bit about the student game, because you were reminding me about the time that Durham beat Bristol University, my uni, in the semi-final, but we'll leave that aside. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the importance of the student game in this country. Oh, it's really important now. It's, it's you know, a really good pathway. I think that the uh, it, the RFU and all the uh, I know the SRFU are looking at it. Scotland are, are using that as a proper pathway. There's so many guys coming out. You look at the England team the other week. You know, Peps has been brought up to cover Cunningham South. He's still at Durham. Uh, Manny on the wing. He's still at Exeter. Daffy's uh, still at Exeter. So. There's guys now playing full international rugby. Griffin, I think, is at uh, Bath, uh, Wales. So it's massive. And that's something, obviously, for these boys and girls who are playing here today to aspire to. And knowing that they don't just have to go straight from school into pro rugby, but there is the university route as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but we're, I, I'm a massive advocate of that because, you know, these guys have got to come away with something at the end of it. When they're 30, they might be looking at, you know, what happens next. And, that, and that's really important. That's where I'm at right now, trying yeah. to figure it all out now. I'm a bit older than 30, don't you, Just? Yeah. But the other thing is, like, the experience, isn't it? It's not just thinking about, you know, where, how far can I go with my rugby, even though that's important, but what other experiences can they get through their rugby lives, I suppose? Yeah, I think that's important. And, and what we've set up now, I'm running a company called Sporting Gap News. So it's saying to guys who are out of school, think of maybe, maybe having a year out before you go anywhere else uh, and maybe do a year at uh, 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 New Zealand or Australia with us doing a proper pathway and then going back to university and then carrying on. I think that's a good message for like youngsters listening to this. Is there isn't just one route. You want to progress with your rugby. There's many ways to do it yeah. and many uh, experiences and life experiences you can gather along the way. 100%. Kizzy, Thank thanks very much for chatting to us. Lovely. Cheers. See you, Tom. Take care. Back up to Joe, the gorgeous Joe Burns, back up in the commentary box. We are not Thank you. I think am I using the wrong microphone there potentially yes I was using the wrong microphone thank you Mitch and great to hear from Alex Key one of the greats of the university game gave a huge amount not just to Durham University but to the university game as a whole what a fantastic man and if he's organizing 
sporting futures, then he's definitely someone to talk to. Peter Simons, they've got a pretty bright future in this match at the moment. Beautiful one-two interplay. This is one of the best tries of the morning. Backing the hands, selflessly supporting and reaping the rewards all the way to underneath the uprights. Well, here we go, Peter Simons kicking off. Three tries all converted in tough and sticky conditions. Yeah, Hereford really struggling to get their, a grip on these Peter Simons girls who slip elusively through one more challenge. And they're in for try number four. Three minutes and a bit of change remaining of this one here on RE1. Hereford a bit up against it, against a really clinical Peter Simons, but we've certainly seen signs that Hereford can play. We'd love to see a score now. They'd be worthy of it as well. They've made some eye-catching breaks, and they are committed to the cause as ever, piling the red jerseys in to resource that ruck. No release, a testament to the pressure exerted by this Peter Simons outfit. Those blue jerseys getting muddier by the second, but also seemingly going deeper and deeper into the competition by the carry. Support surfs the shoulder, support fared and oh, once more along the chain before the hands let them down. Hereford win the penalty. Too much dark arts sprinkled on that scrum. Hereford fighting that Peter Simmons. They are defending obdurately. Long way to go for Hereford if they're to register a score on RE1, which was what every boy and girl dreams of when they come to this great competition. And they won't do it on that attack. Okay, please play this. 
speed up the line out. A few steps back on. Uh, you're good. Back, that one back. Back in line with her. Close the gap a bit, please, please. Close the gap a bit, thank you. We're good now. Sorry. I have got it. I have got it. I'm sorry. I'll take whatever. <laughs> Last plate for Hereford. What have you got? 80 metres, that's what we're all hoping as Hereford barrel through. Another couple of committed. Peter Simons challenges. Oh, just slipped out the back and maybe there's some room out wide, but it's shut down mercilessly by the shoulders of Peter Simmons. Oh, a missile wipes out the woman in red. And that'll be time, that'll be the match, and that'll be another victory, a four-star one for Peter Simons College, who've defeated Hereford Sixth Form College, 26 points to nil. And we are now off to speak to Tom Mitchell and the Clifton College girls who've been dishing up the finest rocky roads at RE1 and also dishing up a nice brand of rugby sevens along the way too. So we are here with some ladies from Clifton College. Now, you've been doing a very important service handing out the flapjacks, but that's not all you've been doing this week at Rosen Park. Just quickly introduce yourselves. Who have we got here? I'm Sophie. I'm Evie. I'm Phoebe. So the snacks were not the important bit about the role they were doing. You were actually here playing rugby, competitive rugby, for the first time ever. Is that true? Yeah, first time. And obvious question, how was it? Uh, I was really scared at first. I mean, when the person ran towards me, I wanted to run the other way. <laughs> but by about game two, it was really fun, and I got used to it. So. Tell us, we were chatting a bit earlier. Tell us about your first tackle you made. Um, so my first tackle, I didn't bring her to the floor, <laughs> but I just clung to her legs and just sat there until she told me you can let go now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she gave you some feedback. If anything, that was how I tackled for most of my career. So that sounds about right to me. Girls, what would you say to any other ladies thinking about taking up the game for the first time? I just get out there. I mean, it's not scary at all. I mean, the first tackle obviously is, but like, no one's judging you. Everyone's like nice. So yeah, I just get out there. And are we going to be back for some more competitive rugby after experiences this week? Do you think? Of course, see us again next year. Rugby season again after netball season. We'll be here and ready to go. Yeah. I love that. Let's I love that. You will qualify. And I'm in no doubt. And also, it's very important that you're here because I've got a very, uh, very, and so is Joe Burns, who's looking at me with a giggle. We got very fond of the flapjacks and the rocky roads you're handing out in the Clifton College tent. So please come back again. Uh, ladies, thanks very much and well done. Awesome. Great experiences. Back up to Joe in the commentary box. Love that That's rugby so origin story from the girls. And, well, it's to be expected. A uh, 20% plus increase in female participation here at the Howden Rosson Park National Schools Sevens. And those are the stories that we love. These are the stories that we're looking to unearth and the opportunities we're looking to present. First time playing rugby and here at the biggest schools tournament on the entire planet. How gutsy is that? Speaking of gutsy, the Samuel Whitbread Academy are back in the girls under 18s open. They were only here moments ago, defeating Exeter College 12 points to seven. This time, Graveney stand before them. Resplendent in pink and playing their first match of the day here on this wet and boggy Friday with the pitch cutting up and the handling skills being stressed more than ever. I mean, Whitbread Academy shovel the ball out from the right edge. There's a real nice blend of brutality and finesse about the way the Samuel Whitbread Academy go about their business. It's impressive to watch. They're not quite up to the 22. But they are still in possession. Nice hands. Oh, speed bumping her way over defenders, engaging the shoulders, but unable to get the hands free for the offload. 
It's the dart along the fringes. The call coming on the shoulder. Brilliant offload. One more pass will do it. Unless you'll go it alone. Yes! An outstanding finish to a sweeping move that involved the hands of nearly every girl on the team. And it's another try to the women in black here on RE1. He's making a little bit of a name for herself, the Loughborough Centre of Excellence girl. Imi Kerr with another memorable moment on RE1. SWA on the attack. Love someone to tweet me in what the official abbreviation is for Samuel Whitbread Academy at Burnsy Drama. At the academy. <laughs> oh, we're taking no prisoners in the carrying stakes. Good defence from Graveney, but the ball is transferred away. The delay on the final pass is right on time. And the finish right on cue. These numbers difficult to read now. With the commitment of their cause smeared across the jerseys from the mud of RE1. The one thing I can confirm, it's a double for the Samuel Whitbread Academy. And again, it's the impressive handling of Phoebe Fullerton. He's a member of the Saracens Centre of Excellence, feeding Tiger Lily Brooks of the East Midlands. Samuel Whitbread Academy. Yet to have to defend in their half, and all they do is attack, and they pour more numbers in the quest to breach the 22 again. Tiger Lily. Tiger Lily still going. Tiger Lily. Oh, the last little offload into the waiting arms of Tawana Makope. And Tawana Makope gets herself a seven souvenir on the most famous pitch in schools rugby. RE1 at the Hound and Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. Oh, skating run, the fastest of feet. Wonderful tackle. Imi Kerr again in the action. There's only one of her on the field, I assure you, but sometimes it feels like there's three. She's in again. And her defensive antics force the handling error. Of Graveney School. In this under 18s open, defeated collegiate yesterday, and they backed that up with one against Hurstpier Point College and then Kingsbridge, Bro. former nice. champions. Nice, Alex. Set. And then defeat of Blundells earlier today. Samuel Whitbread Academy through their gun woman, and then finding. Another. Wow, the interplay, forwards and backs, 
is to die for. Holding the last offender, and it just needed the finish from Tawana Makope. And unfortunately, Arise began to bulge for the line before she'd safely pouched the pass. All right, mate. Dave Rogers has come to rejoin us on commentary. Oh, my goodness me. I am covered. I'm not sure if it's mud or gravy or what, but it is all going down out there, mate. Stellar shift from you. How are you doing? I'm good. My voice is hanging by a thread. OK, OK. I think it's a thread just about thick enough to survive to the climax here on RE1, which looks like it might, just like the year before, be a muddy affair. Amy, Amy Kurt is uh, really caught the eye wearing 10 for the Samuel Whitbread Academy, as has this girl, Phoebe Fullerton. He gets wrestled to the ground. Take step, take step. Tuana Mapoke is lurking on the left, just surfing the shoulder, looking for an offload. Doesn't receive it this time, but she may take do step, it first receiver. Very narrow offering from both sides at the moment. And Mapoke. Mapoke is drawn in. Whoa. Mapoke goes route one. Mapoke, yeah. <laughs> Different dynamic today, isn't it? We've seen a few more of those pick and goes. Not the day for truly putting the air on it, but you've got to find a way to cross the whitewash, whether that is up the jumper and over the top or out wide with a bit of fizz. And Sam Whitbread up over 20, taking us to half time. Backwards. Graveney on the ball, really looking for their first concerted period on it. But they're going to be denied by the blast of the referee's whistle. Samuel Whitbread Academy are voracious in their appetite for possession. And Amy Kurt bounces off the right, Matadors one away, and then says sit down to the last. Amy Kerr delivering another try time for the women in black. Girls, line up.
Back underway. Sammy Whitbread Academy in full command. Ha oh, ha, but Gravely cutting some lovely lines and still looking to play. Advantage on offer for Samuel Whitbread. He use it. Advantage over. Pop it out. Advantage over the call. Here they go. Tiger Lily on the edge. She's not going to receive it because her teammate goes back inside into a cluster of pink jerseys. So instead, Tiger Lily Brooks tries to take it on her own. Stolen. And a great steal at that. Looped over the top. Still there. But then goes forward. Oh, it's agonizing stuff. Roach. Find set. Amy Kurt, we know what happens here. Another visit to Tritown. God, that's good, isn't it? What a score. Not scared to make her way through traffic. I really like the look of this Amy Kurt. Loughborough Centre of Excellence. So the Lightning may be striking with this one. Look at that calmness, that composure. Authoritative, yet chilled. Step off both feet. Great balance. Lovely try. Whitbread looking good. Yeah, still looking for someone to tweet in what the official abbreviation of Samuel Whitbread Academy is, because it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue on commentary. And as you can imagine, we're looking to be as economical with our words come day five of commentary up here. <laughs> Kerr clattered. And the Whitbread Academy with a few fresh jerseys on as well. Lily Rutt. She began life as a netballer, wearing three. There she is, Just serving up the ball. Well, you were talking about uh, Loughborough there. That's something Katie Trevathan talked about yesterday, wasn't it? The transitions from sports. If you've got skills and ability and you think you might like a little bit more physicality in your sport, then maybe rugby's for you, especially if you've got a kicking game and you can put it in behind like that. Love that option from Gravely in the first of the bout. Offload off the floor. Gravely, one more offload required. Oh, but denied. And knocked oh. on agonizingly. Let them play, ref. The sideline alive with hope that Gravely we're going to round off an epic team effort. The guess who, Imi oh, Kurt, no. arriving on the scene again. And Gravely denied agonizingly. It's the hope that Rush. kills you. Bye. Still. This is the area Six. of the field they want to play and there's still two minutes on the clock. They've got Samuel Whitbread Academy hemmed in, but they need to go up and pressurise them. No sweeper. A taste of their own kicking medicine, maybe. The bounce is kind. The bounce in Tiger Lily Brooks's hands, who skates inside. Throws the two defenders into the revolving door. Through the foyer. And in for another try underneath the uprights. End to end, breathless stuff. Oh, it's such good balance, isn't it? The revolving door is a great analogy because she's sent them one way and gone the other. And they're just stuck behind that moving pane of glass. Nothing they can do to get close to the try scorer. <laughs> You know what? Despite the rain we've had, despite the fact everyone's caked in mud, it might be a day for the 21 mil studs, but we're still seeing beautiful footwork. Look at that step and balance. And then the acceleration. Fantastic score. In a game full of fantastic scores.
Gravenick, I for one would love a try and they'd be worthy of one too. A taken high. And they're going to have to strike from very deep here. Riding through some tackles, smuggling an offload, feeding the speed. But another challenge coming in late. Oh, that is a big hit. The appetite for defensive destruction from Samuel Whitbread Academy, insatiable. A bounce up the right, foot to the floor, gravely for the try line. The touchline erupts. And Gravney tickled pink in the final play of the match against Samuel Whitbread Academy. And a richly deserved score on the showcase pitch here at the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. Oh, what a lovely way to finish. And we've got the gravy replaced, the Gravney, should I say, replacements in front of us. And they cheered that one in as if they'd won the game. A lovely moment. And it finishes Gravney 7, Samuel Whitbread Academy 43. Clifton College versus Bedford Modern. Bedford Modern in the red, Clifton College in the blue and white. Will it be all right on the night? I'm sure it will. Great to have you company for this one. The clock just ticking past two o'clock. Bedford School, of course, not Bedford Modern. Been out here a little while. Anyway, in the hoops, it is the boys of Clifton College on day two of this under 18. We have had some absolutely thrilling games. It's Clifton with the first meaningful possession. But it's only meaningful if you can do something with it. But patience now for the first 30 odd seconds. Bedford with some accurate defending early on. And that's a good ball, out wide to feed the speed, but the touchline, very often the defensive winner. That's good patience by Bedford. 
We'll have the line out here and a chance to launch an attack from halfway. Thankfully, it's dried out a little bit because it has been pretty stinking at times today and Clifton go up and pinch that. That is very nicely done indeed. Now they've got another attack, so frustrating one for Bedford. They thought they were going to have the opportunity to attack instead. They've got a little bit more defending to do. Off the top, and this time Bedford do have the ball, and Oliver Simmons wearing 15, chips that one in behind, smart kick. Looking to play in the right areas. The Bedford School yesterday beat Newport High School, beat Cardiff and Vale College, beat Berkhamhead, Berkhamstead School, and lost to Bromsgrove today. Lost to Finborough and lost to Warwick. So looking to finish with a flourish here. As for Clifton College, they also lost to Warwick but beat Clifton. So a big win here. Might give them half a chance, but it needs to be a big win. This under 18's competition is producing so much quality in both contests that are remaining. But of course, we'll conclude today. It's been all Clifton though, certainly in terms of territory, not a huge amount happening in the red zone, but maybe that is about to change. Clifton galloping through the last ditch tackle, falls away and Austin Rowe gets the game's opening score. Austin Rowe. The cleanest pair of heels, he's run that in under the poles as well. <laughs> fabulous strike, fabulous effort. But on this boggy pitch, this boggy in goal area, these are not the easiest of conversions, so important to get plenty of height on it. And that is exactly what they've done. Look at this for a finish. This is the first opportunity, really. Bedford have been resolute in defence until then. And Austin Rowe, the gas merchant. Jacob Ryland gets us back underway. Everything just a little bit tougher on the surfaces like this, but these boys will play plenty of rugby in these conditions throughout the winter in the 15 man code loose ball but no infringement yet still loose and a big chase back coming in there was a push in the back but the penalty to Clifton Oscar Green Archie Spokes lovely hands great pass and Clifton in. Take another look at the try. It all came from the quick penalty. Just a tap and hands. That was important there, but the offloading really good, keeping the ball alive. Then the two on one round the outside. A fabulous advert for VO cameras. Well, hopefully they captured the action because they stopped us from capturing it. However, we've had a word. They've moved it and we're back underway.
Six minutes gone. Bedford School needing a trial, nearly getting away on his ride day. That's a different story, but great strength. The offload good, but it's just crept forward. To Clifton, on the move again, looking for try number three, just before half-time. This could be a killer blow for Bedford if they can land it. 6.50 on the clock. Binfielder. Into the 22 they go. Largely been in charge of this first half, particularly since the first score. It's really good handling. Oscar Green. A lovely dummy, lovely ball, and will it lead to the score? Oh, just short. Bedford all over it, but can't force the turnover. Can they disrupt something here? Or is a third try beckoning for the Bristolians? Flat ball goes forward. They're going to dot it down. Referee is hawk eyed. And the half time whistle goes Bedford nil, Clifton 12. Clifton letting Bedford off the hook there at the end of the half. In the world of competitive sports, every advantage counts. At Holroyd Howe, we understand the vital role nutrition plays in athletic performance. That's why our dedicated team of professionals provide expertise in sports nutrition to give athletes the power to perform. We work with our chef's teams to craft meals tailored to fuel peak performance, ensuring your athletes have the energy they need to succeed. Education is key when it comes to fueling performance and we can support athletes in making food choices through our various initiatives and sports nutrition programme. Get in touch today to see how we can help support your athletes with our sports nutrition guidance and expertise. Polroyd Howe, providing the power to perform. Clifton College chasing the game, need the ball, need a score. That's a great start to the second half. They have gathered the kickoff. Over the ball goes Arthur Proctor. Can't turn it over though, and there's a gap opening up. An offload that drifts forward. Oh, Matty Dixon. Very close. Very close to being brilliant. So Bedford School, right, hold back. their plate hopes hanging in the balance. Here come Clifton then. Play on. Release, release, release. Yep, yep, good. 
Turned over, Bedford on the march, long way between them and the try line. That is some contact zone though, isn't it? Needed to throw that dummy there, ball wasn't quite in the grasp and he actually did well to keep hold of it. It is a real bun fight in close quarters. And Clifton managed to force the knock on. Correct referee, let's play rugby. Coming up next, we're in the girls under 18s. We've got Epsom versus Hartbury, but before that, we have got Clifton College running beautiful lines back against the grain. Is it grounded? Ref says no. Loose pass through the legs. Little bit of flair to light up a muddy Friday here on RE1. Oh, and then fumbled forwards. And it'll be Bedford put in. No scores yet. Okay. Yeah, I know. It was accidental. You okay? You good? Is your hit? No, time's off. It was accidental. All right, hey, White, we got him. We got us up. Okay. Time one. Eight. Five. Help! Hey! Set! <laughs> Great defensive work from Clifton College. Bedford just struggling so much to get out of their 22. Oh, nearly pinching that turnover as well. Wonder if putting it on the toe might be an option here for Bedford. Try and feed the speed. No sweeper at home for Clifton. Or maybe a step will do it. There is a long way to go. A big chase coming in, but Bedford school are up. Over halfway, a desperate check over the shoulder. Arthur Proctor, Arthur Proctor, oh, the tackle, superb, but it's not going to be enough to stop the try. Oliver Simmons finishes it off, but he has put the final brick in a big wall built by Arthur Proctor. A lung-busting effort. Conversion's good, game on, Bedford 7, Clifton College 12. Now Clifton College, I'm looking comfortable to looking over their shoulders. Two and a half minutes of the second half gone. That's another good surge forward. Austin Rowe, try scorer, scored the first try of the game. In fact, two on two here now for Clifton College. Battered through the middle, oh, brilliant clear out. I think that's a bit of a stinger. Rupert Cracknell, the Bedford boy, number three, lovely pass to create some speed. The big men to gallop into. <laughs> Holding on. No. Oh, pressure coming on, and then the knock on Owen, oh, some afters as well. Incredibly childish from Harrison Jones. Not cool. I'll grass him up, referee. It was number four. Harrison Jones. Okay, hey boys, we got a very good game. All right, we got a little under a minute and a half. Okay? Take a deep breath, stay in the team. 
Calm it down. Good rugby. All right. It's an outside red. Jump white. 90 seconds. Yes, Harrison. Time on. Behave yourself. Child. This referee's been fantastic, by the way. He did the under-13s earlier. This refereed it really well. Real empathy in the rain to the youngsters. And then treating these good players in the under-18s with the respect they deserve to. A minute to go. Clifton deservedly ahead, but Bedford doing their best to make a game of this. This next minute, absolutely huge here on RE1. Nice ball off the left hand and the switch inside back the other way. Just looking to create some gaps in this Bedford defence and they might just have done that. Into the 22 they go. Play on! Here is Jones. Good tackle on him. Well, over committing at the breakdown, it's going to create the chance to stop. And go! And Oscar Green is going to get the try that wins it for Clifton College. 17-7. This will be the last act of the game. One more restart. One restart. Oh, he's looking to fade this in. It's not going to be far off. But we are. Going to have time for the restarts. So not going to be enough for Bedford School to creep back into this game. However, maybe enough to get a little bit of glory and make the scoreline a bit tighter. This was it. Last play of the game. Oh, it's gathered on the fall. Maybe it'll be Bedford. Going further behind as Clifton College have got one last attack. Checking back the other way. That is a, a loosey goosey and a raging pass off the left hand. Lovely ball, fabulous seed. Good job, boys. Pick and a go around the outside. A big fend and offload and a big gap for a big man to attack. Last play. Clifton College searching for try number four. The game's already won, but what will be the margin? Hard line. <laughs> Knocked on. That'll be the end of the game. No, no, let go. On the line. Hold on, hold on. Time's off. No more. Well, that is the final, final warning from the referee. It wasn't a knock-on at all. It was a penalty to Clifton College. And that puts the cherry on top of the cake. That'll be full-time. We don't even need the conversion. We don't need the conversion because Angus is down there celeb spotting. He has got... It's either the real Slim Shady or Will Greenwood and Danny Grootcock. What have they got to say, Angus? Dave, yeah, a pair of World Cup winners. You've just been referred to as the real Slim Shady, Will. How do you feel about that? I've been known as many things. Rodney Trotter, most more often than not. But uh, I'd take that as a compliment. You certainly, I certainly hope so. It was meant that way. Um, listen, you've got to shoot in a, in a quick second for a very important warm-up because Wellington College and Millfield are playing in a massive, massive knockout game. But you're familiar on the touchlines, obviously, uh, links with Wellington College, but also, of course, the Sebra Old Boy. I think I saw, saw you've been uh, on the Wilson run recently. Yeah, that's right. It was the about 11-mile run on Tuesday across Borfell. It's caught, I think there's song without singing. It's Courtly Car from Window that makes the Sebra man. Uh, it's a brutal school run, toughest one in the world. But great to go back with a four or five first team boys from 1991. So we had a, it was a lovely time. It's a, it's a, Sebra is an epic place.
And before before I let you go, and then I'm going to I'm going to drag in Danny here. Um, you've just been watching Danny's Clifton College side play a really authoritative performance. Yeah, outstanding side. They always are sevens or fifteens. Um, I remember a cracking game when I think Finn Baxter was playing and Lucas Brook down at Clifton. I went and watched it, and I think Wellington may have nicked it, but always tight. I think Clifton did Wellington this year. Um, it's a great school there. There are so many great schools. The, the quality of rugby you see across the board. I mean, the coaches, most of the World Cup lads are heads of rugby or directors of sport at some of the top uh, schools in the country so you'd expect nothing less you certainly wouldn't now listen our final question before i let you go and join that wellington college warm-up the very fact that it's all boiling down to i think points difference or it's all coming to a real head in that group it just shows you the depth of quality that we've got on show here at the howard and ross in part national school sevens and and how good and intense school rugby is yeah i think the whatsapp group from a lot of old parents and players are saying he's at the toughest pool there's ever been you throw Kirkham, Sebba, Millfield and, and Wellington into the pot uh, it goes down to the last game Millfield hold all the cards but Kirkham and Wellington still have an outside chance of getting out well I'm going to let you run along Will thank you very much for joining us I'm going to bring your old mucker Danny Grucock in uh, Danny Clifton in the plate but but going along pretty nicely yeah, it's been a tough year for these boys. Uh, we've been pleased. We've got six teams in here from the senior school, uh, two of the girls' teams and the 14s, 16s. So we had another team in, in the Vars. Um, so plenty of kids here. Not quite good enough yesterday to stay in the cup. Uh, but we're going all right in the plate, so we're, we're pleased. A good performance then. Uh, boys worked hard. Conditions are tricky. A bit slippy. Uh, but our lads are staying strong at the moment, so pleased with that. Nice to catch up with the old mate. Yeah, it is frightening. There's a lot of boys here. John O is here, you know, as a, a stack of boys, either invo as, as Will sort of mentioned, involved in the rugby. Uh, all their parents there seeing it, seeing their kids play. Uh, Lewis Moody's here watching his lad. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to bump into everyone. We don't get enough sort of reunions and catch-ups, so it's nice. Roslyn Park's a good spot to, uh, to get everyone together. We're going to need to get them to put on a lunch or something for you boys next year, aren't we? Uh, that, that would be lovely. I think everyone would be happy to sit down, a glass of wine. That would be lovely. Nice evening. You heard it here first. A glass of wine with the World Cup winners. That would be very nice. I'm going to hand you back to Dave Rogers now, who is talking us through this uh, under-18 girls game that's taking place on RE1. Yeah, tag me in for that lunch reunion, please. I'd uh, love to hear some of the stories there. I've been lucky enough to hear... Uh, oh! Ho, ho, ho! Less of my patter, more of those tackles. That is monstrous. Hartbury, what are you doing? They've had a great day today, Hartbury. They beat Kingsbridge Community 31-0, then Millfield 15-0. That's coming off the back of yesterday. Defeat to Landovery College, but then beating Taunton School 50-0. As for Epsom in the white and the black of course with a shade of brown as heartbreak come forward they lost to millfield beat kingsbridge so far today so this a must-win game for them and if they do win this and it means we have to get the abacuses out good work then from heartbreak college and kaylee goldston and in the middle we're in 16, Gabby Hallett, working it out to the left-hand side now. Zoe Condon, she's high-tackled. Powerful run. Right in front of that Welsh Exiles tent. They'll be on the search for talent, of course, and plenty of Welsh talent has come through Hartbury in recent years. And we've got the first try of the game, it goes to Hartbury. It goes to Gabby Hallett. And that early pressure, that early perseverance leads to early points. It's Hartbury 5, Epsom 0. Hartbury College, we've got a special guest to introduce you to shortly. 
He's very annoyed that there's not a throne here for him. Alas, I'll say hello to him when he works out how to put the headphones on. Make sure that microphone gets nice and close so they can hear you. Alex Dombrandt, how are you? Very good, thank you. How are you? How many selfies have you taken today? Uh, just a couple. I was hoping there'd be a seat up here for me. I'll see, if, I'll see what I can do for you, mate. Thank you. Here go Epsom then, up over halfway, trailing Hartbury by seven points to nil. Back in your John Fisher days, Epsom, were they one of your rivals? Uh, yeah, Epsom College, uh, they were always a strong, strong... Epsom College, <laughs> always a strong score. Um, so, yeah, it's good to see them doing well today. And I've seen you have a couple of dust-ups against Hartbury over the years too. Yes, um, thanks for bringing that one up. Buck Super Rugby final against Hartbury. Heartbreak for me at the end. But yeah, thanks for mentioning it. Do you know, I find it incredible that none of those Hartbury players have gone on to play Premiership Rugby because there were so many good players in that team. Yeah, there was. There was definitely a few. I'm not sure if um, there's a few that are around the Championship scene. I yeah. Mean, um, oh, there's bags in the champ. Yeah. Um, but there, yeah, I mean, Hartbury University, Hartbury College, always a strong, strong setup, weren't they? Well, incredibly, in terms of the women's game, this is the this is the under 18s. It's the first time this year that Hartbury women haven't won the ace. Oh, ho, ho! what a shot that is! That was a great tackle, textbook. What is so annoying? is that I've been given a team sheet and there's no number 14 on it, so I can't call out who that was. That was an absolute shot. But yet, first time that Hartbury College women haven't won the ace, so that shows that there is growth. Exeter won it, beating, um, beating the Harlequins lot in the final, actually. Because out of that Cardiff Met team, I'm going to test your knowledge here and test mine as well. How many, how many have managed to go pro? There's you, Luke, Max Llewellyn, yep uh we had a couple of boys go in the championships we had george simpson yeah and, and ben williams went to ealing and um george simpson's now playing his trade at the doncaster knights i believe yes uh, they're, they're live stream tomorrow against yeah. uh against cornish pirates yeah he's doing extremely well up there which is good to see the one-armed bandit um trying to think who else a couple of boys playing indigo prem yeah so alid and alid both playing uh yeah in the worst prem uh, Jack Arthur. Oh, uh, yeah, Bedford, Bedford Blues, yeah. yeah. Bedford. He's doing really well. He's a seven now. Get back, get back, get back. Uh, well, that's the, that's the classic Danny Milton thing, isn't it? More on that later, because Hartbury are sniffing around. Try number two here, close, but not quite. It's all pretty narrow. Options left and options right. If they go right, they can walk it in. But now Epsom have put a couple of defenders across. Oh, this is... <laughs> From short range, it is cannoned over. And Hartbreeze at number 16, Gabby Hallett scores it. Good oh, my goodness me, crocs and slides. These two girls are having an absolute nightmare. Just out of your shot in the rain. But that's converted, taking us through to half-time. Hartbreeze 14, Epsom nil.
you looked good in red, my friend. Yeah. Uh, mate, that turnover at the end was good, wasn't it? You enjoyed that. Yeah, the jackal. I did. Yeah. I mean, when, whenever you come off the bench, you want to make a, an impact, so it's nice to, to pick up that turnover. Yes. And a couple of absolute humdingers you were involved with as well. We're going to talk about them briefly, but of course the priority right now is these young players for Epsom and Hartbury. Epsom looking for a way back into this game. Hartbury have been clinical in the red zone. Offload, really good shot, really good. It's a little bit narrower than it has been because of the conditions. Dry overhead now, but a little bit wet underfoot. But these two teams still trying to play. This is Eddie McClellan Fordyce tackled out into touch. One thing I've been really impressed with, I've been I've been lucky enough to have been walking around and some of the offloading skills, especially with the conditions. It's, it was raining heavily earlier, the ground's really wet, but some of the offloadings from all age groups, um, both girls and boys, has, has been outstanding. That's a little bit of you as well, isn't it? Big part of your game is the offload. Now, is that a natural instinctual Rose. thing or is it something that Boy. you all work at part yes. of the training routine and regime oh, i think i think across rugby it's something you work at but more 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 so that in the sevens the way try and keeping that ball alive try and keep continuity in attack you know with the more space that there is obviously with the less players if you can have a good offloading team and and good communication around that keep the ball alive then it's, it opens up the opportunity for more tries we've seen a couple of really tasty ones throughout the day and if they put a highlights reel together what? at the end of the tournament, then this Boys. stands up with just about Death. anything rugby-wise. Got an under-18 men's game coming up after this that Thomas is going to join us for too as Hartbury decide to venture up the short side. Chloe Hill, vice-captain of this team, knocked that on in contact. No advantage coming lost forward by Hartbury. Scrum Seen a little bit of that, but of course it is damp out there. And this pitch, even though it's starting to look a little bit brown and a little bit boggy now, you've got to think it's probably had... Well, north of 50 games of sevens on it over the last four days. Five. Really done an amazing Ten. job to keep it playable. You can definitely see where all the action's been, can't you? There's, yes. <laughs> there's, there's spots in the corner that I haven't seen much action, but the middle is definitely 50 games deep. What we have seen today, especially in the rain, is uh, a couple of good sliding finishes as well. Advantage. What's yours? You like a sliding finish, don't you? Yeah, I think it's safe, you know. Get, get all the weight and the body behind it. It's and it's one for the cameras as well. You get a nice insta picture for our. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's very important as well. Because yeah. your old, uh, well, your, not your old teammate, but your teammate Luke, Luke Northmore Rubs. announced that he's making his return from Rubs. injury tomorrow. He's uh, he's very yes. much a, a one hand dot down he guy, is. isn't he? He is. He is. Is yeah. that because he's scared he might get hurt if he. I'm not sure. Maybe he <laughs> doesn't want to graze the knees, maybe. Yeah. Well, that won't be a problem for you tomorrow because you're not at the Stone X, you're at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and Hartbury College are at the races. Into the 22 they go, looking for try number three that would probably put the seal on this game and continue their undefeated run. It's got to go. There are numbers here for Hartbury. Epsom committed defenders surviving another phase, but how much longer can they survive? Millie Randolph brought down Misha Pile. now it's on for Hartbury oh it's high it's a penalty try that's prevented Georgie Watkins from getting her name on the score sheet but that's seven points and a yellow card some really good continuity there from Hartbury keeping the ball alive looking for the over uh, the overlap and the space out wide and, and got it there really nicely well, there's a bit of an ooh from you then after that uh, that high tackle, but that's just a desperate last-ditch attempt, isn't it? Nothing malicious there. Twenty-one nil. Epsom in a spot yeah. of bother now. Down a player. Hard enough when you've got 14 versus 15, but 6 v 7, tough going. So you're here with Limitless today, part of the Howden Rosslyn Park National School 7s. Did they get you lunch? Um, yeah, not, not yet, but I'm, okay. I'm hoping for maybe a little that bite is. to eat in a minute. Oh. But yeah, no, it's great to be here with them, um, a kit supplier for some of the schools here, and um, just trying to get 
the name and spread the word out there a bit more and try and get a few more schools to uh, use the kit, which is a uh, great quality, I might add. Got you a nice little bench coat as well. Uh, yeah, which I, apparently I can keep, which uh, <laughs> I'm very happy about. Now you're talking. Yep. Nice, nice for the Bite. rainy dog walks. It's going to be nice. I mean, you're a big man with a very small dog. Out. Can't go wrong with a French bulldog. <laughs> well, you brought up France and, and the French then. So last week, wrong side of the score, but the initial devastation Close. seemed to wear off pretty quickly when you looked Five. at how far you'd come as a group. Because, God, that was a good contest, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think throughout the tournament, you could see the, the improvements and the growth we made as a team. Here come Harper again into the 22. They go. Try number four beckons epsom have defended well defended bravely but they're a player down oh. here and oh, i cannot believe that hasn't gone it has now the netball pass helped on its way it's knocked on and that is a butchered opportunity for hartbury yeah, my awesome. goodness could have walked it in and alex donbran tight-lipped after that one because he only wants to say nice things about people. Growth. Correct. <laughs> Boy. Set. Last 30 seconds then. Come up some magic something up to finish on a high here on pitch RE1. Oh, it's a long way round from there. It's a good offload. It's a brave offload. But I'm not sure. There was a lot of choice there on the try line. Tell you what, Hartbury are bringing some physicality and work rate in defence. Great to see. Pinning Epsom right down there. So there's a lot about a team as well, when you're three scores up in the 14th minute to keep on going like that. 100%, 100%. Good work ethic in the team. They're still going now. Brilliant to see. Oh, knock on now. Can they get the fourth try that they want? Oh, it's a nice ball over the top. If they go right here, there's lots of space out there. Can well, they get it there? There was last time as well. Great win for Hartbury. They beat Nepsum Back to the action here then and back to the under 18 boys and Bromsgrove School against Gordons. Bromsgrove in what was once a white and maroon kit now smattered with the brown scars of a great day's rugby. Gordons in the black. Gordons, one of the tips to win it from one of our colleagues, Jack Zora, but Bromsgrove straight on the march. Beautiful balance running. Great offload, and then it goes forward. But if that is a sign of things to come, then we are going to have a great 15 minutes watching these two teams. Alex Dombrant joining us for this one. Harlequins, England, Wales under 20s, England 15, Cardiff Mets, John Fisher's school. Any other teams I've missed out there? Um, Wallingham. Wallingham, at the Wallingham.
great to have him here. Great to have you here wherever you're watching around the world. And one of the things you said you were looking forward to, Thomas, offloads. And we've already seen one cracker. I think we're in for a, for a good game here. Two teams that obviously got some very talented players. Well, here come Gordon's then. Theo Povey needs to be careful of that touchline. Bromsgrove asking for a touch. Referee saying no. Gordon's two from two today and they've beaten some good teams as well. They've beaten Whitgift and they've beaten Radley College. And this to go three from three in the group. Same for Bromsgrove who've beaten Whitgift 2017 and Radley 24 nil. So this, a winner stays on. You win this, you top the group, you're three from three on day two and that is not a bad spot to be in. God, that is a good tackle, but they just can't find the touchline. Bromsgrove. It's all pretty narrow, but the handling good, the handling patient. And Gordon's get the offload away. First try of the game. Theo Povey. Harlequin under 17. Gets the meat pie for Gordon's school, and they're off to the races. The Gordon's crowd going wild on the far side. Oh, they love it. The, the board banging has yeah. become very fashionable this uh, year, and I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm all here for it too. Get a bit of an atmosphere, a bit of buzz around Roslyn Park today. Come on. Plenty of Quinn's representation. It's a good kick. In this Gordon School, Ben Webb, the kicker. He's another one playing for the under-18s this year. Take another look at this try then. It's quite easy to get clustered there, but they did well to identify the space. Once again, that continuity we're talking about, obviously good communication there, finds the offload and, and, a, and a lovely sliding finish. Yeah, like you say, for the grab. That's it. Very, oh, no, no, very underrated in terms of the conversions as well, obviously for the, the novices out here, conversions, drop goals rather than the tee. They all add up, so a very good conversion there. We've seen some incredible games decided by conversions. We've, oh, good shoulder. We've actually seen games um, where a team has won by scoring fewer tries. We've had a four try to five with a team who've scored four have won it, and that's such a heartbreaker. But it shows how important it is, not just to get your conversions, but also if you're defending, if you're going to concede a try, to try and force them out as wide as you can. Another offload out of the cat flat, but... Can't gather that. These boys want to play. Yes, it's great to see. It's great to see. So good defensive, defensive set there from Bromsgrove. Now they have a chance to attack from this scrum. That is a tough kit wash tonight for Bromsgrove, isn't yes. it? I, I feel sorry for all these lads. They they play a game at what nine ten in the morning, get soaking wet, muddy, and then they got what six hours in the day to, to stay like that. It's not all saunas and spas like you England boys, is it? Oh, oh the ankle tap, the saviour. That was close. Oh, looked like he had the outside there. Great turn of pace there. Well, we've seen a few of those and you are never safe in this game, are you? You miss one tackle, you are done. Like this referee too. Come on, lads, let's just play. Fast game's a good game. That's it. We want the ball in play. I've been a victim of the old outside step a few times in my sevens career. What was the last game of sevens you played? Probably would have been Roslyn Park. Oh, probably. really? Yeah. You never, you never no. donned the sevens jersey at Cardiff Met? No, funnily enough, the call didn't come. No. <laughs> I'm not sure why that is. But. Yeah, hold the push. Well, they've been represented here. We've had most of the Buckstoof Rugby five, Universities. Five. Hartbury, Cardiff Met have been five. here. Loughborough have been here. Exeter five. have been here. Durham, <laughs> Bath. And that competition coming to its conclusion too. The quarterfinals next week, both the men's and the women's. But our concentration on schools rugby here in Bromsgrove. Going round the outside through Ben Yeo. There's no margin for error, is there? Particularly when it's slippery underfoot. Don't see, don't see many of these old school Canterbury jerseys. Do you remember when just about everyone's jersey in rugby looked like Bromsgrove's does here? 100%. Let's go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, she could have given that for any number yeah, of things. There was a couple of things it could have got done for. Oh, this is a oh. good match. Needs a bounce. This could be brilliant. Bromsgrove onto it. Bromsgrove in. Henry Parsons gets the try, but the kick was sumptuous. Uh, great identification of space there. Gordon's operating without a sweeper, which uh, in sevens would be someone just roaming the backfield for those kicks. And like I said, great identification, put the ball in behind and then the wheels there to, to go and collect it and finish it off was, was amazing. From the moment it came off the toe, it was on. Diego has put the kick in. Once number six went through there, he wasn't getting caught, was he? Well, you've got a couple of those this season. The one that immediately comes to mind was the one at Big Game, Twickenham, yourself and Danny Kerr linking up for a great try. Yeah. What's the what's the secret with that? Are they pre-planned? Do you give each other the eye? Is it telepathic? What's going on? Uh, I think the one with me and DC was, was definitely off the cuff, but I think in these sevens tournaments, they're, they're, they could potentially be pre-planned, obviously, if teams don't operate with a sweeper, then they might get a message on and on trying to uh, try and utilise the space in the backfield. Well, this is good defensive pressure from Gordon's. Oh, and then conceding the penalty. Brilliant pace, Josh Houghton for Bromsgrove. And now they're going again. Another pass could do it. Excellent tackle. But Gordon's hanging on. Oh, Yeo gets swallowed up. But offside. Yeo tapping, going. Has he knocked that on? Offside, not ten. Hold, hold, hold. There was another guy there. I saw another guy there. Well, he has knocked it on, so the try won't count. But Gordon's are down to six. Ben Yeo has not scored a guilt-edged opportunity, but Bromsgrove. I've got the opportunity to get one over here. It is grounded this time. Ben Benson, the lively scrum half, gives Bromsgrove the lead. Gordon's down to six. What a half. End-to-end -end stuff there. This passage of play could prove crucial with, with uh, Gordon's man in the bin. So Gordon's are going to have to work that little bit extra to make up for that man down now. Well, the extra's not added, but Bromsgrove into the lead for the first time. They lead Gordon's 's down to six chasing the game but gathering that kick off Bromsgrove though forcing the man into touch and now with a set piece to attack they're going to have a player advantage and this 
is a big opportunity at the start of the second period. In the middle. Both Back teams middle. undefeated. This is to top the group the middle, thank you. and keep the dream alive. Right, Nearly right. swiping that. Oh, it's been knocked on. Yeah. And this a let off for Gordon's. Knocked on my white, black scrum. Alex Dombrandt joining us for this half before he disappears to North London. Minute, Shoreditch tonight, isn't it? Yeah, off to Shoreditch, stay, stay in a nice hotel and then playing Saracens tomorrow. What a life. Massive game as well, massive occasion as well. I mean, you're part of plenty, not just for England, of course, but for Harlequins with big game, big summer kickoff coming up, but to lace them up at that Tottenham Stadium. That's pretty cool. Yeah, 100%. It's one, one we always look forward to. Um, yeah, quite grateful that Sari's picked us for the game, which is nice. Um, so, yeah, no, really looking forward to it. Well, they've got to sell some tickets somehow, haven't they? Bromsgrove 12, Gordon 7. Gordon's took the lead. Bromsgrove had a real purple patch at the end of the half. That's a lovely ball over the top, though. Now they can feed the speed. Back inside they go. Excellent carry. Zuko Rob wins the penalty. Oh, here we go. Bromsgrove, Jack Gilbert to the bin. Temporarily six no on six. No clear release. Zuko Rob, another one who's part of the Harlequins under 18 academy this season. Good branding, easily recognizable. Rolls, rolls of rever uh, reverse now. Gordon's Ooh. back up to a full complement and Bromsgrove with one down. Well, they need to score here. Gordon's need to take advantage. Oh, the crossfield kick. Here we go. Where's it bouncing? Oh, perhaps a little bit too quick to the boot. The space was there. Leo Povey, though, couldn't get there. And it remains Bromsgrove 12, Gordon 7. You've been on the end of a cross field. You're not usually out on the edge, you always grafted. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <clears throat> big line out coming up, pinched by Gordon's. That's big. Now it's time for patience from both teams. Oh, big tackle. And Gordon's Zuko Raw back in field. Good carry down the middle. Bromsgrove attempting the jackal. The pick and a go there from Stop Brendan Colley. Oh, it's been stolen though. And Bromsgrove are away. Good tackle by Rob. Bromsgrove up the short side. Get it away. Gordon's. Off his feet. Bromsgrove going again. This time they go to the boot. Sweepers there. It's Ben Webb. Oh, it's been knocked on. Good quick contest that. Quick question, is 50-22 still a thing in sevens rugby? To the best of my knowledge, no. No, it's not, is it? I like a 50-22. Yeah, I was just thinking it'd be a good option in sevens, but I should assume with the less numbers it's probably not a thing, is it? But sometimes if there's no sweeper, even if there's a shallow sweeper, when the conditions are like this, just getting a toe on it and getting your quick guys after it is a great tactic. Saw it utilised really well in the opening game the with Llandovery College. They just had some quick lads, greasy surface, Five. bit of rain. Set. Get a big size 13 on it, eh? So no, Gordon's. Not the cleanest of offloads, but it keeps the ball alive and keeps the ball in their hands. Ben Webb. Bromsgrove looked pretty good over the ball. Still a little bit of time, two and a half minutes left. Bromsgrove can get another score, and Gordon's really in trouble as it stands. Zuko Rob can try and get round the outside. Zuko Rob is away, man inside him. Rob goes himself. Oh, and it was just overrun. No, 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 why, no, why? But Gordon's as close as they've been in this second half. Rob got Pernell there. One more pass could do it. It's going to be a race for the corner. Bromsgrove come across. Bromsgrove aren't going to get there. Gordon scores. Ben Webb makes it 12-12.
12 minutes gone, a tough conversion to come, but what a contest on RE1. It's going to make for an exciting last couple of minutes now. Oh. Well, the, if it's a draw, we're going to have to go to points difference. Still time though, 90 seconds, an eternity in rugby sevens. So let's work this out. Bromsgrove have got a points difference of plus 27. And Gordons have got a points difference of plus, what's that, 14? 14 plus 28, so there's one point in it. If it finishes a draw and it's on points difference, then Gordons will take it by one point. That is brutal. What were you saying about conversions? That's it. Every point matters. Oh, is that going to go 10? Needs to go, needs to go. Oh, it's back in Gordon's hands and then a little knock on. Oh, the drama continues into the last minute. Bromsgrove ball. Great kick off there. Just, just about reaching 10 metres. Good contest in the air, unlucky oh, just to knock it on there. Oh, the kickoffs in terms of being the receiver, absolutely Five. hanging. Five. Horrible. Cool. They call it the extra set piece, don't they? Oh, he's thought about going up the short side, but then snared in. Good work by Robbie Heffernan. They're just looking, scanning for options all the time. The sweeper comes up for Gordon's. And then drops back again. Oh, really good defensive work. Harry Stevens for Gordons. This is the ball game right here. Now they turn to the speed. Cover tackles good. Back into Gordon's hands. The clock is on 14 minutes. Referee hasn't said last play yet. And of course, our calculations are not perfect. We make Gordons top of the group by one point on points difference but please don't take that as gospel another try here though would win it massive massive phases of play here for Bromsgrove for Gordons can one of these teams win it outright big carry big tackle what a contest this has been both teams have led Harry Stevens steps and skips and penalty Gordons. Still on the move. Oh, knock, knock oh there's on a there. knock on there. The referee's not seen that. Has to be a penalty yeah. and could be a yellow card. Yeah, it lo looks like it's going to be a yellow card. Well, this is huge now. Absolutely enormous. Bromsgrove need the win but they're in their own 22, and they're down to six. Last play, straight down the middle, what a tackle. Oh, not rolling away, so the turnover was good, but there was a man there, and now, Gordon's for the win! Harry Stevens wins it with the clock in the red. Gordon's come from behind to remain undefeated. Perseverance and a victory. They're three from three on day two. And this great cup run continues for Gordon School. Great finish there in the corner. Oh, it's a stressful game, this sevens, isn't it? It is, it is. What an advert for sevens, though. Great, great contest. And Morgan Pinnell. Oh, what a kick. Drains the two. Gordon's defeat Bromsgrove 19 12. Two progress. A fantastic performance. Alex Dombrandt, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good luck tomorrow. The full-time score here, Bromsgrove 12, Gordon's 19.
In the world of competitive sports, every advantage counts. At Holroyd Howe, we understand the vital role nutrition plays in athletic performance. That's why our dedicated team of professionals provide expertise in sports nutrition to give athletes the power to perform. We work with our chef's teams to craft meals tailored to fuel peak performance, ensuring your athletes have the energy they need to succeed. Education is key when it comes to fueling performance and we can support athletes in making food choices through our various initiatives and sports nutrition programme. Get in touch today to see how we can help support your athletes with our sports nutrition guidance and expertise. Holroyd Howe, providing the power to perform. units for uh, yeah, the whole of this academic year so far, so since September, I've had, yeah, got eight, eight units. I love the fact that the stats give you a, a sort of a basis for sort of analysing what the players are doing, how hard they're working. I think in, in training, but in matches as well, it's interesting to see who kind of the, the unsung heroes, if you like, the people that, that work, but you don't necessarily see them doing the work. So the students have, uh, yeah, they have real kind of responsibility to do all the uh, uploading of data themselves. So all I have to do, look on the cloud, uh, sort of platform, and then I can do my analysis from there. Yeah, it's been really interesting. I've enjoyed seeing how far he's running as well as my max speed. Well, it's been great. I mean, it's been really fun having competition within the squad. See who's run the most, who's the fastest. This is one really good thing about the app. So each player will have an app. We've created a rugby school community uh, so they can compare themselves against each other and get leaderboards for each metric. And yeah, it certainly breeds that, uh, that area of uh, competitiveness. Everyone's like putting their best teams out, working hard and never giving up until the final whistle. So when you come out here and seeing you know, everyone, all the big schools and the big names and putting ourselves up against it, so it's really good. It's been brilliant. We love, we love coming down. Uh, we're lucky enough this year, so it's our 200th year of rugby. Uh, so we're we're celebrating massively this year. I think the standard's been really high. We were here last year. 12 months on, the girls' game has exploded, and uh, we've had three really tough games today. Yeah, it's been a yeah, great tournament, great standards, and, and nice to see how we mix some of the biggest schools and the bigger names in rugby. Yeah. And now for something completely different. This is the visually he's, he's impaired he's rugby. He's and as you can hear, we have got some very vocal rugby players here. Plenty is being done across the sport. All visually impaired players and spectators. ITV, as part of their Six Nations coverage, have been trialling audio description commentary and also it takes place at all Twickenham games too. So here at the world's biggest sevens tournament, the Howden National Schools Rosslyn Park Sevens. We are very excited to have an exhibition match for Visually impaired rugby. It's in association with the Change Foundation. And the Change Foundation, the award winning UK charity, uses sports to change the lives of marginalised young people. Work delivered by coach mentors, lived experience, the challenges they aim to tackle. So, this is visually impaired rugby, an inclusive sport allowing players with any visual impairment to access 
the benefits of rugby, and we talk about them all the time, don't we? Physical, psychological. And there are people here across the spectrum of sight loss, and it's based on the rugby sevens format, the concept being the same as mainstream rugby. Pass backwards, run forwards, but the play the ball, more the rugby league style. The 2015 was when this was established. And it still exists all over the place these days. England, Ireland, Wales, Japan, Scotland, France. The World Cup took place in October last year in Toulon, at the same time as the Rugby World Cup. Sutton and Epsom, local to here is where the England team is. And I'm trying to keep my comms to a minimum because, as you can hear, we've got a referee who is very vocal and they play a really important role. So I'm going to hand it over to the referee for the next few minutes. Tackle three, defence allow on east. Unlucky. 
Right thing, Lee. Lee, that's the right thing. Last circle. OK, you ready on the whistle? Andrew, drop. Andrew, drop. Tackle one, the face on me, the face on me. Tackle two, the face drop. Back you go, back you go, back you go. Good defense. Defense on me, defense on me. Good leap. Tackle two, defense on me, defense on me. Tackle three, tackle three. That's all right. Fill your ball, mate. Mate, take the tackle. Matt, take the tackle. Tackle three. Tackle four, two left. Last tackle. Go back, back, please. Turnover. Jay, you on you, Jay, you're good. Go, let's go. Tackle one. Got drop, got drop. In the line, mate. Got drop.
that uh, exciting exhibition game I'm joined now by uh, Gavin Hastings Gavin very nice to have you along lovely to be here and uh, you know first time at Roslyn Park National School Sevens and uh, what an amazing occasion I, I, I'm staggered at how many kids are here and uh, it's just brilliant it really is certainly is and you're, you're here in a in a Howden capacity the the tournament sponsors who of course are getting so far behind grassroots rugby but also sponsoring the British and Irish Lions which of course you've got such a familiar link with um, tell me a bit about about that sort of experience with the Lions well you know what uh, I mean you know back in the last century when I played my rugby uh, uh, just it seems that rugby was such a sort of small sport and, and you know at the end of the day who knows how many former Lions players have played here at Rosen Park over the years and I'm sure there must be many many uh, Lions players that have played here and for me it, it, this is what rugby is all about grassroots um, and you know Howden coming in here they own a company called Ensley Insurance and uh, you know they've been massively involved in schools and, and students uh, for years and years and years so you know this is this is a big thing it's uh, this tournament it's just great and great to see the girls playing as well and, and you know obviously Howden are involved with the uh, with the women's lines tour to New Zealand in 2027 and uh, that's going to be incredibly exciting as well so Howden are here for the long haul. Um, I don't know how long I'll be here for, but uh, rugby has been part of my life and a great part of my life, and I wouldn't swap it for the world. 
Oh, we'll, we'll certainly keep you here for a, for a good while. Now, listen, we, we we know you as Gavin Hastings, the rugby player, but Gavin Hastings, the father, of course, is a father to a, to a rugby player who who played on these these very fields. Tell, tell me a little bit about your experiences as, as a rugby dad, particularly a rugby dad who'd had such a storied career himself. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you know, I, I speak on behalf of all parents and say sometimes it's it's worse being a parent than being a player, you know, and just uh, you go through all the highs and lows of my lad, a professional sports person, and, uh, you know, they spend a lot of time training. They do spend a bit of time injured, and, uh, you know, the highs really are... are when you look back at, at someone's career, the highs sort of almost pale into insignificance compared to the lows and, and um, all the challenges that you face as a rugby player. Um, but that having been said, it's a wonderful sport for engagement, for, you know, just um, being with your mates and, and having a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I, I look back at my career, I look... Uh, and and have it's all about fun it's about the friendships that you create and you know you look at all the young people here over this week and thousands and thousands of rugby players have been here and it's they're going to remember this for the rest of their lives and that's ultimately what rugby is all about it's about experiences it's about friendships it's about you know trying your best on the on the field of play and having fun and uh, when you get to my age uh, it, it, it you can look back and these kids uh, can all look forward and uh, I just want them to know that uh, they should enjoy themselves because it's a brilliant sport it certainly is a brilliant sport now despite my accent I'm from Scotland and I can't have you here and not and not ask you this question are we going to get back to the top of the table at some point well it would be nice to think so I mean you know it used to be that all we wanted to do was beat England well we seem to be quite successful at doing that over the last little while but I'd like to also beat Ireland and occasionally beat France as well and, and uh, we've just about got over beating Wales um, and we're managing that but it's uh, sport at the highest level, it's fine margins and we've seen in this Six Nations how fine the margins are and uh, you know Scotland, the three games that they've lost all been within five points or less and uh, you know sport at the highest level is a game of tiny margins and um, it's just the way it is. So we have to try and get over these games and try and win them by tiny margins instead of coming second by tiny margins. It's the hope that gets us. It's the hope that gets us, but that's OK. <laughs> that's OK. Well, listen, I'm not sure if they're on field behind me or not. I'm sure that... Oh, well, they're not. We've got even more time, so that's good. Hey, you've been, now, t tell me a little bit about some of the action you've seen on the field. I don't know how much you've caught, but exactly what we were saying before, it's been unbelievably tight. These boys behind us, I think, are unbeaten so far. But the muddiness and the hard work of it, it shows you that schoolboy rugby is a really, really high level nowadays, isn't it? Absolutely, and schoolgirl rugby, and seeing all the young girls out there and they're all absolutely filthy and I was thinking are they going to be worried they don't look worried in the slightest they're delighted to have all the mud but I tell you what rugby um, you know when I again when I played the, the rugby kit was not very fashionable and now rugby kit is fashionable and it's cool and uh, you know I, I think the kids that play rugby they're very very fortunate nowadays and uh, you know and good on them and and just embrace it for everything that it, it stands for and uh, they've got to have fun you know and, and they look as though they're having fun most of the time you know they certainly do and your own sevens career you must have strode out of the melrose sevens and things yeah i actually you know i played down here at london scottish um and uh we we were pretty successful in the in the sevens that we played the only one that we missed out on was the old middlesex sevens back in the day and playing in front of a full house at, at twickenham was amazing and uh, i loved it and uh, i once captained the barbarians in hong kong that was probably one of the worst experiences in my life I was absolutely knackered, um, but sevens was a big part of our lives back then, and uh, it's it's a cool sport, and it's it's great for the skills, and um, you know I've seen a lot of skills on show today, and good on them, and uh, you know. Um, there's some promising youngsters it's amazing you can always spot 
the odd person that has just got so much natural talent, be it a, a young boy or a young girl, and, and it's just magic seeing so much natural talent, and you just wish them well, and you hope that they can, they can go on and, and be successful. You certainly do. Well, listen, I think we're back underway behind us, so I'm going to let you go, Gavin, but thank you so much for joining us, and uh, let's, let's hope that the Lions go well under Haldane. Eh? Certainly do, and uh, yeah, it's going to come around quick enough, that's for sure. Thank you very much, Gavin. Cheers. Thank you. Up to Dave Rogers and Burnsy, who are on comms. Under 18 semi final time, Llandovery College undefeated today. All three of their games decided by less than a score against Finborough, receiving the kickoff in the red and blue hoops. I'll wait for a referee is over, and our semi final is underway. And it's underway with a clean break from Finborough. What a start under the poles! Outstanding. And fans every rock to the court from the very beginning. Conversion from under the posts as well. And how about that for a start? 40 seconds on the clock. Fimbra 7, fans every nil. Well, it's a tricky one for these two sides to navigate because they've had to waste on pitch re one because they were looking to sink the games that were kicking off, but. Carter Aitken, no slouch, not even half asleep, racing across for Fimbra. Now we've got a problem here, Joe, because Carter Aitken joined me on commentary earlier, and that isn't him. So, oh, <laughs> so Fimbra have done the old shirt swap switcheroo. Probably the boys on the pitch have put on whatever the warmest, driest ones are after a hard day at it. So from every college now, having a fight back, 90 seconds in, on the ball for the first time. Told by the crowd to go for it, and they're going to need to here. Well, that's a man that spent some time in the dirt, isn't it? Looking to free the hands, though, Harry Gwynne-Jones. And gets the ball away, and striking straight back from every college, Tom Williams. He's been in the tries all day, and he's in the tries again. Brother plays for AFC Women, but that is top bins when it comes to support play from Tom Williams. The timing was plum on that offload. 7 7, away we go. So Finborough themselves, they beat Bedford School first up today, 17 14, then lost to Clifton College. And it was a big win against Warwick School, so they got through on points difference after winning that 24-7. And they can do this all day. Oh, what an offload. Look at that for an arrival. Play Scarlets under 17s. 
and the timing impeccable on the way to underneath the uprights. Good restart as well, but batted back by Fimbra. Oh, straight down the middle. Oh, it's three tries in three attacks and Fimbra away. Nathan Atherton. This is astonishing. Well, wow. It just opened up. Clandavery College. Sound asleep. Look at that. Just open up and yeah, why not? I got loads of wheels. I'm going to put them into full revolution. There are two number 11s. Must have been Charlie Butler who got the first try. Could have been Charlie Butler. So Carter Aitken, he's on a New Zealand exchange. Going back at the end of the year and then he's going to play rugby at uni in New Zealand. As he's been given a very warm welcome by Fimbra. Will he have some silverware to go home with? Oh my goodness me, Thandavri are on the march again. This is top draw stuff. Can't quite gather it, but it might come back to the Welsh team on the second phase. Or Fimbra could take it away. Tom Williams making the tackle. Big clear out by Lowy Burns. Oh, has that got a little slither on it? Yes, it has. Scrum set piece, Thandavri ball. Incredible handling skills. I mean, incredible sense of adventure, spirit of adventure here on RE1. The pitch, well, cutting off a bit, but she's holding firm. Uh, very, very worthy of a rest come the conclusion, but despite the inclement conditions, all the boys still playing. Well, they only know one way, and it's bringing us plenty of joy. It's Fimbra 7, Thund uh, sorry, Fimbra 14, Thundavri 7 here. Thundavri looking for try number two. Tom Williams on the ball. He got the first, and now Owen Rickard. A lot of these boys involved in that 7-5 thriller that kicked us off today in the under-18s. Delan Rowe, Carmarthen Quinn's RFC. Oh, now peeling away, offloading away, beautiful, quick hands by Thundavri College, and Owen Griffith stopped short. Building something here, Thundavri, Dylan Rowe, Tom Williams. Williams wants to switch inside and finds Harry Gwynne Jones. Four tries in a fabulous first half. A simple conversion to come, but in that boggy dead ball area, we've seen a few missed. You had a couple of dramatic ones missed earlier as well, didn't you, Joe? These aren't a foregone conclusion. No, they're absolutely not. And uh, you also need to appreciate how many have been taken from that precise spot as well. You're really dropping that ball into the goodwill of the gods. You get a nice bounce and you're fine, but it's the man who arrived right on time for that sweet offload. And this time, he's the one dishing it up. Tell you what, we got a hell of a plate semi-final here. Well, it is knockout rugby now, isn't it? You win this game, you've got a chance at glory. Oh, and there is a chance at glory for Flandevry and Tom Williams, who dishes the big right hand. Well dealt with by Elliot Orton. Took a palm to the chops, but made such a good tackle. Owen Griffiths is a three on two here, but they need to execute it. He goes route one. Route force from the man in the red scrum cap, Yori Badham. Owen Rickard, another good offload, good defensive discipline this from Finbra. But another switch inside could do it. They might not need the switch. They won't need the switch. Yori Badham. Scores for Thandavri and they lead for the first time with the clock ticking over seven minutes. Well, that's the reason why Yuri Badham has been in or around the Wales under 20 squad this season. And to be honest, Yuri Badham 
was the one who raced across the line, but it was the presence of too many white jerseys there. His buddies on either shoulder, that's what kept the defence hesitant. But it takes a bit of class to spot the opportunity. And wow, there's all the class in that conversion. Well, he converts his own try, Yori Badem. They're going to take another look at it here. But that's an important seven points for St. Every College. They were stung after seconds by a brilliant Charlie Butler try. Badham all the way. Had options either side, didn't need either of them. And at the break, St. Every College lead Finborough 21 points to 14. Finborough versus from every College. Big! Oh, that's amazing! Big restart! Big start to the second half! Finborough in! Burns! The perfect start! They needed it! They got it! Conversion to come, but Finborough right back in the mix. 19-21. Kickoff drills to die for. All the conversion cells to the left. But what a start. Let's take a look at this. Owning the airspace. Burns scorching to the line. Well, the three tries they've scored. The one right at the beginning of the game. First half, then the second half, and then Fantafri going to sleep in defence. And... Competing again for it. Oh, Finborough on that restart, but from every college getting their hands on the ball, and when they have got their hands on the ball, they've looked dangerous. Oh, Owen Griffiths trying to hit the burners. Yori Badham, scorer of the try, wearing number 10. Well, they were thinking about the kick then, from Devry. Oh, a very generous ball backwards given by the referee. As the temperature has just warmed up for a second. Mercifully. Yeah. And Finborough. Just slipping off a tackle, they need to be careful with those. Penalty advantage, Fimbra warned to leave it. So Owen Rickard kicks away the advantage. No 50-22s in sevens. No. Dom has asked that earlier, actually. Thought it might be a good option. I'm like, yeah, it would be a good option, but unfortunately, them's not the rules. Not in the spirit of the glorious game of sevens, I don't think, to be uh, searching for 50-22s. I'm going to put that on your list of hates. Hates scrums, hates lineouts, hates 50-22s. I'm a purist. That's some pure ball off the top for Fimbra to try and work with. They've shown they can score from anywhere. Oh, it's a good line, a good offload, but the knock-on. Tell you what, Owen Griffith has knocked that on in response. If that's stuck in his hands, then he is under the poles, but this golden opportunity now for from every college and if they do score a try with the conversion they do have the opportunity to make it a two score game a rather inviting right hand side of the scrum big juicy blind side yeah they don't use it they go open but with their main man lovely ball lovely line not quite enough 
to breach the whitewash, though. Oh, well turned over by Finbrew, and then back into Lantavri hands. No tackle, so no offside, and now a race to the corner, and a race won by Tom Williams, who managed to steal some more metres. Well, a, perplex a perplexing passage just there. A lot going on around that breakdown. And Clandovery, the grateful recipients. I'd love to see that again. Yeah, because there was the turnover from Finborough. Then a Clandovery player was coming back from what would have been an offside position, but the referee on the ref mic said no tackle, which must have deemed him onside. But it's a successful conversion, which is massive, because that makes it 28-19. Let's take another look at this breakdown. Here's the turnover. Lucky. Our VAR drawing the lines there. And getting a bit of TMO help as well. VRTMOA. Now it's Landevry's turn to try and win the ball back from the restart, and they have. Big crunch and tackle coming in for Fimbra. And they're running out of time. They need the ball, they need two scores, Fimbra. Otherwise, their journey ends at the semi-final. Oh, he's shown the cheese. Referee says straight to the head. Oh, speaking of straight to the head. Tough call, that. Going for the ball. I don't think there was a huge amount of malice in there. And Fimbra already back to the wall. Trailing by nine, they're now trailing by a player for the business end of the match. Two minutes left to go. Not sure if they'll see the full complement again. But we've seen many signs here on RE1. And sometimes those numbers don't matter. They've got to gamble here, haven't they? They've got to throw someone up. And get this ball instead it's off the top for Flandevry who are attacking with intent Yori Badham numbers to the outside the final ball is a good one it's a hat trick for Tom Williams wow I know they're playing against one player light but you still got to execute the opportunity and faultless handling always in front of the man receiving the ball they never broke a stride and really a wonderful try there from clan dovery that's up against the six of fimbra what a nudge he's not missed a conversion and he's not had many easy ones he's five from five and every college on their way to a final Cracking ball off the top. Owen Griffiths taking it to the line. Yodi Badham straightening up. And then the handling. Tom Williams, the grateful recipient. Ooh, good challenge and an excellent catch. That's really good handling from T. Harwood. And when you don't get the rub of the green, this is a very punishing game, and Fimbra have not had the rub of the green today. Final few seconds. Clandevry College are heading to a final. They're not going to have a huge turnaround time, but it's going to be the same for everyone who gets through to a final here. Into the 22 again, knowing that they're already in the plate final. Can Flandevry get another score? Yes, they can. This is probably their best performance of the two days. Owen Griffith over the whitewash for the sixth time. And Finborough's journey ends. Oh, Joe Burns, look up this blue sky for the finals. Having watched Harrow and Brighton toil in the sticky bog of last year. The rugby gods have blessed us with clear blue skies for a final to savour. But first, the semi-final coming up in the cup.
Full time here, Llandovery through to the plate final. They've defeated Fimbra 40-19. Every game from here on in, an occasion, a massive one, and a moment in history for the young men and women who are taking this muddied and scarred field. Harrow School versus Gordon School for a place in the final of the big one. Gordon's in the black, getting us underway. Harrow can't take that, and a good start here for Gordon as you feel imperative. That one just tickled forward, though. Morgan Purnell can't gather it skipper of this team so Harrow with a scrum in a central position and a nice early attacking opportunity Joe Burns well you're looking wall to wall Harlequins Academy individuals from under 17s to 18s wearing the black jerseys on your right Why wow, it comes to Harrow well it's a school that everyone's been talking about school champions littered with London Irish class and smuggling a ball out to the end. Oh, yeah! First attack, first try. It never seems to take long. Come rain or shine. Harrow is scoring. He said it was a good attacking opportunity. Paint on the boots, points on the board. Harrow in charge after just over a minute. Yeah, there's a few names in these two schools who are uh, names that you might hear a little bit more down the Premiership Road, I'd imagine. Harrow, really, really interesting because they actually haven't played an awful lot of sevens, such has been the success of their 15s campaign. I think they only had one session coming into this, but they really have shown their class, and that is about strength, that's about understanding you've got your man instinctively on your shoulder, freeing up the hands. If you can squeeze it free, then he'll do the rest. Oh. <laughs> well, they've managed to gather that ball. They nearly gathered it and went straight under the poles, but they bundled into touch. One thing I do think would really work for Harrow, though, is putting navy numbers on a white shirt, not white ones. From a commentator perspective, it yes. would be, uh, be greatly appreciated. Incredibly helpful. You know, it's something to work on. We're all constantly improving, aren't we? Evolving as humans. Right. Sun's coming out. Bye. You know what that means. The Burns yes. beta. d I've, Rog, I've got a spare pair of sunglasses in my pocket for you. Have you? Some of your trendy ones. Am I going to look like Elton John or Dane Edna Everidge? Here's Zuko Rob. Oh, I am as well. These are flair. Hello. 
Good intent here from Gordons. Need a score. That's really good defending. Sam Winters. He's come back from wrist surgery and he's been really good throughout the couple of days. Jet Saunders carrying it forward there. Good period of possession this is for Gordons. Fact is that dark horses for the whole thing by Jack Zora. Well, they've got to the semi finals, so that's a decent shout from him. Two wins away from Glory. Seven, five points down. So we approach the halfway point of this first half. Harrow looked really organised in defence. It's really patient stuff defensively from Harrow. They're not committing numbers unnecessarily. They're back in their tackles, and look at that. A sticky ball as the offload came in, and Harrow looking to strike in transition. Oh, Gordon's boys just catching hold of a boot there, and that was important. If you miss that tackle, they're in, they're away, and Gordon's a little bit too eager. They're offside. And no advantage coming. Arrow school. 5 0 to the good. Another intentful carry. Gordon's playing with six up and a sweeper quite deep. It's Ben Webb who's all the way back there. He's not going to be called into action because the ball's gone forward. Yeah, Gordon's pressing Harrow here and not really giving them much latitude to express themselves. Really interesting as well. Demonstration of the faith in depth here from Harrow. It's not very often you see four of the starting seven cycled off after four, four and a half minutes. So, you know, if you've got a big 12, and I don't mean in terms of size, I'm talking about in terms of quality, that you're happy, you know, get anyone on there, they're going to execute the job. It's going to keep people fresh, it's going to keep the opposition guessing as well. Free kick. Just looking away to the right and the amount of people gathered at the bar to watch this game. So good to have this number of people watching this standard of rugby as Gordon's Look to get the first points of this semi-final. It's been attritional. Just the one score in the opening five minutes, the early one from Harrow. Since then, neither team has really threatened. Robbie Heffernan wrestled down. Harrow looking for this turnover. Getting it pretty quickly. Well, he's, he's, he's tapped it forward and then it's tumbled forward, but he has had a finger to it and Zuko, Rob's going to see yellow here. Big loss for this Gordon side. He was going to play England 18s last summer, but I think he got injured or he got ill in the build-up, so he couldn't go on tour. I mean, man down and a big one too. And this is where Harrow are dangerous, and this is why they're dangerous. Slick hands, one way, then the other. And Gordons have been down to six players, mere seconds, and find themselves behind 10-0. That's championship stuff right there. I know we're in the semi-final, but Gordons go down to six. Harrow capitalised immediately. So they've not only just taken the second try of the match, but they've also left them with, with, with maximum time to now hammer home this one-man extra advantage. Well, we're trying to get a replay of that, Joe, because we're not sure if it was a yellow card or a red card. They're definitely down to six, but we just had a question asked to us. Oh, the pass is forward. This is a real problem. So we will look into that, but what we do know is... Harrow... 10 nil up, the clock ticking towards seven minutes. We have had it confirmed, it was a yellow card. It turns out the lenses in these expensive sunglasses are yours, Burnsy. I've not played tricks on me. Oh, Gordon's with a big scrum, winning the penalty, that's massive. And they're away, they're away quickly. They could probably do with the half-time whistle, but if they can get some points on the board before that, 
and more power to them. Oh my goodness me, Harrow have won another penalty. Now they're sniffing around, try number three of the half. And if they get another one here, surely this semi-final is done and dusted. That oh, it's been pinched again. That was a big tackle coming in on the cover from Adam Beeney. Really needed to be made. Here he is, back on the ball. Shock of blonde hair and shocking at the breakdown at the moment as far as Harrow are concerned. That is three penalties since the clock ticked over seven minutes. Teams are going to need a breather here. Half-time is going to be a welcome rest. What will the score be when the whistle does go? That's a clean break. Where's the pass? Oh, it's gone in behind and it's going to be Harrow ball. Oh, it's a cruel game and the margin's so small. That could have been huge. They're down to six. And if they bust it, they would have scored and then back to seven. But now they're defending against this overpopulated Harrow side. And that's gone forward into the hands of Ben Webb. He's brought down but keeps it alive. Noah Slay. Another penalty. Four since the clock ticked seven. But of course... As the clock keeps ticking, then Gordon's getting closer and closer to being back up to a full complement. The half-time whistle goes, and Harrow lead Gordon's 7 minutes away from another final. Oh, what a pick up. Oh my goodness. Duka Rob back on so Gordon's back up to 7. Fraser White taking it to the line there. Harrow. Oh god, they're being pressed hard. Well, Gordon's need to throw caution to the wind, but all Harrow need to do is throw the ball to the edge. They've started the second half as they started the first. One attack, one try. And another yellow card. Well, I think he's been yellow carded for tackling him after the try was scored. It'll be interesting to see it on the replay because you're entitled to have a go at a man before he's put it down. And I think that's pretty fair, actually. He has taken him out cynically. Harry Stevens given his marching orders. But let's go back to that try, though. Yes, great finish, but what about the delay on the pass? It was all about the timing. The Swiss clock, the penultimate man. And here's the fire. One more gorgeously weighted pass. Offloads galore. Oh, wow!
I mean, it was enterprising stuff. The last pass, a bit of a question mark on it. <laughs> What's the question? Was it forwards or was it really forward? <laughs> Either way, always give the benefit of the doubt to the attack inside and Harrow cutting loose. Let's take another look at this. They're having so much joy at this right-hand side. Beautiful offload and just keeping the ball alive. I mean, yeah, that one there is dropped a meter in front of the five meter line right in front of the referee's nose he's much keener on yellow cards than forward passes but harrow four scores to the good oh, good take by gordon's oh we are about to have a celebrity guest aren't we two years in a row think about how long it took you to get into the commentary box here burnsy but sometimes it just happens for the right talent Nepotism working well. Crossfield kick for Zuko Rob to chase. Harrow coming across and oh, dealing with that really well. Cool head. And he's managed to duck under the tackle. Oh, what a shot! Morgan Purnell. Well, the try has gone to Noah Slay. But Morgan Pennell might not be taking names, but he's taking rib cages. And Gordons are on the score sheet, maybe too little too late. But someone from Harrow will be contacting the insurance company and putting in a whiplash claim. This is massive. <laughs> Someone all the Epsom salts. That's that's gonna be a sore one. Maybe a bit of frustration from this semi-final for Gordon's being exercised here at the expense of another man's kidneys. Boys, you must drop one. You have eight people on the field. Yes, it's the penalty now, that's the second final. Arrow are playing well enough without having eight on the pitch. Goodness me, these boys can play. So, tap penalty for Gordon's school. Well, it's opened up here for Gordon's really important last-ditch tackle. And Morgan Pennell can take over. Big seed over the top. Oh, just not happening for them today, is it? Needed a kind of bounce there. Sometimes those just drop right into your stride, but unfortunately... Getting a bit of a skip on and too fast to reel in. All the chat about this Harrow team. Turns out it's bang on the money. These boys can play. It's pretty good. They're also, well, they're missing one of the future Fine. rock stars of the game, Kathy Tuipilotu. Player of the final uh, under 16s level a couple of years ago, and well, he's going to go on to great things. But this Harrow side doing him proud in his absence. Oh boy, oh boy, are they oh, so good! So good! And they are marching up the pitch, doesn't quite stick that time. The knock on advantage. St. John Smith was on the end of that one. Now Morgan Pennell hacks that on. It is a tired chase from just about everyone. Remember, Harrow are going to have to pick themselves up and go again. Because they have got one more game. Back on the line, please. Well, one more game from glory. The Twickenham Roslyn Park double is a rarity. And it is well and truly on for this brilliant team. Not just a rarity, never been done before. Well, they're away again. Not only are they away, they're going to be under the poles. Sam Winters. Outstanding score. Still full of energy. Quite remarkable.
Bromsgrove versus Millfield, the other semi-final over an RE2. That is a tasty prospect. So this one in the dying embers, the clock's hit 14, it's back with Harrow. Of course it is. My goodness, they're going to take some beating. <laughs> Penalty, though, to Gordons. <laughs> and away they go, looking for a last bit of something. Well, they deserve it. Oh, just keeping the ball alive. A few ricochets. <laughs> And that is full time. And Harrow's march to glory continues. They defeated Gordon's school 31 7, ending Gordon's dream and taking themselves one win away from glory. Finals coming thick and fast here on RE1 at the Howard and Rosson Park National Schools 7s. It is the under-18 girls plate final. 
and it is Exeter College against Samuel Whitbread Academy, aka Sammy's, aka Sam Whit. Thank you for sending in the information regarding the abbreviation. The good news is, guys, these two faced each other earlier today, and it was a humdinger that went down to the final play. Samuel Whitbread Academy triumph, 12 points to seven, but all bets are off. This is final time. And Samuel Whitbread Academy press hard here. And they win the ball. And they give it to one of their players out here on the left-hand side. They concede a penalty. Exeter College, fumbling around. Still nil-nil, first minute. Oh, this is important rugby, isn't it? What an occasion, especially now with his blue skies above. With Fred. With the putting at the scrum. Real attacking opportunity. Connie Brooks in there at scrum half. She's on the wraparound, but it doesn't quite come off. And Exeter College. Can try and do something defensively here, but Whitbread, they're big and strong and powerful. And this is really working for them on today. A little heavier underfoot, so they can keep it narrow. Use their strength. Out there, white. No hand. Fuck. Good. Oh. Great communication from the ref as well. <laughs> Particularly when the error's made. To so knock on. Scrum down. Exeter College ball. Now, Exeter College on the march. Oh, great chance to attack, but that's knocked on. Samuel Whitbread with the put in and the conditions and the occasion just getting the better of these two teams at the moment. So it'll be Whitbread ball. Lauren Jash putting the ball in here. She's playing county for Hertfordshire. And that one spat out the bat. Now Exeter need to apply some pressure. No pressure, so Connie Brooks can let that one bounce. She's in at first receiver this time. Now is there an attack up the blind side? No, there is a turnover. And Phoebe Reed with the great work at the breakdown and Maddie Cliff. In at scrum half there, Casey Cornell. And Exeter attacking from deep, but one loose pass, one knock on. And we are back to where we started, halfway through the first half. Exeter nil. Samuel Whitbread, Academy nil. Clifton College down below us, desperately, desperately trying to give away flapjacks and snacks. They have been, well, keeping us well fed and well sustained the entire time. And keeping the players going as well. This has been a gargantuan effort. Second day of competition for these players. But this one, not really caught fire just yet. A 
But who's going to break the deadlock here? Feels like the kind of game that needs a try, and there's a very inviting short side here for Lauren Shash to attack. She finds some speed. Samuel Whitbread have had a bit more joy with that kind of charge. Here we go, the leg drive. Phoebe Fullerton. Great carry. Now is there some pace to be found. Some quick phase play. 15 on 15. Darcy Thomas making a great tackle for Exeter. But it's all so narrow. No one giving themselves any space on the edge. And it's Samuel Whitbread again. Excellent tackle. But the offload good. Now the opportunity to go around the outside. Oh, can't quite get away. Leah Bramwell, so close for Whitbread. <laughs> and once again, over the ball, Exeter, so good. This time it's Maddie Cliff winning the penalty. She wants to get things moving. The offload, little toe on that, so not knocked on by Bonnie Perchal. And dropping it onto the toe, chasing her own kick, Exeter. Happy to spend more time without the ball and the kick chase really good from Megan Polverino. And she's won the penalty. Still nil-nil. Referees is off the foot, so surely that's a tackle without the ball. Two tired teams. And some field position here for Exeter College. They want to go through the hands. Across comes Samuel Whitbread Academy to make the tackles. Really good pickup. Really important pickup. So this will be the last attack before half time. And it'll be an attack for Samuel Whitbread, who win the penalty. Exeter off their feet. And a good kick to Zach. Last play of the half. Whitbread ringing the changes. On comes Jazz Graveney. Well, not quite. She'll be here for the second half. Exeter bundled into touch. That'll take us through to half time. It is close. It is tense. It is nil nil.
second half of this tight affair. And Samuel Whitbread Academy will have the first possession. Will they have the first points? <whistles> Another penalty. Oh my goodness me, I've been celeb spotting all day. All day I've been celeb spotting and it takes until this time in the afternoon sunshine for the biggest celeb of all to turn up. Amy Wilson-Hardy, where have you been? You're not bored of me by now. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. I've actually had my coaching hat on all morning, so just <laughs> you, in time for the girls' finals, though. You quite literally wear the hats as well. You're wearing a UR7's hat, you're wearing your coaching hat. <laughs> different hats for different needs. Uh, this is now. the Plates final, the second half, and a proper tense final as well. Exeter College, Samuel Whitbread, nil-nil at half-time. Don't get many of these in sevens, do we? You don't. Um, I need to catch up on the action from today, but conditions? Well, we had a little bit of rain, but thankfully we had about an hour. It affected a few games, but whether it's been the girls, the boys under 13s, or the boys under 18s, they've dealt... Oh, great tackle. They've dealt with them really well. And now, thankfully, it's blue skies above. Little bit of brown down below. But look at this pitch, right? We've had five full days of sevens on this pitch. And I think given all the action we've had, given the bit of rain we've had, it stood up really well and we're still getting great rugby. No, it really has. And definitely, I know the players will be delighted the rain's holding off the final. And we have got blue sky. Yeah. So... So these kind of attritional games now then, it's nil-nil. We're nine minutes into it. Both teams struggling a little bit to find the edge, to be honest. Defence is on top. What are the kind of things, the kind of adjustments you'd be making now to make sure you come out on the right side of a close one? I know it's so boring, but really just do the simple things well to get in a groove, to keep the ball. We know that if you keep the ball in sevens, it's really tough to defend for multiple phases. Here's some pace then. Millie Crumpler. Birthday girl. Is there a gift for everyone else in a try? From the flyer in number 11. Exeter College. Doing well to keep this ball alive. Oh, the pass just behind. Now the big forwards on it. They've been incredible over the ball on the breakdown. Now they're showing a clean pair of heels. Maddie Cliff goes in for Exeter. Finally, the deadlock is broken. Exeter 5. Samuel Whitbread nil. The game needed that. And Matty Cliff provided that. Stretching beautifully one side, good cover tackle, but then going good hands to get a great ball into the other side to edge and finishing it off. A lot of work to do with that finish as well. I'll learn how to speak in a minute, sorry. I don't feel any pressure. <laughs> Casey Cornell misses that to the right-hand side. Five, six and seven for Exeter in a physical game. Cornell... Cliff and Reed have been brilliant, but another look at this finish here. Oh, so she's backed herself around the outside from there. Love to see it. Glorious finish in the glorious sunshine. Advantage, Exeter College. Well, that might have been a smart leave there, because we often see those knocked on, don't we? Yeah, it's a tactic you see teams taking more and more, that little grubber. It's actually really hard to retrieve. And you're also in a really good position to poach at breakdown, because quite often you have to dive on that ball. Samuel Whitbread Academy. Oh, they're committing three to the breakdown, which doesn't give them many options. Here is one of them. Oh, ho, ho. that's gone backwards. Or has it? Oh. Little tickle forwards. So where have you been coaching today? Round and about, here, there and everywhere. Here, yeah, there and everywhere. I was actually with School of Hard Knocks today. Oh, yes. Oh, here we go. X to Chi, X to College, away again. Millie Crumpler, Millie Crumpler. The birthday girl. Well, they found the edge. And is that the ticket to glory? One at the left, one at the right, Exeter College. 
showing what they're made of. Just great skill set again, ball out in front, no one had to break stride. It shows simple things done well, sometimes is all you need. And a bit of pace, obviously, of course, on the edge. And a bit of pace. Well, she had pace in abundance. Still time here for Samuel Whitbread Academy. But if they're going to make it happen, they need to make it happen quickly. Just not threaten the extra college try line at all, especially in the second half. But that's a nice clean catch. And a nice little offload out of the back door. And again. Oh, good tackle, though. It is physical out there, isn't it? Darcy Thomas making that tackle and then the offload. That will sign, seal and deliver the trophy to Exeter College. KC Cornell. Right place, right time, right result for Exeter College. Cruel on Samuel Whitbread Academy. But clinical. Three second half tries. The wind is in their sails, isn't it? You can see Tommy Whitbread trying to play a more direct game the next turn. They're going for those offloads, going for those power runners. The thing is, you've just got to side that offload before you give it. Otherwise, exactly that will happen. Here's the offload. And there is the snaffle right in the channel. Well read. Buy a ticket, win the raffle. Right then, Samuel Whitbread. Don't want to get nilled in the final. This is the last play. Another physical tackle. Phoebe Reed and Exeter College have well and truly stood up to Samuel Whitbread, who've been so physical throughout this tournament. They've been able to bully teams. Credit to Samuel Whitbread that keep him playing here. Well, they can get this ball off the pitch and they're champions, but they want more. And in fact, they put the toe on that. They booted it to the corner. And they're going to make Samuel Whitbread play out. That is brutal. That's like a cat playing with their food, isn't it? Well, Samuel Whitbread, though, they want to get something from this game, something, anything from this game. Well, the referee did warn them. I wonder if it's a conscious thing or they're not aware of the time on the clock. So these guys have played a lot of rugby over oh, the yes. last two days. <laughs> and they of... do look slightly tired on this side. A lot of delirious <laughs> muscle memory, I'd have thought. There's no clock for them to see in defence to decision make. So unless they've got someone who's very good at timekeeping on the side. Yeah, that's true. And the referee hasn't said last play, have they? No, they, they did after the last try, after the restart. So. Just, just excited to play then. Exactly, just out there enjoying the rugby, as are we. Still offloading the ball. Now there could be the chance. Trying to isolate the last defender. Well, that's well gathered and away. A little hitch kick, and it will be Samuel Whitbread to score. Oh, will it? Cover tackle coming across. Cover tackle. No. Standing. Big heart from both teams, but it's Leah Bramwell who gets over for Sam Whitbread Academy. They'll not win the trophy, but they won't leave empty handed. That's a good try. I just love it, that desire just to play for everything. They know that they're on the wrong side of the scoreboard, but just to keep going, keep fighting for every inch. It's fantastic to see. Final act of this final is the referee blowing for full time a well-deserved victory for Exeter College all the points coming in the second half they've taken it by 10 in total Exeter College 17 Sam Whitbread Academy 7 
Brighton College versus Landovery College. It's the plate final. Brighton got here, beating Clifton in the semi, beating Blundells, beating Norwich, beating Hampton today. Beating them all by more than a score. Landovery College, their best performance came in the semi final, beating Finborough 40 19. Before that, they beat Glantaff 19 17, Trinity 12 7, and Bishop Wand 7 5. They held Bishop Wand up over the line with the last play. They were that close to not even being here. This, a great contest. This, a trophy on the line. It's Landovery versus Brighton. It's Wales versus England. Every match from now until the end of the day, an event. And every college in the red, white and brown. Brighton College in the maroon, gold, navy and brown. Fans every win the ball back immediately and Harry Gwynne Jones dives on it. Well, somebody's lost their balance over there already, getting giddy at the prospect of a final. So Brighton playing with a deep sweeper. They know the threat from this land every team and likewise there'll be a huge mutual respect between these two outfits. And land every attacking first, little nudge inside has come back to Harry Gwynne Jones, but he's bundled out into touch. And an early defensive win there for Brighton College. It was a fantastic start though for the Welsh boys, that hanging kick, such a good kick off and then getting underneath it for the tap back. That's exactly how you want to start these finals. Well, I feel as though in a tight game of perspective contest like this, something can happen on a kickoff to change a game, can't it? Completely. Kickoffs so, are one big problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they say there are only problems. There aren't any problems, only solutions, but those people have never ever faced a kickoff at this level of rugby sevens. That's a nice carry there from Brighton College. Lamb with it. Now Williams. Williams held up and Van Devery over the ball. Referee says no hands, but they can't help having a nibble. Van Devery. Oh, yellow card. That is the rules. For Owen Rickard. Van Devery College up against it now. Brighton will smell blood and they'll go for it immediately. Billy Hullsborough. Oh, it's dropped, knocked on. They're so strict on that, with just hitting the ball away from a penalty now. Even if it hasn't gone very far, you're stopping the other team, yeah. taking it quickly, so it's seen as very cynical. And that is, unfortunately, an instant yellow. Well, we've seen a few in these big games. Gordon's Crouch. came undone. They got two yellow Five. cards in their semi-final against Harrow. Set. Plenty back Ready. watching in Wales, including the Butchers. Butchers. Why can't I say the word butchers? The butchers sevens. Shout out to those guys watching back over the seven bridge. Shout out to everyone watching this wherever you are. Around the world. Great to have you on board, particularly at this time of day. Oh, this is class from Tundevery. Still a player down, but Brighton. Oh, close to the turnover. Another nudge in behind. Yori Badham chasing his own kick and Harry Street going back. In fact, it's Billy Hillsborough wearing 11 going back and gathering yeah, well. Right. Territory important here for Flandevery. Well, they counted and gone. Oh, here we go. Speaking of yellow cards. Let's go, let's go. Oh, he was so close. If he could put two hands out and really attempt to catch that, I think on, he had a shot of staying on the field. But fortunately, just that one wayward arm means it's straight to the bin. Well, if you go at it with one hand, you're always running the risk of the referee making a decision. Harry Gwynne Jones now. Tom Williams. God, what a tackle. Superb, brave defence from 
Brighton College and they've turned that ball over as well. Top class, they've booted that away. Now we've got a foot race and Brighton are herring forward. Yori Badham with work to do. Oh, he's just got there. He looks second best for a while. Billy Horsburgh making that hell for him. And now, Van Devry away. Another foot race. The sweeper going to be called into action here. Franz Lamp. The offload's good. The cover tackle, good too. End to end in the sunshine. 15, never back on side. Oh, and Seb McNamara. Offside, Owen Griffiths Tommy. wants to go. He's lost footing. Brighton not making tackles. Van Devry College making them for them. Is that high? Ref says no. Tom Williams on it. Van Devry need a scrum half. And you can't dive on the emerging ball. Oh. Dramatic final so far, but still nil-nil. Wow, what's harder than 7v7? I think it's 6v6, and we just saw there. The winger making that big chase, trying to get the ball, not getting it, and having to go instantly in defence. Just saw him almost put his head back, thinking, oh, no, not again, I've got to go again. But it was Billy Hallsborough, wasn't it? Brilliant chase there, and then had to chase back. Fantastic defending. From Fergus Lamb. Called him Franz Lamb before. Let's blame the coach's uh, writing. You can see why I said that was Franz, can't you? It, it says Fergus, right? That's Franz. Sorry, you're renaming. I think that that's the rules. We can't read it, it's a rename. Maybe his name's Franz Lamb from now on. Maybe that's his new nickname. That's the kind of story how nicknames are born, though. Yes, correct. Correct. And this is the kind of platform where heroes are made. It's nil-nil here. Tense final. Five minutes gone. Both teams struggling with yellow cards. And every surviving the yellow card period. What can Brighton do with this? Still managing to find space and can they take advantage of it? Good secondary attempt at the tackle. Franz Fergus Lamb on the ball. Counters good. And every win the penalty. Tom Williams on the march. They're not 10, so Tom Williams can stride away. Tom Williams into the sunshine, into the corner, and over the try line. And every college lead. That's such intelligent play. Knowing they're a player up now, they can afford to just commit an extra number to that breakdown, that counter ruck absolutely exploding through that to get the ball back. And then again, what we've said so often this week, that transition play to just be the quickest to react and finding that space on the edge. And then when you get that penalty, knowing that the nearest player to you isn't 10 and just taking it to him. High IQ stuff. So Brighton will be back up to seven. Yori Badham can't fade that one in. And this final remains on a knife's edge. Oh, that was the counter. Yori Badham with it. And away he is, away he goes. No chance for Brighton to regroup. Oh, they've done it again, Flandevry. They've got a touch on it. And now Owen Griffiths taking it to the heart of the Brighton College defence. Oh, a little snipe and Brighton. Alarm bells ringing, they're over that. However, there was no clear release. They had to let go of it. And that one has been knocked on, which should take us to the end of the half. Wow, what a final. Brighton College nil, Van Devry College five. And let's catch up with Angus now. He's been celeb spotting. He is with, uh, who's he got? He's got Alan Dimmick with him. What's he got to say, Angus? Cheers, Dave. Well, yeah, I'm joined by Alan Dimmick, editor of Rugby World. This is on, on a personal level, your first time down here as a, as a man in the media. How have you found it? Yeah, it's hard to believe that, actually, isn't it? And, and why the hell have I not come down here before? Because it's been phenomenal. Uh, Rugby World have a long history of covering schools rugby, and it's maybe tailed off a little bit. And one of the things I've tried to instigate since coming in as editor is trying to reignite the coverage in greater depth of this kind of event, because, I mean, 
okay, the camera's not going to pan around, but looking at it, I mean, there's every angle of schools rugby is here, and it just makes total sense. It certainly does, and it's been just absolutely fantastic. What have you made of the sort of the level and the standard that you're seeing from schoolboy rugby? Well, for a start, I, the first thing I thought was we can't have been that big when we were playing, because uh, looking at some of the, the under-18s players, my word, massive. But the level of skill, but also more importantly, the level of ambition has been off the charts. And actually, the great thing about an event like this is not just that, which at the very top end, again, with the very top schools, is a given. But it's actually looking at the, the excitement. I mean, the amount of people I've spoken about, it's like, oh, did you catch that game for the under-13s? Or looking at the girls playing, and that's going to be growing and growing. And I know that the ambition coming down the pipe is that there will be more and more of that as, as we go forward. It's been dead exciting. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got a cracking final that's just about to get back underway. It's the plate final, Brighton College and Clondovery College from Wales. Clondovery looks as though they're 5-0 up. How do you see this one panning out? Um, I think it's going to be tight. I think next, I mean, it's uh, th that old cliche, isn't it? Next score is going to determine which way this goes, but I can't see it being a whitewash, so it's going to be fascinating. Well, there you go, sitting on the fence as ever, eight. Back to you, Dave. The only whitewash will be whoever the unfortunate person who's got to put this kit through the washing machine has afterwards. What a brilliant game, and thanks very much, Alan and Angus, for a chat at half-time. One of my favourite things about the Welsh teams doing a little bit better is listening to English people put a C in front of Llandovery. However, I'm sure they'll be delighted to be called the clan if this brotherhood can come together to defeat Brighton Browns. College. Brighton College massively Browns. fancied Set. on the way into this, not just for the plate, but for the cup as well. But such is the standard. They find themselves in a real dogfight in this Browns plate now. final. Fandavri <laughs> winning the penalty early in the second half. Just the one Tom Williams try. From there. Both teams having had periods down to six. And given the rain we had earlier, these pretty much perfect conditions now for the time of year, for the amount of rugby that's been played on this pitch. And Fandavri opting to go for touch. Get a bit of territory. Not a bad option, obviously haven't seen their line-out yet. You don't get too many line-outs in sevens, so be interested to see what their go-to is. Well, your options are fairly limited, aren't they? And they've overthrown that, but it's knocked on, and they've got away with it. I think Sam Ringo Jones's eyes would have lit up when that ball came towards him then, and he was thinking about the carry, but first job. Crouch! Need that to catch the ball. Boy. That tail gun position where Set. he was, it's... Sometimes it catches you a bit by surprise, suddenly the ball's there. Oh, it's a good hook in the end because the pressure came on from Brighton College and it's Van Vliet ball again. Searching for try number two. The tackle by Brighton, really good physicality. And a decent ball as well, missing out the man. It's a Ringo Jones who's defending that edge, defending against Irving hands, Griffith. Big physical edge player. Well, he was told no hands once, then twice. Got to listen to these referees. They do know what they're talking about. Oh, that offload is sublime. <laughs> Yori Badham involved. Sensational hands. And this time it's Joe Denman, the captain. Makes it 10 Nilsson Devery. Fantastic work from the power under there. Taking two defenders out and can two def if you commit two defenders, you can't let that ball get away, otherwise tries will be scored. Well, as he freed his hands there, Yori Badham. Just the the big old reach around. And his captain Joe Tenman was there. Unsuccessful with the conversion though. There's still hope here for Brighton College, but let's have another look at this excellent score. That was what the penalty was given away for. Play in the scrum half. Again, Yori Badham trying to inject the pace. Knew exactly what he wanted to do. Had his skipper on hand to dot down. Our 
Ringo Jones on the 22. Opting for the boot, touched in the air. Where's this going to bounce? Brighton's favourite for the foot race, but the bounce just slows the man down. Lovely offload, though. Great hands. Billy Holsborough dragged down on the 22. Needs to be weary of the touchline. Oh, and plans every college. Hot, hot on the turnover. From there. From there. Not a tough one for Brighton. There was a glimmer of hope. It was a shame there. They had a spring in their step. They looked like energised. In fact, like they got a score there. Real game on. Well, there's still time. Still over two minutes. And we have seen big changes, big turnarounds. Almost miracles happen in 120 seconds of rugby sevens. Oh, the lineup ball overthrown, and it is back. In Brighton hands, gathered by Fergus Lamb. This time, Brighton penalty. They want to inject some pace. Ben Saunders, Saunders. Now Lamb, Lamb. Oh, couldn't quite find the offload, but Brighton College into the 22. Quick ball this, the first time we've really seen Brighton inject some pace, reaching. Not quite getting there, a metre short. And another yeah! penalty at the breakdown for Van Der Brink. Quick on the jackal. That was an interesting call for Van Der Brink to go to line out again when they overthrew that first one. It was brave. Is now will they go again or are they going to change it up? No, they're still going. You very nearly really committed to Van Der Brink then. You sounded like you were well and truly Westwalian. I, I, no, I doubted it. myself. No, no, don't <laughs> doubt yourself. Commit. My nan lives in the depths of North Wales. Oh, does so she? she does, she's told me how to pronounce a double L. Where, uh, whereabouts? Um, Glen Conwy. Oh, very nice. <coughs> Lovely part of the world, but at this time of year, nowhere more glorious than Roslyn Park. <laughs> Oh, offside. Right, Brighton College need a try. They need it now. If they score it now, we'll get a restart. If we get a restart, we get a grandstand finish. That's a lovely ball. There's the space out wide. Attack in the corner. The try scored. Here we go. Game on. Brighton College not dead yet. Dylan Moss. Pace to the corner. Brighton 5 and every College 10. He needs to take this kick quick as well. Allow time for the restart. Oh, it's close. Not quite. And that's the thing at 5'10", the kick doesn't really matter, does it? I was intrigued actually to see if he even attempted it, but as we can see, he's got a great boot, so you can see why he did. But it is kind of irrelevant, they've got to score again. Right, big, high, contestable restart coming up, surely. This is massive, this is drama. Van Devry have been in charge. But we're in to the nervous final few seconds. Oh, it's knocked on. And that could well draw this final to a close. And it does. The plate is going to West Wales. Slant Devery have won four of their five games today by a converted score or less. If they hadn't have held the ball up against Bishop Wand over the line with the last play of the opener today, they would never be here. It's been a gutsy two days filled with quality. And in the end, they've had enough to get by one of the tournament favourites, one of the perennial winners of this great competition. Brighton have got to another final, but today they leave empty-handed. Flandovery College 10, Brighton College 5. Flandovery are the champions.
Cardinal Newman versus Peter Simmons College. It is final time. And what a tournament these two teams have had. Cardinal Newman today. They've beaten Hartbury 29-7, Colliger Cumway 35-0. For the love of the game, 28-0, the Canadian tourists yesterday. And in fact, they went five games between yesterday and today without conceding a try. But Peter... Well, with a loose ball, referee says backwards, but they beat Millfield 19-14 in the semi. They beat Flandovery. They beat Hereford, they beat SMB College today, yesterday. They beat Bridgewater and Taunton, they beat St. John's Leatherhead. Walloped them both, 50 and 45 nil. They beat Langley. And they beat Exeter College. So here they are, the two last teams standing, who will be glorious and victorious. Cardinal Newman, first attack of the game. And they're looking strong, they're looking sharp, as they have done throughout the two days here. Cardinal Newman. Oh, the turnover's good, though. And this good defending, but not particularly cool heads when trying to get rid of the ball. Oh, it's been turned over. Cardinal Newman have dived on it, and they've dotted down. No exit strategy for Peter Simmons. Cardinal Newman keep on turning the screw and they take the lead in this girls final what pressure from the cardinal newman girls really knowing that they've got that grass behind them so they can pile on that pressure forcing the error and then being the first to pounce on the on the ball there and get the score i believe i'm right in saying this is a repeat of last year's final two big shot teams cardinal, cardinal newman of course of course, Linked with I know where you're going finders. with this, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it has to be done as a trail finder. Ah, it certainly does. Well, that's been one of the fantastic things, particularly about the women's side of the competition here, are the obvious links, the obvious pathways into hopefully the professional game, but maybe moving up through further education into higher education and, and keeping your rugby going that way. And very responsibly, but also very intelligently, these top Premiership women's rugby teams are hitching their wagons to educational establishments and vice versa. Oh, that is a, a very good offload. Peter Simmons College now on the move, on the march, and looking for their first try. Referee says ball backwards. Hey, lost, lost. And a little dart up the short side. Oh, is there a little touch on that? No, there's not. And Cardinal Newman intercept. They are under the posts for the second try of the match. Peter Simmons just getting stuck in midfield. I wonder if uh, when we see the replay, there might have been a little knock on before the interception. But it doesn't matter. It is all done and dusted because Cardinal Newman lead Peter Simmons College by 10 points to nil, 12 points to nil. Again, just piling on the pressure, didn't they? Well, here we go, watch uh, watch this here. My eyes may deceive me. I've watched a lot of rugby over the last couple of days, but just here, no, no slither, just a crunching great big hit. And the referee, eagle-eyed as always, not as eagle-eyed as the player picking off the pass. And it's Cardinal Newman, 12, Peter Simmons College, nil. Peter Simmons again, just potentially trying to force it a little bit. There are a couple of scores down now. They've still got plenty of time. It's about staying composed. But it's fantastic defence again from the Cardinal Newman girls. Touchline is your friend. Now they have the set piece with a great attacking platform. 
And good line out ball as well. Long shadows cast by the trees that surround this beautiful pitch on RE1. Peter Simmons. Attacking, taking the ball on the outside. The cover tackle's good. However, they've got to these kinds of positions before and haven't been able to take advantage of the field position that they've created. But now up to halfway they go. And it's a bit more like it. Until then. Yeah, really unlucky there. Cardinal Newman also piling the pressure on every breakdown. So I think Pete Simmons Bye. need to probably get a player just a little bit quicker there to secure the ball. And if they can play a fraction faster, then the defence will still be disorganised. A high tackle and one minute for Peter Simmons to get something from this first half. Cardinal Newman pounced on an error early on and then intercepted for a second score. Oh. Good carry, heavy shot, takes a couple of tacklers out. Well, the referee having to take evasive action there. Well, we can certainly hear the referee. I wonder whether or not the players can, because Cardinal Newman clearly warned. I've definitely been warned and ignored it before. <laughs> <laughs> we get a bit excited as players sometimes. Time for Peter Simmons to get excited, because they're around the outside. Big try, big moment. Oh, they really needed that. The clock ticking towards seven minutes, the conversion to come. But it's a one-score game, 12-5. Such a crucial time to score. They're going into half-time, feeling confident. A bit shaky at the start, a few unforced errors, or should I say forced errors, from the huge pressure from Cardinal Newman. But showing there what they can do and why they're in this final, and they deserve to be in this final. Great contest. The half-time whistle goes. Cardinal Newman's 12, Peter Simmons 5. Second half underway, Cardinal Newman 12, 
Peter Simmons College, five, and Cardinal Newman on the march again. Good positive start, and that's one of the great things about the way that they play. So positive all the time. Oh, that one knocked on, though. That's an uncharacteristic error, but they do happen. got to add as well that Giselle Trailfinders coach has been messaging me at half time. We don't actually have team sheets up here. We haven't been provided them. Nope. But Sophia McDonald, who has just missed out on selection for under 18s, but apparently is, should be, shows her worth and shows because she was the try scorer just before half time. Um, sorry, well, just you, in the first half. You say that I've just been WhatsApp to team sheet for Cardinal Newman. So here we go, names incoming. Hopefully Peter Simmons College will arrive via technology as Sophia McDonald there wearing number 22 makes the tackle and now the turnover is with Cat Moody and Cardinal Newman can start to move it. Lovely offload, feeding the speed. And away comes Marnie Cameron, Marnie Cameron. They will not lay a glove on it. That was done off the back of some hard crafting defence. And like so many great sevens teams do, they turn defence into attack and Marnie Cameron scores for Cardinal Newman to make it 17-5. Just shows the pedigree of the teams here. You've got Zara Green playing for Cardinal Newman as well, just been selected for England under 18s versus Wales. And that's one of many. You'll have so many of these of these school kids being called up for internationals age group. The future is so bright and that is why it's so important we have these feeder teams on, that are coming into the, the premiership teams. As we said, it's not just Trailfinders, Harlequins, Saracens, we've seen it all. Look at you pretending you care about Harlequins and Saracens. Stop yeah, it, no, stop it. Care about the future of rugby. Of course. <laughs> Just maybe not those two too much. Well, that's been knocked on. Well, with that in mind, for those of you that are enjoying this rugby, tomorrow, half past five kickoff, England under 20s are going to be playing against the Army, and that is being live streamed. Joe Burns, our colleague here, our friend here. Great Ouch. boy. He's on commentary Bye. alongside Rachel Burford. So that is a great opportunity to look to the future of the England Red Roses and also with the inter-services rugby coming up to the army as well. Now away come Cardinal Newmans and Sophia McDonald with another meat pie. She's over the whitewash and Cardinal Newman are heading for glory. They're just looking so confident on the ball, aren't they? The timing of pass, perfect. Just seems like they've got so much space, but it's testament to their hard work. They're drawing the perfect timing of the pass. They're making look it look easy, but trust me, it's not out there. The lungs will be hurting, but they're still showing what they can do. Speaking of Joe Burns, his ears must have been burning because he's appeared in a puff of smoke behind us. 24-5, Cardinal Newman closing in on another glorious victory. That was Zara Bishop in a scrum half. Nice ball to find Lottie Brook. Lottie Brook feeds the speed. Sophia McDonald over on the edge. Now, Peter Simmons needing something, needing it quickly. Cardinal Newman been super competitive at the breakdown, but a little bit too competitive there, and they've strayed offside. Now, Peter Simmons, I want them to be in a bit more of a rush here. I want them to inject some tempo and really chase after this. But this is nice work in the middle of the park. Another brilliant tackle, though. Taken on by Lucy Thompson. And knock on by Cardinal Newman. The trouble is, even with 
just a knock on, it's just slowing it down. It's just eating away the time for Peter Simmons to get back into that attacking stride. Even though they still have the ball, we're looking at two minutes left now, which is a really, not impossible, but a very big ask. <laughs> Cardinal Newman then, oh, they just look so industrious every time they're on the ball. That is a fabulous offload and more strength in the carry. That was Cat Moody. Now Lottie Brook and angled back against the grain. Check back inside, big carry from Steph Chips. And in over the top, Cardinal Newman concede the penalty, but we're into the last minute. And it is going to be another victory. Let's go. Future's bright for trail finders, eh, Amy? Just stay around, stay around the area, please, girls. Don't go <laughs> off anywhere. Peter Simmons then, last chance to dance for them. That's a decent fan to the crunching tackle. Oh. How about that? Maya Champion, nominative determinism for her. Kat Moody goes in. It's another try scored off the back of some brilliant defence. Destructive disruption. Those tackles are absolutely ferocious and it's so hard to just get on the front foot when you're just being absolutely hit at from every angle. 14 minutes gone. The result in the bag. But time for a restart. No, there's not. Full time, Cardinal Newman. The bench empties. They're exhausted after two solid days of rugby. But it's amazing how much energy you can muster when there are celebrations to be had. Huge congratulations to Cardinal Newman. They've defeated Peter Simmons College 29-5. Five days, 27 pitches, nearly 15,000 players crossing every blade of grass here in southwest London. This is the biggest, the best, the most prestigious schools sevens competition in the country. And it is crescendoing to the noisiest of climax here between two heavyweights in the school game. It's the under 18 boys cup final. It's the defending champions, Harrow, against the seventh powerhouses, Millfield. A phenomenal week about to come to a phenomenal end. Harrow, all the talk they've delivered so far. But Millfield, just out of shot, taking that knee they've become so famous for. These seven players on the pitch, these 12 in the squad, they've worked so hard 
to earn that blue stripe. First 15, now first Arrow seven. Wing. Have they done 14, 16? Can happen. Seems barely moments ago that Harrow were here, winning their semi-final, winning it comfortably as well. Given the rugby they played, given the 15s final they just won, and given the short turnaround time, the lack of sevens preparation they've had, the performance is phenomenal. And history on the line for Harrow. No school team has ever won the school's 15 championship and then gone on to hoist the silverware at the Rossin Park sevens in the cup. Are we excited? That's what's on the line. It is Millfield versus Harrow. Your commentary team, Joe Burns, Tom Mitchell, myself, Dave Rogers. We are underway in the dying embers of a glorious afternoon, half of the pitch cast in shadow, the rest in golden sunshine, and it could be a golden start here for Harrow School. Up over halfway. And another bump, Sam Winters, back from a wrist injury, making things happen, and Harrow over! Astonishing start to the boys' final. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Get out of here, what a start. Unreal stuff, all the way down in their own territory, straight from the off. That's the way to do it in the final. Mate, the touchline here at RE1 is bulging at the seams and it's just exploding, just like that saw. And a peach of a conversion to maximize the effort. He goes off for a gasper, but he's gonna be back later. And it looked like he'd done a really Good job of making a break, but we thought this was the end of it. Never mind that, not held in the tackle, bounces up, decides he's going to put it on his back and go all the way for the score. Well, if Harrow are successful today, then he has to be in the conversation for player of the tournament. He has been absolutely outstanding. But now it is Millfield's turn to try and bounce back. They'll have been stung by that, and that is exactly how Harrow started. Their semi final as well, but now it's Millfield to it. Oh my goodness, that's not through. Ben Morrow is away. The immediate response. Two attacks, two touches, two legendary Roslyn Park scores. See you tomorrow. It's Ben Morrow burst into the line. Ankle breakers all round. And an equaliser with the kick to come. Ben Morrow not to be outdone. He almost did a masterful bit of work as the sweeper nearly stopped the first score and decides that that's the way he's going to bite back. Gets it here, not much motion, just takes it on the out and skips through the two would-be tacklers. And how about that for a step? See you later. Great bit of wheels to finish it off under the sticks for a seven. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Breathless stuff. Millfield restart, a little bit too deep to contest. Will the game calm down now? I shouldn't have thought so. Oh, that's an error. And the referee's happy enough that went backwards on oh, another day. That's pinged, but it's back in red, green and blue hands. And Millfield putting the shove on off. That pass goes to hand, it's on, it's through the legs, it's back, Ellis James. Through the legs, referee spotted a knock on this somewhere. Looked like he hammered that in to a Harrow boot. But from one 50-50 knock on decision to another, and it's Harrow ball. How big is the intense scene, Mitch? Just looking out there, every pass right. pressurised, every little right. glint of light, you think it's going to be a yes. moment. How often have we heard the conversation over the course of this week about nearly moments, small moments in games that make the difference, and they're happening all over the park. And here go Harrow. Well, every time they're on the ball, it looks dangerous. We expect something to happen. Oh, and there's a fence and a last-ditch tackle off. The offload does go forward and it is a knock-on this time. Well, these are the moments you can't be coughing it up. 
the half break offload didn't quite stick just a pause this is the pause we were waiting for Dave a crazy start well this is something that Harrow have done really well they're rotating pretty much the entire team here they're so confident in the entire 12 that three and a half four minutes in fresh legs well as right. fresh as you can be at the end of a two-day tournament Five. but threats everywhere Six. but the new seven will be Dave defending here because Millfield have the put in loose pass but loose passes and Morrow there's a cheer every time they tackle him from the Harrow School supporters. They're going the other way now. Oh, another step and another acceleration and another clean break. Could it be again Will Stebbings for Millfield? A screamer. Put a parachute on him because he's flying. The crowd's gone mad. And why not? It's pure wheels, pure gas. He's taking it all the way to the house and it's looking like it's going to be another seven for Millfield. Maximise for Millfield and here we go. Not much doing. Those famous hoops sizing up the shakes, the bang off the left and it's gone, gone, gone. It's not Will Stubbins, it's the will to win. Maybe a final here on RE1. Beautiful recognition of the overchase, off his left foot, and then the pace. And if there were bonus points for dives, then he'd have got one on. Overcommitment there, Charles Heffron touching the man in the air. They've just got to temper the excitement. Finals time, everyone's absolutely buzzing. Charlie Griffin now for Harrow, flirting with that touchline. Watch that AR's flag, stays down. Now Harrow can start to build something. That's Patrick Keevney. Edge to edge stuff, St. John Smith. Checking back in, oh, another missed tackle! Another opportunity, another race for the line is just about covered. Charles Heffron with the tackle. Still with Harrow, bundling over. Patrick Keevney. Six minutes, four tries, and in a tight game, conversions are massive, and this is a tough one. What a feast. There's a few people been feasting down at the food vans, but this is where you can really fill your boots. What a treat on pitch one. Drifts across and Millfield maintain the smallest of these. There will be time for the restart. Really nice work here. Just sees it. Probing, probing. Shows the dummy. Good power. And then it's off the back of this. They keep the ball alive beautifully. Good scramble for Millfield. The little lift and then just fights and pumps the legs to get there to get the dot down. This restart massive. Slight miss hit that means that Millfield can gather it. Pressure comes in. Decent tackle, decent take, and Millfield could get the ball off the park here, but instead they want to play. They know they can score from anywhere. They've shown they can score from anywhere, but an error here would surely be punished. Oh, good offload. Now numbers. Can they identify them? Excellent take and a great cover tackle. Every moment feels like an event. High tackle. And oh, they just want to go. They just want to play. Morgan Williams injecting the tempo. Ben Morrow. Short pass back to Williams. Everything buzzing around nervous energy. And Millfield just struggling to go forward. Will Stubbings, one try already. And now they inject the pace, Morrow. No room at the inn. Harrow covering that edge defence really me, well. Harrow. We're eight minutes in to a seven-minute half. The opener here in this final that has well and truly delivered. Oh, what a pass off the left hand. And the fend as well. The strength, the cat flap opens. The ball refuses to die in this first half. Millfield still in their 22, Harrow, oh, just over committing. And that's the second penalty that's been conceded since the clock struck seven. Will it be costly for Harrow? Oh, Morrow. Oh, he said just a knock on. That is a big moment. 
The referee blows the whistle at 8 minutes and 40 seconds. Harrow 12, Millfield 14. And before we get your thoughts on the half, gents, your thoughts on that hand on the ball at the end. Who's going here? I mean, <laughs> look, 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 it's the final. We've got to call it how it is. If you're looking at the World Series, that's a yellow card. All day. It's a hand in there. It's lingering. You can't go away with that. And you've got to think, that goes away for Millfield. They're going all the way under the, under the poles. So big moment in this game. Big moment, big calls. No stress against the ref because they've done an unbelievable oh, job here all week. But, man, all of us are on a knife edge here. It's quite nervous, isn't it? Everything's nervous. Nervous excitement. The I'm nervous, are, Dave. The I'm nervous. The people who are least nervous are, are the 14 who've been on the pitch. They've been absolutely incredible. And what's going on in the huddles there, Mitch? You've been in these crunch classes. You've been in finals. Well, we talked about it in the first half. The intensity's through the roof. There's no shortage of that. So much of this will be about who can maintain the calm, the decision-making, and be accurate in this second portion. What about the quality of the tries? Mate, unreal. I mean, what quality we've seen across the week here at Rosen Park, but this is the creme de la creme, and the boys are delivering. Alex Davis in the huddle there with the Harrow boys. He knows what this Bit of GB scenario is like. There. Yeah, and he'd be sharing some of his nows with the lads in the big moments. Oh, I don't think my nerves can take this. Seven minutes to determine the best in the country. History on the line for Harrow as potentially the first ever team to win the schools and then do it at Rosslyn. Fraser White sends it high to start the second half. It slipped through the grasp and it's ended off into a Harrow hand via a knock-on. Stroke of luck there for Millfield. But neither team can afford to switch off. And look at the crowd here. Every edge of this RE1 pitch lined with people. quick reset then. Bill Field put in at the scrum. Five, six. What conditions, what a moment, what a scene, and what a pair of teams. That's a good ball. How quick is he? Really quick is the answer! And George Bullivant makes an advantage, Bill Field. Conversion to come for a two score game. Bullivant on the gallivant down that left edge and bringing it home for Millfield. Oh, wow. First try after the break's big, but it feels so much weightier in this final. Well, it's gorgeous from George. He's going to have to go back and give Evan Morris a bit of a pat on the back as well. It's a great little shovel pass that put him away on the edge. To Morgan Williams, the captain, hands it off to Owen Erasmus. He's been on a journey with this Millfield team. Evan Morris Michael, challenges. Please. Harrow line out. Oh, and Harrow getting the benefit Michael, there. Three, Do you know what's big as well? Pull back in play. Oh, we're not going to get to go quick. This is a two score game now for Harrow. They didn't get that conversion. 21 to Millfield. Like, that's significant here now. It is, but they won't be worrying too much about that now. Plenty of time in the game. Get your score. Worry about the second one after that. Good line-out ball. And now they can build. I feel like they've not had their hands on the ball for a little while, but have looked dangerous every time. They have! And bursting through tackles again! Power and pace and quality! That is such a good offload. Oh, but it's been turned over. Brilliant by Millfield. And the danger snuffed out for now. That's Evan Morris, recycling it for Millfield. It's just not happening for Harrow right now. They need to find a way to hang in there. And maybe that little free gift might be a ticket back into the final. I thought Millfield had done a brilliant job. There were numbers around the breakdown. They ended up firing, getting the turnover. But then they've given it straight back. And what an attacking platform now. Harrow setting deep off this scrum. Danger man in the middle, in the centres. Look for them to pivot. 
around him. Do you know what? It's open for a final. It's not. It's Rose. tense and it's tall, but there's opportunity. Mealfield has just brought on Charles Six. Heffron wearing seven. Where's They're the berserker. Ball? He's going to go around and raise some hell now. Back to the wall here on their 22. Well, missed tackles, so they've attacked up the short side with Patrick Keaveney. One try already in the final for him. Shipped on by Philip Edgston. Now the speed round the outside. Great power, but flirting with the touchline. And another chance goes for Harrow. Just a little bit of an inexperienced play there. You've got to try and stay away from that touchline. It's finding that balance between backing yourself and then absolutely going after it and staying inside. Millfield trying to play out from here. Well, they've confidently played out and shown that they can grab something from anywhere. There's no sweeper at home. Oh, that's a great tackle. No sweeper at home, so you wonder if Millfield might drop it on the toe. Well, they might not need to. The sweeper's back in play now, and it's a timely intervention. Oh, and Millfield getting away with one there. There was such an important sticky fingertip on that to keep it out of Harrow's clutches. This is brilliant ball movement from the Millfield boys. They are tying Harrow in knots and not letting them settle in defence. Big ball over the top, off the right hand! How is he go? By George, it's Bullivant in for his second! And is that the ball game? Is that the final? Is that the trophy in the hands of Millfield? Bullivant in his element here on RE1 and the crowd going wild. They've been shackled in their own 22. They've thought tooth and nail. But here they are, a kennel full of dog. And getting their way to the try line. How about the build-up play? Kept the ball alive beautifully, moved it, shifted, changing the point of attack, and then give it to the danger man and say, go on, son, have a crack. Long way to go for Harrow from here, Mitch. What are you thinking if you're captain in there? Yeah, well, now you've got to dial it up. You've got to go after something here. Minute's not on your side. And this could be the moment. Close, close, but no cigar. That's good hands, an excellent tackle as well. Oh, Alice goal! James getting his shoulders in the rib cage of Harrow boys. Oh, good fend on the cover tackle. Charles Heffron slowing the ball down too. Decent step and a missed tackle and an opportunity. What can the sweeper do? Not called into action yet. Big man on the edge is Harry Dargan. Inside ball's a good one. That's score number one. Give a dive down Still two to go for Harrow. This kick needs to go. Don't even take it. They need to go quick. Well, the referee says we will restart, which makes me think there will not be time for glory. And Harrow's history. We'll have to wait. Let's just remember this is an outstanding score from Harrow, but earlier on this RE1, Millfield played Sedford. They beat them by three points. They had five players on the pitch, two consecutive yellow cards. It was backs to the wall. It's those kind of performances where you dig deep, you get to the final, you buy your ticket, and they might just win the Sevens lottery right here. And that's what it's about. It's doing the grit work and the beautiful stuff. And it's Millfield to make history. Two brilliant teams, two brilliant seasons culminates in victory for the red, green and blue. Harrow have given everything to this campaign in 15s and 7s. But unfortunately for them, they have come up against a Millfield team who have been red hot. It finishes Harrow 17, Millfield 28. Millfield are the National School 7s champions. Wow, what a final. It's the final that the Cup deserved. It's the final that the week deserved. And, you know, my heart's with Harrow.
an awful amount here. There was so much expectation, so much hype for such a fabulous school side. They've been on an incredible journey as a year group. They claimed the 15th championship. They have created incredible moments that will live long into the eternity of those who are going to go after them at that school. But wow, what a tournament, what a performance from Millfield. And when the big dance came, it was all tens. And that's what finals rugby is all about, delivering when it matters. And boy, was there some magic from the Millfield boys. Lovely stuff, just a brilliant portrayal of what sevens can be, moving the ball, individual brilliance, had a bit of everything. Well, the spoils for Millfield and, you know, how joyfully received has that been on the touchline? And, like, you see the touchline just full of people. You see boys down on their haunches, soaking in the moment, then getting together. And Mitch, you've won titles around the world. Let's look to the victors. What What is this moment like? Talk me through the elation of achieving something momentous with your mates well it's the journey it's the journey and the build-up it's also what happens across the couple of days here you go through the ups and downs and it's not always easy and as you said they've had their backs against the wall and it's when you've had to fight for something that it's all the more rewarding <laughs> No matter what level you're winning trophies at, you never forget it. You never forget the ride you go along with with your mates. And that's what these boys are reflecting on right now. We hear the word there of their coach, young Freddie Gavitas saying thank you so much for everything you've done. This is a moment these young men will never forget. We just won Ross in part, boys. No words summing up quite like that, Mitch. It's what you dream of, coming through your school days, playing here at under 13, under 14, you aspire to get to that point. And these guys are going to make their way over and get a chance to lift that coveted trophy. Well, the contrast is that Harrow School who've known glory so many times. And I've done some presentations on the stage this year here at the Howland and Rosson Park National School Sevens and the thing that I say to both teams when they're preparing to come up as runners-up or winners, the feat to even reach the final is extraordinary and they may reflect now with grave disappointment but hopefully in time to come they're going to look back and have their heads held very, very high because of the nigh on 15,000 players who get to stand on that finalist stage, so, so few pairs of boots get to tread it. No one's gonna begrudge these boys, the disappointment and the hurt. That's the other side of the coin. Number one. But whatever happens, they've been on a journey as well. And actually sports about both. You gotta learn from the highs and the lows. And look at that, their girls as well, who reached the final this week. But it's true school spirit for Millfield, who generously, magnanimously waiting for their fellow finalists. And uh, this is the try that got the blood pressure, the beats per minute pumping, and it was Harrow taking the lead early through winters. And that set the tone for an epic final. 
a final that was chock full of quality and it was a back and forth fight then Murrow getting in on the axe really lovely bit of game breaking play and it was anyone's at this stage game breaking moments from Morrow and that felt crucial actually just to bite back his harrow had stung them hadn't they then Millfield had a bit of wind in their sails and then another game breaking bit of magic just lovely the way they're giving their speedsters their danger men opportunities to make line breaks by moving the ball and changing the point of attack and the crowd were even treated to a beautiful dive flying through the air the well, harrow weren't out of it they were not out of it the fight was there got over in this corner but that dot down there out wide the conversion too hard to sink that actually proved like pretty pivotal in the way that the scoreboard unraveled and a pretty this was the first of two very influential scores from gorgeous george Bullivant biding his time and the sequel to that movie okay. was even better and it came ultimately with a championship crown a classic edge man score around the outside defend and the stride in what a moment for this young man And Harrow, in true fashion, fought back. Got over the score, but it was too little, too late. Ran out of time. And the trophy out of reach. The traditional tunnels formed. The champagne spray all day for the Miffy boys. Scenes to savour, days to remember for these famous green, blue and red hoops. Harrow were the adversary, adversaries in that clash. More tales to tell of these young men as they mature through their rugby journey. It's not the last you'll see of Harrow or these boys and <laughs> one of the hell raisers of the Millfield pack, bringing the noise off the pitch just as much as on the blades of grass. We are going to be heading to the presentation stage very soon for the very last time where we will anoint the girls under 18 open champions. And of course, these under 18 boys. And there he is, the main man, Dave Rogers, ready to go. On an incredible week of rugby here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Two trophies to present and a lot of thank yous. First of all, I'd like you to welcome our presentation party. Uh, presenting the Limitless player of the tournaments will be Chris from Limitless. And presenting the trophies will be the group head of sponsorship for our title partner, Howden. Giles Morgan, please make them feel welcome. Before we bring up our first runner-up, I think it is important to say thank you to everybody who's been involved, whether it's been the people from Roslyn Park, the tournament director, the referees, the coaches, the players, the physios, the broadcast team, and everybody who has made this local, global, worldwide, worldwide tournament the biggest, best, and most special it has ever been. We've battled the elements today. There have been umpteen pitches, thousands of players, an incredible amount of rugby, and many, many memories made. So 
please join me in thanking everybody who has been involved in this tournament from start to finish, from Monday to Friday, and is rearing to go ahead of next year already. So first, let's talk about the girls under 18 competitions. It's been an incredible event over two years, but once again, we have a repeat of the final. Two epic teams, but only one winner. Our runners up on this occasion played their part in a fantastic final and earned the right to play on the showpiece pitch in RE1. I'm sure they'll be back next year, and when they do finally get that glory, it'll be more than worth it. But today, they were our runners up. Please make them feel welcome. It's Peter Simmons College, your under 18 18 girls runners up. One more time for your runners up at Peter Simmons College. And now, what about our champions? It was a repeat of last year's final. It is a rivalry that is building and more evidence that the future is so bright in the women's game. They save their best performance for the sunshine on the showpiece pitch and they leave as Roslyn Park National School Sevens champions. They are Cardinal Newman. And whilst they are on the stage, before they receive the trophy, we will present the limitless player of the tournament. Huge congratulations to our limitless player of the tournament from Cardinal Newman, Cat Moody. And now to present the trophy, please welcome Giles Morgan from our title partner, Howdens. Your champions, Cardinal Newman! Well, the end of a great tournament. Commiserations again to the runners at Peter Simmons and to the player of the tournament and the champions, Cardinal Newman. Congratulations. And now we move on to the boys' tournament. Two teams there, mud and blood soaked at the end of an incredible two days of rugby. So much was spoken about the under 18s cup. All of the contests have been brilliant, but throughout days one to five, there are always the whispers. Who are the favorites? Who is going to deliver? Who is going to be there? And very often, the two teams that went toe-to-toe -to -toe there were mentioned by everyone. Our runners-up have had an incredible season, 15s champions at Twickenham a few days ago. The fact that they've been able to put this performance together is absolutely astonishing, and they were so close to making history, but they have left quite the legacy in white and blue. There are under-18 runners-up, Harrow. One more time, please, for your runners-up, Harrow.
And very shortly, we will be presenting the winners with the trophy. Before that, it is time to announce. There's been a very exciting change to the player of the tournament. Uh, it could have been any one of either of these teams in white and blue or green, blue and red. However, the limitless player of the tournament is Morgan Williams. Well, fingers crossed, he looks a little bit happier when he lifts the trophy in a minute. Huge congratulations to Morgan and huge congratulations to our champions. That was a final for the ages between two great teams. The start, the response, the tries that were scored. Every single corner of this ground lined with people who had stayed to watch these two great teams battle out an epic. But your Howden and Rosslyn Park National Schools under 18 sevens champions are Millfield. To present the trophy once again, please welcome Giles Morgan. Your Howden, Roslyn Park National School Sevens Champions, Millfield. A huge congratulations to Millfield, huge congratulations to Cardinal Newman, to Peter Simmons and of course to Harrow, two superb finals to round off a brilliant week here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. For those of you that have stayed with us for the presentations, thank you. For those of you that have stayed with us on the live stream, don't go anywhere because Angus is going to be talking us through the final review show. Uh, but we are done and dusted in the sunshine. There is mud, there are memories. It's been another incredible week here at Roslyn Park, the biggest and the best Sevens tournament on the planet. You lot have a safe journey home. You lot, we'll see you next year. Referees from all over the country as well. We've brought half a dozen from the north uh, from Manchester society. Uh, so big up to Mad Refs. Uh. Yeah.
what a final day we've had. We are going to try and catch up with some of these Millfield players who've had the most amazing day. In fact, I'm going to get Owen Erasmus right here. Owen, tell me about how that feels. Oh, just blown away. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Th that was some final. That, t tell me about. Tell me about. The, tell me about Morgan Williams. You, it, it's just been exceptional after a tough day yesterday. Yeah. Oh, he never stops working. He's a workhorse. Uh, but brilliant. Brilliant. And when when you woke up this morning and you saw the group that you've got today, yeah, did you did you see it going this way? Well, we had a really tough day yesterday. And we, you know, the boys were pretty down, but we somehow scraped through to the to the cup, and then we were pretty up for it. We, the, 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 yeah, we knew we were going to have to beat any side, so we we weren't too bothered to be fair. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Listen, go get yourself back in there with, with the boys. We're going to go and try, try and see if we can catch some others. That's Owen Erasmus there, who's been playing fly half for Millfield in the 15 season. He's been playing a bit of 15 as well. We can just see a few of the lads here having having a, having their photo taken. Morgan, Morgan, can we have a, can we have a chat over here? <laughs> Morgan, the uh, the limitless player of the tournament. Morgan. Talk to me about how that feels. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't put into words really. It's um, a special moment. Uh, it's been a few months in the making. We had a bit of a battle coming through. First day, she lost the game, and lucky to get through to the cup. And yeah, I can't fault the effort from the boys. It's it's amazing. Yeah. And this is the first time in ten years yeah. that Millfield have won the Howden Ross in Park National School Sevens for, for a school with such a proud history. You're you're now a part of that history. You know, some legends have done this. So Gary Edwards if we go way back right through to the, the likes of Callum Sheedy, Adam Hastings now you boys are in amongst that how does that feel? It's amazing it's, uh, um, I can't I can't I can't I can't I don't know it's, it's... tell me about some of your teammates who, who who's who stepped up for you today um, yeah obviously some of the uppers last last time putting on the blue stripes so you know Zach, Zach Whitman Dowder, Owen uh, Erasmus especially with the kickoffs, um, Will Howes, Boulevard, George Boulevard you know, and LSJ, everyone, I, I can't put everyone, everyone. One more for you, we got about 57 messages on Instagram telling us that we've got to call him the Iceman, what's that all about? Uh, well, he just doesn't get nervous for games, apparently, so I think he was a bit nervous going to this, so he's just got the nickname, the Iceman, so, yeah. Fair play, right, go, go and get in amongst it. We're going to see if we can find s some others to uh, to have a word with. Uh, M Millfield have been absolutely sensational. Just to remind you, that group they came out of this morning included Kirkham Grammar School, Sedba, and Wellington College. It looks as though they're giving out a big presentation here. So we're going to just see what that's all about. But it's been Freddie Gabbertas there. <laughs> He's just talking about how embarrassing it was that his mum was watching him earlier, which is a fair point. We We've had his, uh, his sister working with us, we've had his father on commentary, we've had his mother laughing at him, and now he's only gone and become a Roslyn Park National School Sevens champion. Not bad. I'm going to grab a word here with John Mallett. John, can I just talk to you quickly? It's been, it's been 10 long years, you've had some close runs, yeah. how does it feel? Yeah, I think you go back to some of those guys that really suffered on this day and, you know, with Phil for Harrow now that, you know, amazing that they've been and been able to be in the final, given what they did last week in the in the National Schools Cup. Um, but, you know, our guys have, have been in that place a few times in the last 10 years and to, to be able to come through with this group who probably did it pretty by the skin of their teeth yesterday, they thought they were out. And then to be able to then come back and play at some of their best stuff was was a nice bit for it really I think that's you know just a delight to see them play but play well and play as well as we knew they could uh, it looked at one stage like yesterday they weren't going to get that chance so. and I guess that's the thing isn't it it's it's playing your best rugby in the in those highest moments and, and we saw that you know in the final that's probably the best performance of the week yeah absolutely and you know I, I think the story of Morgan Williams and you know as player of the tournament is typifies maybe sevens and Millfield and but for everyone Morgan really struggled yesterday he had a by his standards a rubbish day I don't, I don't think he'll mind me saying that he missed a load of tackles he didn't you know he was really struggling between the games 
sort of emotionally it all got a bit much for him and today he's been the best player on the pitch every time we played and you know for him to have that chance to come back and enjoy that is pretty uh, you know he's a, he's a special kid like the rest of them and uh, yeah superb to be able to get into that sort of position and see some of their best rugby you know Will Stubbins George Pullivan guys like that we've got a crowd of young boys there who'll come back next year for a bit more as well so but what a great week great tournament amazing Andy Higgins here should take a lot of credit for that and the Roslyn Park guys because you know I think yeah rugby uh, schools rugby you know so much good stuff going on and to see so many of the stories is just amazing and watch the under 14 girls final at the start of the week was epic um, and it's gone on all week and all those stories of every group of kids of you know what a great week they're having so thank you Roslyn and uh, yeah we'll, we'll come back next year if it's all right yeah. And uh, just a, just a little quick reflection: the under 14s did all right as well. So the uh, it might not be a 10-year wait next time. Well, yeah, we've got a nice group there actually, but uh, I'd like to think they'll um, they'll be a bit more careful their second day. They lost two games, got through on points difference, then as runners up. So yeah, they had a fairly uh, up up and down day, but again got to the final and played some pretty decent stuff in the final. So uh, yeah, they'll be pleased. These guys are joining them. I'm sure they'll be watching. Uh, watching back home. Fun trip back to Somerset tonight. Yeah, I think so, yeah. We're looking forward to uh, squeezing onto the bus and uh, trip home. We've got school tomorrow, so we'll be in school at 8.30 tomorrow morning. So, uh, joy. No rest for the wicked. Go and enjoy it, John. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, <laughs> John Mallet there, Director of Rugby at Millfield. He's seen some teams, hasn't he? Right, shall we, shall we go and have a chat with some of our uh, superstar commentary lineup from the week who have... Um, been helping us out with the most incredible analysis and talk of what's been happening all through this tournament. It's been quite exceptional and what a final to finish on. Millfield and Harrow. Millfield have been the best sevens team in the country up until this point. Harrow had been the best 15 aside team in the country up until this point. They meet in the final and lo and behold sevens just wins out and I can see a couple of the lads lurking back here and the closest one to me is Jack Zorab so he's up first. Jack talk to me just about that final first of all and then we'll get on to the week. Yeah so I couldn't see the final because I was standing behind Harrow schoolboys and Cranley schoolboys and Hampton schoolboys and everyone that was in front of me that's about six foot seven uh, so I had to peek through peek through the elbows peek through the glimmers of light that I could see so you had a better you had a better view than I did on the live stream uh, but yeah I was in front of the bar the atmosphere there was was it was incredible and um, what I did see is I did see uh, George Bullivant dominating uh, and I did see I did see that I think the key moment of the final when Charlie Griffin made a break down the left hand side and if he makes that break the England man goes in Harrow get a lift they're then within two points with the conversion and it's a different ball game but the tackle was made the no uh, the knock into touch was Back on, come back. Keep the same configuration on this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did that. Right. Sorry okay. for the interruption, and then you're back. 
Sorry for the interruption there. A uh, bit of a technical issue um, owing to my own incompetence. Um, <laughs> it's been a long week, everyone. It's been a long week. Um, Joe Burns, you were on commentary for that incredible final. We've just spoken to John Mallet, who told us that that was their best performance of the week, saved for the final game of the week. Tell me what you thought about it. I hate to argue with the great man, but um, mm. but I, I really feel that their victory over Sedba on this pitch in the group stage was the most significant. They got reduced to six, they got reduced to five. They defended their line from point blank range for two minutes and they won 10-7. And we've spoken about it all week, that early in the days, early in the groups, they might not be knockout games, but essentially they are. It's those big moments in what might feel like less significant matches that actually forge the path to greatness which is what they achieved and i'm sure that actually that moment in itself probably steeled themselves against a, a set beside who disappointed a little bit the day before but they were all guns blazing in that match and like to go down to five not concede and then close out the match was absolutely unreal but not taken away from that final performance because it was blistering sakes up a lot of pressure from um, from Harrow and uh, our man Bullivant down yeah. down the left edge, giving us loads of uh, wordplay games as well. So by George, it's Bullivant. By George, by George, Bullivant in his element. We're so lucky to see those on RE1 though, because they happen all over the tournament, all over the week. But that's the one you want to highlight. I want to highlight the one that happened which fans every college. So they won yeah. in the plate final, but in their first game, a real attritional battle. As soon as the rain started against against Bishop Wand, right? They were seven up they were seven five up bishop won clean break over the line held up win that game seven five that gives you then the opportunity to build on the day take that momentum in uh, and win a final you build the solid foundations at the start of the day yeah how, how many games is it for the cup is it 10 yeah it's, yeah. 10, like, yeah, yeah it's 10 it, like each and every one so two halves of seven 140 minutes 140 yeah, good, minutes yeah. every one of the hundred tell you he used to be a teacher yeah he was, every yeah. one of the economics degree <laughs> every one of the actually yeah, actually yeah, yeah. uh every one of the 140 counts uh, like every moment momentum swings you know you fall asleep for for one minute suddenly the game race away from you and but just like let's look at that final oh. let's look at the opener from Harrow, from Winters. Let's look at the response from Burrow. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm a bit lost. A bit lost for words. We were pretty amped up, well, uh, but it was the climax the tournament deserved. To the start with Millfield because they did this the hard way. Yeah. Got through the group yesterday, having been defeated. The only side that got through with a defeat. They lost to Harrow uh, to Hampton rather, who who then went down to St Joseph's College. They get in today. We get into that group, that group that everyone was talking about this yeah, morning. The yeah. group of death: Kirkham Grammar School, Sedbury, and Wellington College. Burnsy's just told us all about that. You know, sort of down to five players under your own sticks. You somehow find a way through it. They get to a semi-final against a Bromsgrove side who, you know, all due respect, have had a had a, a an easier run of things to get through. It's all relative in this competition, yes, yeah. but you know, in relative terms. And then into that final against a side that has been the talk of the towns. I mean, you know, we've all been messaging before this tournament even started about what, what, how we were going to wax lyrical about Harrow. You know, it's an incredible journey they've been on to deliver under that sort of pressure, that sort of difficulty is quite an achievement. Well, you, you say they've taken a hard way. I'm not sure there was an easy way <laughs> in that uh, in that boys under 18, to be honest. But if we can just take a little look over here now. We talk about memories. That's all we've talked about the entire time is memories this and memories that. But all of the things we've said have been backed up and reiterated by everybody we spoke to. But these moments with, with family members on the pitch, they'll remember forever. Spoke to um, a dad just now. He was walking a beautiful uh, golden retriever. His kids aren't even in Millfield anymore, but he's got such an affinity to the place. Yesterday, he was in Iraq and he was watching the live stream and he was like, I've, I saw how well Millfield were doing and I couldn't not be here. And he got on a plane from Iraq and joined us. And, and he was there for that file. And, he, and he's celebrating with the youngsters that won it, with all of the parents that he knows and got to know over the year. And if that doesn't tell you how much this, this kind of thing means to people, then I'm not sure what will. Um, I, just, I think I'd just like to sort of give a bit of a shout out to Harrow because yeah, it's... Yeah. it's Quite rightly, we're getting wrapped up in Millfield winning because it really is the 
it's the ultimate, isn't it? But Reggie Hammock just walked past us over there, incredibly gracious, um, you know, was kind enough to thank us for the coverage and was a man with a glow of disappointment, but also one that knew that he achieved something in getting to the final. We said it to the finalists all week, all the runners up, that to even be on this stage is an incredible feat. Wow. And yeah, there was a lot of pressure on those lads as well. There was a lot of talk generated, media, other schools and everything like that. I thought they wore it pretty lightly, not with a huge amount of arrogance that I saw. And they'll be bitterly disappointed. That little nugget of history remains for whatever school eventually claims it of the schools and the sevens, but it just proves how difficult it is to do with the side of that quality falling short so so well done to harrow for their season and all that they've achieved and let's not forget harrow do have a little nugget of history which is that they're the only side ever to have held the schools cup and the howard and ross apart national school sevens at the same time yeah. yeah they also this was the only game all season that someone has got the better of them in oh, 15s or seven aside so you're quite right, Bernsey. I mean, we we can't we, good, we cannot leave good at the old ruggers that lot. Yeah. Good at the old ruggers. However, going back to yesterday and what we were talking about, there's a certain team in Brown whose interests might be piqued. There certainly is. Uh, do you know what? I am so excited for the response from that team in Brown Sedba yeah. at the Sedba Tens on Sunday because wowie, they are going to be up for it. Um, are you going to that? I'm. I'm not going to. I'm, <laughs> Disappointed because it is a fabulous competition. I'd love to be heading up to what is a mythical, mythical, wonderful place with great people. Um, but I have to be honest, my voice is hanging by a thread. <laughs> yes, and yeah. I don't think I'll actually be much I will be much watching value. you on the live stream and very, very much looking very forward quickly to it. Before we jump to some interviews on the with some of the younger lads uh, who are out here today, the under 13s and under 11s who deserve their moment in the sun. And then we're going to bring in uh, Amy and the others to talk about the girls' competition. But before we go into that, just a word on um, that plate final and the plate competition. Clandovery College uh, just edging out Brighton College, two sides that were right on the cusp of being in the cup competition and frankly would have been worthy winners of that as well brilliant game with rugby yeah yeah absolutely awesome um brighton were were fancied for perhaps the the overall title at the start weren't they they are always there or thereabouts and they're going to be heading up to sedbra as well and saying goodbye to another another great generation of players um but Flans every college i mean they're, they're a school that i grew up playing and i didn't play a huge amount of schools rugby but they're kind of this this doyen in terms of in terms of welsh schoolboy rugby and they've had some great players coming through there i suppose most recently uh, the one that people will be familiar with of course alan Wynn, who's, who's retired now but to see them here and to see the welsh schools have a great week which i think they have had a great week and then to leave brinke lanog with the girls trophy on the first day and then plans every college first of all to make the second day then under those sticks to my right against Bishop One to win that game to set the platform. Four of their five games today, they won by five points or fewer. And it was 40 19, I think, in the semi final, the one where they really turned it on. But that's a team with a lot of heart and a lot of guts, and they can be incredibly proud of what they've achieved here over the last two days. They certainly can. Um, listen, before we jump to, to those interviews, I just want to have a, li a little chat about uh, legacy. Uh, to legacy, first of all, on Millfield's front, we saw them win the under 14s competition. They've also done the under-18s. There's there's something pretty special brewing there. I mean, there's always something not yeah. that brewing there, but that's uh, there's there's a bit of inspiration there coming through now. Um, legacy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm. I mean, yeah, plain to see, plain to see with the 14s and the 18s, and uh, I, I actually didn't see a huge amount of Millfield throughout the week. Um, obviously, that final and some gains on, on RE1 here, but in terms of legacy. For me, uh, if we're talking about legacy, just like as the competition as a whole, I think the uh, the joy and the generosity with which every side and every game has been received throughout the week, girls, boys, any age group, has been absolutely unbelievable. And you mentioned that story about that chap flying back from Iraq to come and see the final because it's captured the imagination. I, I personally, I need to be in a bar um, <laughs> very very soon because of the uh, the toll it's taken but I, I just think it's an amazing tournament and I know that we work for them and like we're here to be the hype men but genuinely if you haven't been down here you've got to come and get a taste I chatted 
my turn to drop a star name in. I can say, be cool with this. I chat, <laughs> I chat to Hugo Monnier in the week, pit side, because he was down seeing his old school Lord Wandsworth. He hadn't been here in years. And he was blown away by the magnitude of it. And you spoke to all those young lads, young lasses, who'd had terrible times on the pitch. They'd lost all their games, but they were grinning, grinning like Cheshire cats. And, and that's got to be the legacy. That's, that's got to be where the love is for the game. And it's amazing to be a part of. It certainly is. Listen, we're going to hear to some, from some of those young lads who've, who've had the most amazing time. We're going to put some batteries in you two and, uh, and get, get some others along to have a chat with us about the girls' competitions and everything else. But we're uh, we're off to... Oh, before, oh, you throw, got before you throw, I'd just like to say Angus Savage, main man at Next Gen. He's the one who PRs all of the schools, rugby across the country. He deserves a big rap for making it as big as it is through through the channels. It's been a real pleasure working for Next Gen and, uh, and representing the tournament. I think you're getting a few raps as well yeah. off screen. Oh, you're very looking continue. nervous very, as well. Very, very, very oh, looking he, he, just, he just wants to get to the bar. It's absolutely <laughs> fine. Listen, we're going to hear some interviews from some of the most important people here this week, the under 13s and the under 11s. A yeah, great, great experience, especially when there's a knockouts in place and, and there's more than one day. It's been really good. Um, it's a great atmosphere here, and we've had we've had some good games. Yeah. Um, so we've had three games. We've we lost the first one by quite a lot. Won the second one. We just drew um, third game, very close. Because how small the because how small the like, buy is. There's there's a there's a, a uh, like a small amount of schools who. Are really experienced and they're coaches and they they work really hard at rugby and they kind of go into that one little tournament and then we all know each other we're all friends so when we come together at club level then um, we come to tournaments like this it's just really good and we can show each other with uh, playing with each other and stuff like that Ready for these? Up for each. Up for each. one two three Up for each. right we've gone to put the batteries in those two i've got i've got two energizer bunnies with me now i've got will for <laughs> Amy. Amy only came here to watch, she tells me, but we've, we've found a way to get on a microphone anyway. Um, you, you were watching the, uh, the, girl, the girls' competition uh, finals, and we saw some spectacular games of rugby, but we saw Newman College win it for the second year in a row on the girls' front, but just the level of physicality we saw out there, I mean, my word, it was extraordinary. Yeah, it was huge, and that's what ultimately won them the final, wasn't it? They just absolutely capitalised on some absolutely humongous hits and then the transition that we spoke about. But over the whole competition, the physicality, the speed, the skill set, everything just keeps going up and up and up. It's like there's no ceiling, or they're creating a new ceiling each year. Um, and I know we've banged on about it so much, but the whole point of this tournament is to see the future of rugby play and excite us about what's to come. And they really have really set the standard and I'm just they had under 18 representatives for England and they're just being trailblazers for what they do and it's fantastic to see and I guess if we if we think about the future of the women's game of the girls game in schools the sheer number of teams we've seen we've seen these girls competitions grow for from being you know 10 15 teams here and there lots of dropouts to being absolute behemoths of competitions with just hundreds and hundreds of teams it feels like we're in a really good spot right now 100 percent, and you got to remember as well this is schools so i like when i was at school which was a long time ago now but there wasn't Rugby. Not that long. It's it fine. was quite a long time <laughs> yeah. ago. As when someone said, as I was still at uni, and I was like, oh, I graduated ten years ago earlier. But anyway, um, but yeah, these are school teams, so that's what's fabulous. They're playing in schools, and it's growing and growing in the schools, which means that we're getting a, a whole like new catchment area of players um, to pick from. Before it was just clubs, and it was just if you wanted to play, if you happened to have a brother or a dad who liked rugby. Now it's actually no, my mate's playing she's a girl, I'm a girl, I'm empowered by her and I'm going to pass on that rugby bug. And I just hope that schools continue to put in this excellent work that they're doing. We just see these numbers grow and grow. We certainly will. And I want to give a big shout out to Kat Moody, who won the, uh, the player of the tournament from uh, Newman College in the, uh, in, in the girls under 18s competition. She was absolutely sensational. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about someone you need to go and find out his name because <laughs> th there's a guy out there who's just incredible but you found the seven star of the future well you kind of, kind of, he's not actually here he is um, at somewhere else i was coaching this morning well, tell me about him though it, it was exciting sometimes you're coaching and this was a group of, of boys this morning it was the polar opposite to here um 
where they haven't played rugby before they're doing it in schools um, through School of Hard Knocks and sometimes you just come across a player that just lights up and gets you so excited about being a potential star of the future so I do know his name I've got the details written down and I am following it up and yeah maybe you never know he could be playing here next year or if we if we get it right in a few years time how cool would that be and listen Wilf you've seen some absolute stars of, of the here and now if we're honest over the over the course of this week tell me about the week tell me how it, how it's been oh I feel like I've been here forever and yet also it's gone all in an instant it's uh, such a strange feeling five days of intense rugby and the nice round narrative of the, the under 18 competitions ear ending it in the, in the men's side of things at least and uh I just think it's such a spectacle of, of sport and it's it goes, as we've said throughout the week, so much further than just rugby itself. I mean, this great charity, School of Hard Knocks, that Amy works with as well, is an example of how rugby can extend beyond just the playing field. And I think Roslyn offers so many people that opportunity. I was talking earlier to colleague Ikamoid and how the fact that their rugby programme is, is brand Your new. Welsh has come on fantastic. <laughs> by the way. Yeah, well, I, I have to apologise to the great people of Ypant uh, because I've absolutely ruined Apant's school by for <laughs> when they came onto the live stream unexpectedly in midweek. Um, but yeah, there's, their programme is brand new and you know, they've strung it together really well. They've got ex-professionals in their coaching staff. They had nine players here today, but they absolutely battered Aundel, uh, who are a really famous old name in uh, school rugby. And that's how things are changing. I think there's such an avenue into the game and Roslyn is just one of those sort of events that can broadcast that to the world. I think, you know, the Canadian school that came over for the love of the game, you had in the under 13 competition, a school from the Emirates, which were absolutely out of this world. I mean, half those kids were already apparently oh, on Emirates their way to Harrow and Millfield. Yeah, Emirates earlier, Falcons, yeah, they were, they were fantastic. And they were an under 13 side playing better rugby than, than I could probably sing together on this pitch. So it was pretty impressive stuff. And that's just, there are so many stories to pick out from the week. And I think if, you, if you're at home watching this and you know, you'll have your own personal connection to the things that have gone on this week, so many stories. And uh, that's the best part about Rosen Park, I think. Well, talking of personal connections, I had a chat earlier with the uh, the man who is behind the man who uh, actually gets this whole thing up and running. I had a chat with Peter Higgins, the tournament director, Andy Higgins' father, which we're, we're going to play out to you in just a second. It was such a pleasure to see. There's something very special when you speak to someone and, it, you know, kids always underplay their hand with their dad. Listen to you hear what uh, Peter Higgins had to say. He had no idea of the scale of what his boy has put together. Son is Andrew, who's uh, the d director of this tournament for his sons, and uh, seems to have kept a really muddy day, especially for my visit. I mean, it's an absolutely incredible event that he's put together, isn't it? I mean, he's worked his socks off to do it, but uh, what are your impressions of what you see? Very s slickly organised. Uh, the car parking's better than last year. <laughs> the mud is much the same, although I gather the last few days have been dry. Uh, but to get so many schools through so many games in such a, a short time without breaks. Well, I can't think of a much better place to leave off than to just reflect, building on the words of Peter Higgins there, on what has been an amazing week. Amy, it's been your first time down here um, in, a, in a media capacity. Um, <laughs> tell, tell me what your impressions of this incredible place has been. Yeah, well... You, everyone hears about Roslyn, you know what it's about and I've been wanting to come down for so long and finally the schedules have aligned so I can and I just, as, as you know, I was meant to just be here Tuesday, Wednesday, I came back Thursday, I came back today, I couldn't stay away and I think that is testament to the whole thing, like we said, yes, so much of it's about the rugby but it's also about everything else that's going on, the stories you hear, the people you see that you haven't seen for years and you can reconnect with and again just reinforcing that rugby community and I think there's just such a buzz there's a feeling now the future's bright and I just can't wait to come back next year can I come <laughs> you're in you're in <laughs> and Wilf you know we've seen some moments of history this week and um, school where rugby history it, it comes more frequently than others because it's a new brand new set of players every time but we've seen just some incredible moments from start to finish Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, I, I've been here as a player, I've been here as a supporter, and now I just get to talk about it, which is excellent stuff. And I think, yeah, that's the one of the things that these players remember. We had some of the um, Harrow boys come up to us afterwards while we were waiting for you over the presentations just to say, 
thank you for the memories that you've created. And I think that's uh, something we can all be really proud of, not just us, but also all the people that took part from every aspect of organization. Too many people involved to possibly list them all off, but it's been a, a really special week and I'm already looking forward to next year. Well, that just about summarises it pretty handily. I think we'll leave it there. It's been an absolutely amazing week here at the Howden Ross and Park National School Sevens. The shout outs are plenty. I'm going to try and reel off a few, not least of which are the unsung heroes that are all standing behind us, getting all these cameras ready and putting this whole thing on. But more important than that, to the Ross and Park team, the Howden Ross and Park National School Sevens team, Andy Higgins, who's pieced this whole thing together, Izzy Lovell, who's uh, somehow managed to keep us all moving in the right direction. I don't know how she's managed that because uh, most of us are off, off wandering away with a radio at the worst of times uh, but more importantly to the players on the field it has been spectacular and uh, to clim climax the entire week with Newman College going back to back and then Millfield for the first time in 10 years reclaiming the Howden Rossin Park Rossin, what am I on about? Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens, there you go, that's what we're at, has been quite incredible. It's been a magnificent week, it's been a long week, it's been a fun week, and uh, there's more to come over the weekend. Do not miss out on the Sedbert Tens this weekend, Sunday and Monday. Stick with us for that. But from all of us here at the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens, thank you very much for watching. here at the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens. And when the sunshine comes out, oh boy, is it a magical place. Uh, my dad used to take us here on access visits to our old man. And he used to, I've, I've been coming here since, I swear, age eight. Yeah, superb tournament, brilliantly organized, and uh, a nice event for everybody to connect and play rugby together. Session, ladies and roof, everybody, your champions. Excellent call. It is, I've, I've been coming here now for, for a long, long time, and it's just great to see the tournament just get bigger and better. Um, the kids are absolutely loving it. For so many kids, it, it really is the pinnacle. Um, it's the biggest school sevens um, tournament in the world. I think over 14,000. As soon as, seven, as soon as 15 start, finished and 7 started, this is what everyone's looking forward to. All the tournaments prior to this have built up to today and tomorrow, hopefully. And yeah, I definitely think it's the biggest tournament for everyone at school, just in general. There's over 1,000 teams coming down, um, I think. We obviously met Tyler, our player, and Tyler's got England camp, I'm a bit injured, so, but we, we wouldn't want to miss for a thing, it's great, we enjoy it. Last year was great fun. Um. The Howden Ross and Park National School Sevens, it's vast, and it's all live on Next Gen 15.